My hardcore world is now three years old, and this is the first 1,000 days that I survived in it. I almost died many times, which could have ended everything, and I also became extremely rich and extremely OP. But before that, I start with nothing, and my main quest today is to get some armor and find a village. Getting the armor is pretty quick, and I've also got all iron tools. And now for day two, let's go exploring and see what we can find. I found a village, and it has a blacksmith. This is one of the worst blacksmiths I've ever seen. I don't really need these things. What do you reckon? Is this the place to live? I think it is. My plan is to safety-proof this entire village. And to do that, I'm going to dismantle this house. Now that that's finally gone, I can begin the next phase. I'm going to completely fence these guys in. Another day gone, and all I've done is place fences everywhere. Operation Protect the Village is now complete. I've even prevented them from escaping through the river. I should probably cover up this hole at some point, but <laughs> it'll be fine. We're five days in, I think this is the perfect time to search for shipwrecks. Imagine that this is how I die. There we go. We made it. I had to quickly make a door there. But the treasure was worth it. And the map points to this very spot. Beautiful. More treasure. More food. TNT. I've looted a lot of treasure. I've got plenty of it. And I've found another treasure chest. Loads of emeralds and diamonds. And the next plan is to get Fortune 3. I've got Fortune 2 for 11 emeralds. That's good enough for me. And another day has come to an end. Now I've got my Fortune 3 pickaxe. It's time to go mining for diamonds. I found diamonds, perfect. Just a bit of strip mining. And how many diamonds are we gonna get? This is <laughs> this is super quick. Let's see. Eight diamonds, beautiful. Five more again. And how many is that in total? 23, I've nearly got full diamond armor already. I've discovered a mine shaft. There's one thing I know, is you do not mess with cave spiders in a hardcore world. This guy's poisoned me. This is the first chance I have of dying. I'm on half a heart, no need to panic. I think I'm just gonna stick to strip mining. Could this be a cave that leads me to diamonds? Indeed it is. Now hopefully there's more than one diamond. Unfortunately, there was just one. But that means I now have enough for full diamond armor. And there's more diamonds around this corner. I went from here, up there, found one diamond. This way, we found two. And this right here is all the diamonds that I need. With this, I've got 15 spare diamonds, all tools sorted, all armor. I'm going home. Today's project has been to get lots and lots of wood so that I can get lots and lots of sticks and then get lots and lots of emeralds. I've found an igloo and it's got a secret entrance down here. Well, hello, good sirs. I think I'm going to cure you right now. There we go. Sorted. This is a very painful process, but I'm creating a nice little animal farm. It may not look like much now, but it'll grow. This fella's now being cured, so I'm going to make him a Fletcher and do some trading. I don't normally take this long to go to the nether, but that is what we're going to do. Time to find a Bastion. No sign of a Bastion, but I have found a ruined portal. This guy gave me fire resistance, which is the main thing I wanted. I finally found it. Now I shall steal all their gold. Here's what I really came for. Bone blocks. I'll also steal this gold, and now I can get out of here. Another Bastion and more free gold. That's enough of the nether for me. I'm going home. This next bit makes me very excited. I can finally bone meal all my crops. And my dream of a massive farm is going to become a reality. I built a nice little temporary shelter so that we can get more villagers in this village. It's not much, but <laughs> it'll do for now. This area is really starting to come together. I think now it is time I built a house. This looks like a perfect spot to me. It took a while, but I've now finished flattening off this massive area. After a day's building, <laughs> this is what I've got so far. It's a work in progress, guys. After another day of building, this is what I've got. It's not the building that takes up all the time. It's the gathering of all the materials. We seem to have a situation over here. A rogue gang of pillagers are going after my village. The plan is simple. Get some milk, then take out the pillagers, which then gives me bad omen. But if I now drink the milk, it's gone. And I can go back in the village. I'm not ready to do a raid yet. Now that we've got the doors and windows in, this house is really starting to come together. It's not quite finished yet, but I have to say from a distance, it's looking pretty good. Well, it's taken well over 10 days, but finally... My house is finished. And so this is it. Hopefully you like the design. Apparently it's liked so much that a family has already moved in. What are you guys doing living here? Are they after my gold? I'm afraid you guys have got to go. There is still plenty of work to do with the interior, but I've got this gold here because I'm going to put a beacon here eventually and have that shine up through the sky. I think it will look amazing. I'm now going to try and get prop 4. There we have it. Protection 4. Let's add that to my armor. I haven't managed to get mending like I was hoping, but I got super cheap prices for looting three and efficiency five. <laughs> I couldn't say no. And now with my fancy tools, I'm ready to go back to the nether. And the plan is to dig a staircase down and start searching for netherite. I've set up a nice little base of operations ready for the ancient debris. And we can start using beds to search the area. And there we have our first ancient debris. Finally, I have found some more ancient debris. It's taken a while. Oh, it's flowing in now. We've got another piece. Oh my goodness, this was it. Four pieces? Yeah, four pieces. We're up to seven now. Okay. I ran out of bed, so I'm chopping more trees. I'm also going to need to shear lots of sheep 
I've been trying to get mending, but this guy's offering unbreaking three for 15 emeralds. I can't say no to that. More and more villagers seem to be walking to this hole, but I finally have got some mending. It's 38 though. That is very expensive. I don't have much of a choice though. I'm going to buy it. And now my efficiency five pickaxe has mending and unbreaking on it. I can then gather up XP with this pickaxe and it'll mend itself. After mining up lots of quartz, my pickaxe is now good as new. I realize that this pickaxe is so fast that I can literally sprint and still mine fast enough to strip mine. After all my escapades, I now have 20 ancient debris. And with that, I can make netherite ingots and netherite armor. And I'm also going to make my pickaxe netherite. Don't we look very fancy now? Protection for netherite armor. We are now on day 50 and I've spent the day finding some diamonds. That is all I need. Let's get out of here. I can now create a diamond sword and put looting three on it. Perfect. I'm sorry cows, but this means it is not good news for you. I'm returning to the nether because I want to make some potions. And to do that, I'm going to need to find a fortress. And since I now have looting three, getting ender pearls is going to be very easy. Finally, in the distance, there is a fortress. Thankfully, with looting, getting blaze rods is very easy. I've now got a stack of blaze rods. That's probably going to be enough. Unfortunately, this fortress is a broken fortress, which means to get nether wart, I'm going to have to find another fortress. And for those of you in the comments that think you can just craft nether wart, you can't. Thankfully, I have not had to travel very far to find another fortress. Hopefully, this one's better. And this is also a great fortress for get... Okay. <laughs> I was going to say a great fortress for getting wither skulls back. You get the idea. That's wither skull number two. And I can now collect my precious nether wart. And I found a saddle, which is pretty handy too. And that's it. We've got all three of them. I'm going to make a portal here just because I'm curious to see where it takes me. That gives us the subspace bubble one and the middle of an ocean. Okay. I'm completely out of food, but I somehow made it back in one piece. And now I can begin my next phase and start brewing. Slowly but surely, this hole is being filled up with villagers. And since this guy's a nitwit and refuses to get a job, he shall be my test subject. I am then going to lure one of these fellows up here. Thankfully, this cave was very close. Put him in a boat. He will now never despawn. And then I can spleef these guys to come down here. My ultra efficient trading hall is coming together. I've trapped 10 villagers down here. My plan is to get 10 more villagers up here. And then this guy here is going to be constantly cured and infected over and over again. He didn't want to get a job. Well, he's going to get a job now. And that will then cause these guys' trades to be way, way cheaper. The next thing I need for this plan is some name tags. And there we go. I've managed to find one. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, another one. Yes, perfect. So I'm going to name these name tags Infector. We've also got a few baby villagers roaming around. <laughs> I think I'm going to need about 12 pistons and a bunch of levers. And then the plan is to put a piston underneath each villager. And then on this side, I need to just dig out these three blocks, put redstone on and put a block there. And then do the exact same thing on this side. I'm also going to place trapdoors along here so the villagers don't escape. And I can finally add the levers and fire these villagers upwards. And finally, if I mine these blocks, it will drop the villagers down and they'll be in the perfect position. And before I can do any more, I need mushrooms. And the best place for mushrooms is the nether. Brown mushrooms are what I needed and brown mushrooms are what I've got. And that means I can make a fermented spider eye and brew some potions of weakness. I'll also craft a bunch of golden apples. Y you probably get the idea of what's going to happen next. I'm not sure what this extra guy's doing here, but he's getting out of here. I'm then going to release this guy out of his boat. He's going to follow me down here. <laughs> Come straight into my trap. I'll then name him as the infector. He is going to be trapped in there. And now if I flick this lever, you get the idea of what's going to happen. We can hear it right now. I'm also going to infect another one like that. If I then flick this up, I can get two of them with one splash potion. Like that. And then both of them are going to give me some sweet deals. We're also going to do the same thing on this side. Welcome, dear infector. I'm also going to cure both of these guys. There we go. And this guy's been cured. He's offering me a discount. But you know what? <laughs> one discount ain't enough, mate. Go and do it again. And so eventually, if I keep doing this over and over again, I will be able to trade one stick for one emerald. So, <laughs> like mining one log gets me eight emeralds then. What's the price is now? Down to 20. <laughs> That's still not enough. Meanwhile, this guy's dropped his price from 38 to 13 emeralds for mending. He's getting cheaper. I will cure him again, though, to get it down for one emerald for mending. And whilst I wait for those guys to cure, I'm going to continue working on the inside of my house. I really am the resident doctor for these guys, aren't I? God, I've got loads of patients. The upstairs interior is pretty much done. There's a little hole there. That is where the beacon will go. We need to hurry up and defeat the wither. I'm also going to put this carpet down. There we go. We have got a nice looking bedroom. I will add other things here. I'm not sure what I'm going to put on this side. I don't really need two crafting tables, so we'll get rid of that. I will make this bit look nicer. And down these stairs, there'll be a bunch of like mechanical things. I think like a wheat farm. Also a furnished room. Probably somewhere to get sticks AFK. Maybe a bamboo farm. All sorts of stuff like that. And the very good news is these guys have been cured so many times. Yes, one stick for one emerald. You heard it right, folks. We are now very, very rich indeed. What's that? I want mending. Oh, that's only going to cost me one emerald. I said books. That's going to cost me more. It's so easy. Look, 
nine mending books. I'm just going to go and put this on everything. Finally, it has started snowing. This is the first time it has snowed in the entire video. The only reason I want snow so much is so the land I ruined <laughs> can be repaired. I was hoping this guy would sell me apples. He hasn't, but he will sell me loads of golden carrots, so my food problems are over. This guy, on the other hand, will sell me apples for just one emerald anyway. I don't even need to get him lower. Haha, <laughs> we're sorted. For one emerald, I'm going to buy a load of power 2 bows. Then I can create a power 5 bow. And there it is, power 5. After 77 days, I think it's finally time that I went to the stronghold, defeated the ender dragon, and then finally get my hands on those elytra. And whilst I'm there, I also plan on taking out the wither as well. I found something cool on the way, a pillager outpost. So when I do eventually want to do a raid, I've got the things I need to start it. And we are also very, very close to the stronghold. I reckon digging here is the perfect spot. Here we go. Nice little find in a chest. Some diamonds. Finally, I found it. I've been searching and searching and searching for this. Okay, perfect. In go the eyes of Ender. And we begin. You guys know the drill. This is pretty straightforward. I know I could have defeated it with beds, but I kind of want to test out this power five bow. It's safe to say it does quite a lot of damage. And there we go. Okay, maybe one more. I miscounted. I miscounted again. This time the dragon is well and truly defeated. I also didn't have space in my inventory for all the beds. I plan on doing some serious enchanting here. Now that I've finished anviling, let's get all this XP. I'm taking the egg back with me. And I could use the bedrock to easily defeat the wither, but I feel like it's going to be way more exciting if we just try and battle it normally. Especially with this very powerful power 5 bow, it's going to hurt him a lot. This is pretty straightforward, actually. <laughs> he does, like, no damage. There we go. He's pretty much at half health now. And now I'm getting withered. I've got to be a bit more careful. My arrows no longer work. I have to hit him with the sword. I've scammed a lot of villagers for this moment. Here we go. That is the Wither defeated, and we have the Nether Star. All that's left to do now is the scary task of finding the Elytra. And I just realized I should use my brain and build with slabs, not blocks. I think I've found what I'm looking for. Over there in the distance, hopefully it has an end ship as well. Not one end city, but two end cities. However, neither of them have the Elytra. That is very annoying. At least these shulker shells are going to be useful. This one looks promising. In fact, it's very promising indeed. It's going to be worth my time building across. Let's end the pearl on over. Grab the treasure and the elytra and fly on out of here. It's great to be home, sweet home. Uh, okay, <laughs> maybe the middle of nowhere would be a better description. Thankfully, times have changed quite a bit for SB now and I can just fly over the world. And here it is, home sweet home. Hey buddy, you don't look so good. There we go, you're much better. Let's add mending and unbreaking to my elytra. Let's also craft an ender chest and a grindstone. I've decided these kind of things should really be in my bedroom, so we're finally going to start putting them here. And also make a shulker box. And eventually down here, I'm going to build a proper treasure room. But for now, this is where the egg shall live. <laughs> and finally, I can add the beacon to my house. Let's place that there. And doesn't it look amazing? Look at that. I can see it from miles away. I love it. We're now getting things like efficiency five on my shovel and my axe. And now getting wood has never been quicker. Yes, this is where we're at now in Minecraft. I've decided I'm going to be building my house out of emerald blocks. I feel like the main thing holding me back is my lack of gold. So I've decided it would just be a good idea to fly around the nether, look for bastions and steal all their gold. Finding fortresses has been pretty easy, but finding a bastion has been super hard. I've got another wither skull, which is what I want. And this guy's just stolen it. Whoa, what's going on? Thankfully he died and I can get it back. Guys, I'm on half a heart. I am so close to death there. That was the closest I have come to death in the entire thing. That magma cube just shredded my health. D don't ask. I mean, I'll show you what happened before. I jumped into the lava thinking I had my light on. I just landed in the lava, took fall damage. Wasn't that bad. But yeah, I did not expect that magma cube to destroy me like that. <laughs> that was very worrying. Finally, we have a bastion and this one has loads of gold. It's about to start raining piglins. Are you kidding me? Give that back to me. Only got 32 blocks from that whole bastion. <laughs> Not very profitable, was it? There's no way you can tell me that bastions are not OP in Minecraft. Guys, I can't believe I was this stupid. I was just admiring this wither skull that I'd got. Look at it, it's, it's beautiful. And I realized that I completely forgot to get the ender dragon head. I don't know what I was thinking. So I'm going back there again. Thankfully, now that I can fly, no harm was done. We've got it, let's get out of here. Although I see no reason to stop at one dragon head. I wouldn't even say two is enough. I think that the perfect amount is three. And <laughs> now I'm gonna go home. Okay, I found another one on my way back. <laughs> I've got four now. I'm, I'm definitely done. This is why I definitely need a treasure room now. We've got so much good stuff. I also got three extra pairs of elytra there and, and loads of other things. I'm tired of never having any gunpowder, so I'm devoting an entire night to creeper hunting. A stack and a half of gunpowder isn't half bad for one night's work. I'm also tired of running out of food, so I've got a plan. It involves grabbing some flowers, making some orange dye, turning my shulker box orange, and then buying lots and lots of golden carrots 
and filling this up. I've just realised I also have a use for all this sugar cane I planted. Villagers are willing to pay good money for paper as well. My floor that only has the purpose to show how rich I am, it's almost complete. And I feel like for the last 10 days or so, I just want to explore. I want to see what's in the area because I haven't really travelled that far away from where I am. And just see what I can find. Already I found two things I wanted. A monument and a dark oak forest. Let's check out this monument first. I just realised I have no wood so it's the dark oak forest first. Whilst we're here we can get some gold. The best thing about the dark oak forest is look how fast I can mine up the wood. Rather than going in, getting the gold and getting out, I want to try and take out all three elder guardians. Already I found the gold but with minor fatigue it's useless. Here we have elder guardian number one. Unfortunately he was underwhelmingly very easy. Here's elder guardian number two. Once again very easy. And here's the third and final guardian. And that is all of them defeated. And now I can drink my milk and grab the gold. I found a jungle temple here. This is interesting. I don't know what good stuff it's going to have. <laughs> I think you meant to flick the leaves and do the puzzle, but I'm just like, yeah, we're just, we're just mining the side. And, uh, one more gold, I'll take that. You missed. And we got diamonds. Nice. I also want to take this bamboo home with me. Another monument here. Let's do it. I'm using the trick of setting your end distance to two for this one. It makes sealing the gold much, much easier. Let's grab all of this. I now have 29 gold blocks, 17 ingots. I feel like I should just head home. I realised I've forgotten to do one of the most important things in the whole series. Get a pet dog. There we go. We've got one. I'll tell you what. This is what Minecraft is all about. I may have done a lot of crazy things in this video, but this is without a doubt the best one yet. I won't name him just yet. Let me know down in the comments what you think I should name him. And yes, it is a boy, so you know what kind of names to choose. I'll tell you what, there's no place like home. Yep, come on in. This is where you live, buddy. You can stay right about here. I can finally afford to put my new flooring in. For my next build, I want to gather up loads and loads of blackstone. And then these walls here are going to be changed to blackstone bricks. It's early days, but this is the progress I've made so far. You come down here and there's two ways you can go. Coming down here, you can actually connect up to the other corridor, no problem. And we're going to have rooms off shooting like this along these corridors. Just so that I've got loads and loads of space. I'll have things like brewing rooms, furnace rooms, chest rooms, whatever I need down here. And if I need more space, I can go further down there, connect them all up. I want to keep this, this entire corridor going all the way around though. The only thing I do need to do is mine all this out and replace it with blackstone bricks. That's going to take a while though. I'm not going to do it right now. I have a couple of questions. First of all, how did this random guy get down here? And how is there two people in this one? It must be something to do with the fact that I'm literally overrun with villagers in here. We've got golem spawning everything. Whilst he's stuck down here, I might as well still heal him. The first thing I'm going to add in my brewing room is a quartz floor. I want to use packed ice and blue ice for some building and unfortunately this house is made of it so it's, it's got to go. I decided I'd also need lava for this build so we're going to the nether. Imagine if I messed up and died now on day 98. Here's the thinking behind it. Fill this bit with glass and then place lava in that corner and that corner. Dig down and then we just need a couple more buckets to finish it off. Let's put this here, put that there, and finally one more there, and we'll go and see what it looks like below. I have to say, I like it. Lava and ice together. There's something about that that's really cool. I have to say, it's really coming together in this room. All of the brewing stands are in. I've got all these barrels for various ingredients. I'll probably put item frames on the front of them. And there we have it. The first of the rooms down here, the brewing room, is finished. And I'm now getting so, so close to 100 days survived in hardcore Minecraft. I've still got loads of projects I want to do, loads of things I want to sort, but you can also let me know down below in the comments if you've got any other ideas that I should do. If this does go down well, I'm planning on making it into a series, so make sure as well to please, please click that subscribe button if you haven't already. It only takes a second, but this video took so long to make that it would really, really mean a lot to me. And as the sun has set, we are now about to begin day 100. I feel like the best way to start this day is just to recap what I've done. So the first thing I did was found this village and completely fenced it off to keep all the villagers safe. I created this farm for food and for wool. I made a villager trading hall which made me very, very rich. I built this house which I'm super, super proud of. I showed off all my wealth with the floor, made this cool beacon, defeated the ender dragon, went to the end city, also got the elytra. You've just seen this but I made this very cool brewing room. I also got full netherite armor and yet the most important thing I did was this little fella here. Tell me what to name him. And I've also got my bedroom here. I'm thinking of making this into some sort of room. Maybe this could be the dog's bedroom. I'm not too sure. So here we go again. Day 101 on our way to 200. And one of the first things I want to do is get myself a cartographer. And to make that, we're going to go ahead and do that. Place it down for one of these fellas to use. <laughs> you good sir will be my cartographer. If I create a compass and a load of glass panes, I should be able to upgrade this guy to the max level. I don't know if it makes it the max one, but it does give me a woodland explorer map. Look at that golem offering a puppy, eh? <laughs> yeah, very kind. So in the morning, that is the place that I'm going. 
to a woodland mansion. So according to the map, we've got to go very, very far north, which is over in this direction. But obviously, we're, we're going to fly. It's not going to take me that long. Didn't expect to find this on the way. A desert and a desert temple. Let's check it out. The main thing I want to get from here is some notch apples if possible. We've got regular golden. What's that book? Protection. <laughs> we're past protection two days. Unfortunately, it was pretty useless, but at least the TNT might be handy. According to the map, we're now in line with the woodland mansion. We just have to fly in this direction a little bit longer. And here it is coming into view over 8,000 blocks to get here. I'm trying to find the entrance. All I can say is thank goodness for the elytra. Here we go. So I know that these are pretty dangerous places. I'm going to have to be careful because it's hardcore. It does make the mobs 10 times more powerful. Although these guys, they, they do half a heart. You know what? I, I take it back. You guys, you guys are rubbish. I'm not entirely sure if there's any useful loot here particularly. The gunpowder is the main thing that I want. Also grab the music disc. I should probably start collecting those. Might as well take some bookcases as well. You, you can never have too many books. Let's be honest. There's only one thing I really want from this woodland mansion and that is the Totem of Undying which comes from this guy. Did I just really just kill him in two hits? <laughs> Let's put that there. Perfect. I'm pretty sure that if we head upwards, there'll be more illagers up there. I found the area. I don't know how to get into it, but I've found it anyway. Whoa, what's going on? Oh, you took a blast there as well. There he is. The great... Excuse me, you two. I'm trying to make a cinematic moment here. As I was saying, here we go. The big showdown. You think you've... To be honest, I'm actually kind of weak, actually. I should probably be kind of careful. Who am I kidding? I've got a total of undying. You can run, mate. But yeah, wow, he's actually really running for it. <laughs> Look at your crocodiles are no use. Tell you what, if you ever want books, this is the place for you. Normally, I'd have to scam a lot of villagers to get this many books, so this is a this is a much nicer way to do it. Just steal it from the villagers. And here we have Totem of Undying number three. And on that note, I think I've got all the totems. I'm getting out of here. I've decided it's just getting too crowded down here with everything. I'm going to open this up for everybody. I finally got an enchantment. I should have got a long time ago. Infin- Okay, I did not mind, mean to buy that many of them, but anyway, it'll do. I've just remembered something. Mending and infinity cannot go on the same bow, so um, <laughs> I have to make a completely new one. This guy is giving me sharpness five. Finally, I can put feather falling on my boots and depth strider three. And finally, a book of thorns two, so I can get loads of these. And now I can use the grindstone and all the things I got from the end city. <gasps> no. What just happened there? Oh my goodness, what a mess that's made. That almost destroyed me as well. <laughs> it couldn't have been a worse place for this creeper to blow up. Anyway, the main thing I can now do is get Thorn 3 on my armor. This place is becoming a bit of a mess. Let's also cure this fella. There's another creeper here, and these golems are just standing doing it. Look, what do I pay you guys for? I brewed some fire resistance and some swiftness, and I decided I'm still living life like a peasant. Look at this, diamond tools. Who has diamond tools in Minecraft? So we're going to the nether, and we're going to get the rest of the netherite. And to start off, I'm going to drink some fire resistance, then some swiftness, and I'm going to see if the pickaxe can keep up with this. And there we go. We managed to find some quite quickly there. There we go. We managed to find another piece. <laughs> okay, it's two pieces as well. That's really good. I, won't put, I just nearly missed this piece, but I just about found it, and it's another two. Perfect. In fact, it's three. I often wonder if a method like this is the most efficient way. Huh? Have some more. <laughs> I've done all this crazy mining over here, and yet it's when I'm doing this little strip mine that I happen to find it. There we go. We managed to find some more as well. Perfect. This is the last piece of ancient debris that I need. And there's two of them. That's really, really good. I'm also going to need magma later on, so I'm going to grab it while I can. Home sweet home. I'd better go ahead and quickly sleep. And now I can begin smelting my netherite. And yes, I'm putting efficiency on breaking and mending on my diamond hoe. And I'm also going to turn it into a netherite one, just because I can afford it. And I now have all netherite tools. <laughs> and I got the thing. Serious dedication. And with this final ingot, I can also make a fortune netherite pickaxe. And on this pickaxe, I can have silk touch. I've just realized I made a netherite hoe, <laughs> but I didn't make a netherite sword, so we, we've still not got full netherite tools. So it's back to mining ancient debris. And there we go, we found so <laughs> I found that so quickly, it was like right by where the other ancient debris was. Let's make another ingot. And now I definitely <laughs> have full netherite tools. I am now ready to begin my next project. I spent many, many days gathering lots and lots of materials. Currently waiting for my iron to finish smelting here as well. There we go. It's now all finished. You're probably wondering what on earth I'll need two stacks of iron for, but all will be revealed. To build this farm, we are going to be going to the nether. At this point, you can probably already guess what the farm is going to be, since there's only one type of farm in the nether anyway. Well, there is actually quite a few nether type farms, but this is the most common one. I'm going to put a ladder right here and then hold jump. And then when I get to the top of my jump, I need to throw an ender pearl like that and then yeah i am above the nether now look at this we've arrived so this right here is the block of bedrock that i want to destroy so i'm going to start by placing a piston and because my coordinates are at negative z on the negative z side of this we're going to place that obsidian on this side tnt over here and we're going to place a trap door like that as well so the plan is i place tnt here go under there and then i keep spamming this as fast as i can okay it didn't work that time it doesn't work every time take two 
This time I can feel I'm going to pull it off. I'll try and click a bit faster. You need to be clicking so fast. There we go. We got it. I clicked it faster. And now when I mine up this piston... Look at that. The bedrock is broken underneath. We've got our way up and down. I feel like I should create a little bit of a pillar so that I can find my way over here easier. And now I need a nether waste biome. We're currently in a crimson forest. So if I head this way, I already know... I've checked before where the nether wastes are. So I know if I go in this direction... I've got the coordinates to the area. This is the perfect spot. So I'm going to build all the way up to max height now and make my zombified piglin farm. And I've made it to build height. Now, do you want to see something scary? I'm going to mine this, hold crouch, <laughs> and, and hope for the best. Oh, look at that. We landed on the side, no problem. I'm now at Y249. I'm going to place a slab and start building. And I'm not going to bore you with too many details. I'm just going to get on with building it. I've successfully built this shape, and now I need to place 4,000 magma blocks. Yes, you heard me right. 4,000 blocks. Look at that. It's already working. Now that a lot of spawn, this is actually a good chance for me to put down my satellite pigment. I just put this guy in a boat and then work my way over here. I hope getting out the boat. Yeah. Oh, don't push me out. And if I break this, that's it. You stay there. You're not coming. You you live there now. I'm also going to give him a name. <laughs> angry man. And he's going to be the pigment that makes sure all the other pigments stay angry. We've got a bad situation here. A gas has spawned and he is ruining my day. I'm going to have to attack him with some flying skills here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's going to be a problem we're going to encounter. Once I get all these slabs down, my problems of gas spawning will be over. And I also need to put walls in these corners here so that the pigling path fine properly. And at long last, <laughs> I have finished the spawning platforms. I've made the spot where I will stand, and this is the area where the piglins will die. So we're going to put a little trap door there. We'll put a rail on there. And this is the reason that I needed so much iron. Because I then need to place 25 minecarts on this block. And with three iron to spare, this is all the minecarts I need. And this is where things could go wrong. I need to break that, then break the block below it. Ah, no, bro, are you kidding me? So if I now break this block, place that there, they are all in there. And I think it is now done, <laughs> unless I've done something wrong. I suppose there's only one way to find out. I'm going to go over here, punch this guy. All right, they're now all angry. <laughs> Let's get in here and see if it works. It's kind of working, but I think I slightly messed up by not making the piglin hole deep enough. Actually, if I break that block there... This is terrifying. They're climbing the ladders. Now, there's no way. I'm, I'm out of here, guys. <laughs> Look at that. They're all going straight in. It's beautiful. And now I can just sit here and watch the XP flow in. And look at all the loot that I'm getting with this as well. I'm going to have to come up with some sorting system for this. And there we have it. I have now reached level 100. This has to be probably the best XP farm I have ever made. And the reason I chose this one over a Guardian or an Enderman farm is thanks to all the gold that I can get. I'm floating down this ladder and I'm still going collecting XP. I have to say, it's Great to finally be home. That was an absolutely massive project, but it was well worth it. I can now add fire aspect to this sword and some more thorns to my armor. And now I feel like one of the cool things I should do that I haven't done yet is a raid. Now, which village to raid? Do we raid that one or do we raid my hometown? There's the pillager outpost that we found last time. And here is a pillager captain. Excuse me, sir, but I need your services. I'll put this in memory of you and I don't want that crossbow. I think I'm going to be risky and raid my hometown just because I really want to get hero of the village. So here we go. <laughs> the raid is beginning. Now, where are these guys coming from? That's it. Ring the bell. Emergency, guys. This is, a, this is not a drill. Okay, there they are. There's the boys. Let's go in. No messing about. You get out of here. Okay, they did a lot of damage. I should probably put my chest plate on before I uh, before I go any further with this. There we go. Thankfully, I've just upgraded my sword. Wow, those guys are packing a punch here. I've got to be careful. I feel seriously undergeared for this. I didn't get any gapples. I didn't get a bow. And yet, despite that, I'm destroying them. I should definitely get a bow. That would be a good idea. You guys think you stand a chance? Whoa, the golems are actually struggling now. Gonna have to go and uh, help them out here. You leave my golems alone. They're attacking. They've made it in. How did you guys even get in here? Leave my villagers alone, you. And there we go. Wave number two has been dealt with. Excuse me, sir. This is an emergency. I need arrows. You don't sell them. We've no time to discuss specifics, but I've been very undergeared. Here's the rest of the wave. They don't see many of them, though. And he's dropped a crossbow for me. That's going to be kind of useful. Don't mind me. I'm just going to sleep mid-raid. I've got a few moments before the next wave starts. Let me quickly grab this bow and get back to the action. Yeah, the big boy ravagers are here now. You guys, back off. Okay, I need to get my chest plate on ASAP. There we go. No problem. You get out of here. Despite this being a power five bow, it's not doing that much damage. But it's getting the job done. Look, they can't even see me through the sugar cane. Okay, maybe you can. That's it. I'm going in with this all-powerful sword. There is a couple of them over there. They're doing all sorts to my poor golem. I'll sort you out. That's it. Get out of here. These guys just do not stop. Why is a wandering trader randomly turned up at this time? Got any good deals? No, you're completely useless. As usual, I'm struggling to locate the enemy. It's over here. Look at that. That was a right team move. Get rid of these two. Perfect. And we did it! We defeated the raid! We are now here of this. Look at the fireworks going off! 
It's brilliant. I didn't know the villagers did that. Look, they're all coming outside again. This has been a great day. You got some sweet deals for me now. Look at that. The prices have been slashed. We've got another four totems of undying. Life is good, ladies and gentlemen. Life is very good. Blimey, I missed a totem lying on the ground. Look at these guys. They just gave me some free stuff. Look at him. He's throwing everything at me. They love me. If only they knew how much I'd actually scammed them. And I have the final book that I wanted, Flame. And I'm heading back to the XP farm, where I then plan to fully max out my armor. Seems like you guys have forgotten how angry you used to be at me. Maybe this will jog your memory. I just remembered I completely forgot to bring an anvil. Okay, I'll be right back when I've got more iron. And I find myself once again mining for iron. The way I see it, the sooner I get an iron golem farm, the better. Let's set all of this off smelting. Craft another anvil. And back we go again. Now I can plunk down the anvil and get to work. What's that? I, I don't have enough levels. Just give me a moment. There we go. Are you kidding me? My, my anvil broke already. So it's take two going mining for iron. Oh, look at that. We have got ourselves an enchanted gold apple and some diamonds. That's pretty nice. I have to say that was a pretty productive time mining. I'm hoping that I never have to go mining ever again. At least not for iron anyway. Maybe for diamonds though. Couldn't work out why my game was so laggy. It turns out there's millions of swords sitting on top of this hopper. I think I'm going to be pretty rich from all this gold. Let's turn this all into gold blocks. Yes, we have 60 blocks of gold. I'm going to craft a couple of anvils. Place that there. Make one of these guys angry and get back to work. Are you kidding me? I can't even put thorns three on this. That's so annoying. I'll sort that out later. So I almost... <laughs> have fully maxed armor. And now with my 72 blocks of gold, I'm getting out of here. This will go nicely with my other 32 blocks of gold. We have over 100 blocks of gold now. After 140 days, I've decided it's finally time I made an enchantment table. I did not realize that I am... Uh... <laughs> I'm a bit dangerously close to the edge of a mountain here. That does change my plans with the design slightly. Turns out I have another 30 gold blocks in this chest as well. I'm going to once again grindstone these boots. I know it's pretty basic, but I feel like this will do for now. I will eventually improve it at some point, but let's just enchant these and see if we can get it to max. With them breaking and prop 4, yeah, I can definitely max it out now. This time there'll be no trouble enchanting all of this. That gives me mending. This now gives me almost max armor. There's one thing I need to do, and that is to sit and trade with these fellas until I get soul speed three. Oh my goodness, I just almost died to a piglin. I don't know. <laughs> he won't accept the gold. What's wrong with you, man? Just just, just take the gold. Leave me alone. It's a good thing I have plenty of totems lying around. All right, fellas. Christmas has come early. Finally, I got soul speed three. You guys have taken forever with that. Thanks to those piglins, I have a lot of leather. I'm finally going to make this easier to find stuff. Yeah, that's definitely looking much better. I'll fill these up with other things at some point. Now let's place my boots here. Put the soul speed... You gotta be kidding me. Well, <laughs> back to the grindstone they go. Oh my goodness, I just got it straight away. I was about to say, I, <laughs> I need thorn three. And he literally gave it to me. Oh, I don't even have a book. Do not change your trade. I need that. I was about to say, I'm dedicating way too much time to getting max armor, but I, I need to do this. There we go. Thorn three. Before I was combining two thorns, two books, which was just adding it up too much. Yeah, for the feather falling, we'll take that. Depth strider, thank you. This time, I'm getting the maximum stuff on my boots. And finally, it has... Give me a moment. It has been achieved. I have completely, well and truly maxed out my armor. And now I have only one goal, albeit a very simple one, and that is to get one of the greatest music discs ever, Pig Step. And I just realized I, I forgot to get food. Also, in the last video, some people said I went into creative because I managed to get a stack of blaze rods. And I'm going to assume that the people that said that have never used a looting three sword on a blaze corner. Look at how many blaze rods you get from a blaze. Look, I just got three. That easy. Another three there. It's too easy, guys. So that's how I got loads. I'm not going to sit here and get more. I've got more important things to do. And yes, don't worry. I do indeed read the comments when you say something. Come on. Give me pig step. No, not today. I might as well take the lodestone, though. Finally, I have searched so many... And I have finally found it. Pigster. And whilst I'm here, I might as well steal more gold. And that, to me, is a job well done. I then proceed to spend the next three days sitting and getting loads and loads of XP. All right, now that I've got all these useless levels, I might as well crack on with something else. And yes, these videos take so long to make that I've even trimmed my beard in, in the time. Now, probably one of the most important things on your mind right now is what am I going to name my dog? I spent the last 50 days and he, he's still got no name. So thanks so much for all the ideas you had. I've decided to go with Buddy. There you are, Buddy. <laughs> That's your official name now. Another thing I think would be a good idea to do is to make a compass and then place this lodestone right here. I think if I then right click it, yeah, look at that. In the nether, we will be able to find this portal much easier. And now for my next project, I want to find a trident. So to do that, I'm going to need to find some drowns. These ruins usually have one I look for. There we go. So let's just take out these guys 
and hopefully get a trident. I don't know how many of these guys you actually have to take out to get what you're looking for, but I get the feeling like it's going to take a while. I also had no idea how fast Depth Strider with Dolphin's Grace is. The Dolphin can't even keep up. I decided it's best to put that idea on the back burner. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so difficult to get a trident. So I'm going to do some experimentation and at some point create a trident farm that's going to let me get millions and millions of them. And I've instead got a new project on the horizon. I'm going to make a bunch of Eyes of Ender, then four End Crystals. Thanks to me Piglin trading, I have plenty of obsidian. So let's make four Ender Chests. I'm going to grab lots of wood and a lot of wool. I could also do with a bit more gunpowder. Now we have 36 gunpowder. That should be plenty. That's going to give me a load more firework rockets. To be honest, the way I see it, the sooner I get a gunpowder farm, the better. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I showed you guys this, but my uh, my music disc collection is growing nicely. And now I'm going to fly to my next destination. Then I'm going to go down this little hole here. There we go. I feel like it'd be a good idea to just build a portal here. Then I can just go through the nether to get to the stronghold. Let's board up this. So I can build a nice little portal. I think one of these shulker boxes has flint and steel. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> I always carry the essentials, and then let's see where it takes us. It took me to my original portal, which... <laughs> That's not good. So now in a big waste of time, I've got to fly back to the stronghold. I think it's best I just get on with this. So the first plan is to rebirth the Ender Dragon. There we go. It's appearing. Whilst that does that, I'm going to craft a bunch of beds. Place some obsidian right here. And now we simply wait for the dragon to perch. Whilst I'm up here, I can actually shoot the towers. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. Okay, I've got an Enderman after me. But I should be able to finish it. Oh, okay. No, we, we, missed, we missed it, but we can finish her off. That tower has got to go. And now I can finish the job. And now a new end gateway has been opened. So I plan to use this to find shulker shells. Because over time, I've realized that shulker boxes are so, so useful. Here's my first one of the day. Let's find the shulkers. You also get very good loot from these places. It's a very small end city. I only got two. Let's keep searching. Now this one looks much bigger. The bow is the way to go with these guys because then you can get them in two hits, which stops them from teleporting away from you. Now we'll grab these elytra and of course the dragon head, which has fallen because my inventory is full. I'll grab this one last shulker shell. That's 18 now. I've got that's more than enough. Grab the dragon head and go home. I've made it back home. I've got plenty of shulker shells. I've got elytra, a few extra dragon heads. Pretty good journey. I think it's finally time I tackled the auto storage for my gold farm. So I could go mining for redstone or I could support the economy and buy it off a villager. Yeah, so he's very happy now. I'm also going to craft a few repeaters, a dropper, and I'm also going to need to mine up a bit of quartz so that I can make a bunch of comparators. And thankfully the pigmen aren't angry at me right now so I can do some work. I've now successfully got rid of a load of the junk from all these chests. Just need to empty these two here. I realised it was just quicker and easier to break these ones as well. So this dropper here is going to be the one that gets rid of all the gold swords. And this is where I'm going to place the comparators with some hoppers going into them. And then finally some double chests at the bottom with hoppers going in to them. There needs to be torches underneath these hoppers and then repeaters going into the torches, blocks along here and finally a bunch of redstone all up here. Now in theory this should work. I just need to fill these with the items that I want to sort. Unfortunately I <laughs> threw all my rotten flesh away. I think I'm going to get some. Never mind it's uh, it's all despawned. Forgot to place this dropper upside down which is kind of important. And this little contraption should eject things down every time I put an item in. There we go. It worked. I'm also going to disable this hopper temporarily until I get enough rotten flesh. And so now we test it out. Guys, I, I made a big mistake here. Okay, I've just got to get out of it. That, it, that was a bit of a... <laughs> I didn't realise they could all just walk on there and come round. Yeah, I was a bit of an idiot in that situation. I'm just going to pop home and get another totem of undying. Let's grab that. No harm done. And it's nice to see it snowing for a change. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you always carry a totem of undying. So I'm guessing in order for this to work now, I'm going to need a bunch more slabs. And then I need to cover this area up completely. I feel like I've really safety proofed the area. That should in theory mean no more mishaps. And now I'm letting all the items filter through. And they are filling up the chests. There is a slight problem with the machine. So I just need to move this all over one block. Break that hopper there. Place a new one there. Put that like that. There we go. Now it will work perfectly. Take two. Hopefully I don't have to use another totem. Look at it go. As you can see, the swords are just being thrown out. These chests are being filled up nicely. This is doing my OCD. <laughs> the world of good. I then spent another few days sitting in this farm to get to level 200. Nearly two stacks of gold blocks gained again. I'm pretty happy with that. I feel like something I haven't done yet that would definitely be a good idea is to craft a jukebox and place it down probably in the corner. And now I can listen to Pigstep. If I was playing Minecraft without recording, I would just have that playing in the background. It truly is such a good sound. So for my latest endeavor, I'm going to be going to a desert. And that's because I'm always sick of never having any sand. And my plan is to get my shovel and fill an entire shulker box with sand. After mining up an entire shulker box, I got a little carried away and decided to do an extra chest as well. I've got plenty now. This is the other shulker box full of sand. We've got that. I don't know what I'm going to use all this sand for right now, but 
It will come in handy. One of the things that I'd like to build in here is going to be a nether wart farm. And I'm going to go ahead and smelt a load of this netherrack. And I'm going to place a couple of chests here. Hoppers wrapping all the way around. We're going to add a nice quartz floor. And then all the rest of this can be nether brick. I think glowstone will be a good block to use as lighting. Now all my nether bricks are ready. So let's craft them into blocks and finish building this room. I feel like adding stairs around the edge could be quite a nice effect. And now I'm going to begin planting this nether wart. And to speed things up, I'm going to go to my trusty supply of bone meal, which apparently doesn't work on nether wart. I'm sure it used to. Thanks to all that sand that I got before, I can make a bunch of smooth sandstone and finish this part of the building. Add those here. Looking pretty good. Can't really do much more of this room until these nether wart grow. So in the morning, it makes sense to work on something else going to involve all these gold blocks and I'm simply going to fill all of these walls in. In the last video I had unlimited emeralds. In this one I've now also got unlimited gold. That looks so rich. So I don't know what I'm going to be getting unlimited of in the next video. These are now starting to be fully grown. I don't know if fortune gives me more. I think it does. So that's definitely going to be something worth remembering. And now it's time we crafted a bunch of dispensers. I'm going to place these along here. I'm going to make a polished blackstone button and put it on there. Actually I need to change this to a redstone lamp. There we go. And then I can feed redstone all the way around here. Put repeat is going into each dispenser and I now need to go and get more redstone. Sorry sir, I, I hate to wake you up but I, I really need this redstone. And now this should be fully operational. We'll also need to put all of these water buckets in. And whilst I wait for all these to grow, I'm going mining for redstone because I'm getting tired of constantly running out. The good thing about redstone is it's very, very easy to find. With fortune 3, look, I've already got 30. It's so much better. I'm also going to grab any lapis that I see with my fortune. Wasn't even looking for them but there's a few diamonds lurking down here. That's nine in total. I'm pretty happy with that. I have to say, this has definitely been a nice top up. I generally like to store lapis in this chest here. <laughs> in the enchantment room I never use but looks amazing. And I get the feeling like we're not running out of redstone anytime soon. I think it's about time I sorted this place out and made it look a little nicer. Are you kidding me? I try to do something nice for the villagers and of course it goes wrong. Normally I'm never happy to see this guy but this one is offering me gunpowder. I definitely like the sound of that so you are going in there good sir. Don't worry you will be completely safe. Look at me building with gold blocks like it's nothing. Also I want the lead so I'm I'm going to take out the llamas. Evil I know, but needs must. There's still quite a lot of work to do, but this is the progress so far. I'm sure you'll agree that it looks way, way better than before. They're not all fully grown yet, but I'm going to press this button anyway and just to check that it all works properly. Well, that went well, didn't it? Pretty simple fix. I just need to add a repeater right about there. And now we can go for take two and see what happens. And look at that, beautiful, and it'll all flow into the hoppers. And we can grab all of these and start planting again. And this means I can finally begin work on this last bit of the roof. And if you didn't know, to craft red nether brick, you need two nether wart, two nether bricks, and you put it like that. I've now finished all of this area. I'm going to release this fella back out. Come on, mate, you you come on out of here. I'm <laughs> killing him with my thorns here. What that? Oh, he, he died. <laughs> And then the one on this side randomly despawned. So unfortunately that means I'm going to have to get two of those guys at some point. And at long last I'm tidying up this massive mess that's been here for ages. And finally I can cover over the top with a bunch of snow so nobody will ever know. Stick a little trap door there. And now it's all nicely covered up. I'm also going to build a soul speed tunnel from my house to the villager place. I've dug out the entire tunnel. Now I just need to put soul sand down. And there we have it. My high speed tunnel is now complete. I feel like this is one of those things that's really cool. But I'm just never going to use it. I'm just going to be flying with my Elytra. But it's nice to have. No. <laughs> I was AFK doing something else and a creeper just walked up and blew. Oh, this is why I should have lit it up, shouldn't I? I've run out of blackstone now, but I've chiseled it all out at least. I'll finish it at a later date. I can now finally finish off this roof, replant the nether wart, and I've decided I've had enough of building. I'm going off on an adventure somewhere. Here's something I want to test. If I grab myself a lead and then attach one of these dolphins, does it keep up with me? I think it does. This is the way to swim underwater. Next time I seriously go looking for tridents, this is how I'm doing it. This is the best way to find drown. Something I quite like to find is a swamp biome because I've yet to get any slime balls. I found a monument, even though I have loads and loads of gold, I <laughs> might as well get more. And when you have depth strider and aqua affinity, it's super easy. I don't really have much use for pumpkins, but I found some, so I might as well pick them up. And the only real thing I'm bothered about in this village is all the hay bales. It's a shame I don't keep my netherite hoe in the ender chest. That would have been very useful. Oh, well, I'm rich. I might as well make another diamond one. And here's another village whose wheat I'm going to steel and finally I have found a swamp and I don't think it's actually that far from where I live. It would be amazing if I could find a swamp hut and then I could make a farm out of it but I don't think there's one here. It has to be said this is being an extremely successful night. I'm getting lots of gunpowder, lots of slime balls. Well with the sun now rising I am more than happy with that night's work and I think I am ready to head home. At some point I probably will make a slime farm but three stacks of slime is pretty good. We got the 43 gunpowder. I will make a gunpowder farm as well at some point but 
I'm really happy with that. My armory's starting to get a bit broken, my tools a little bit broken, so I think it's time for a trip to the XP farm. I then spent a load more days sat at the XP farm getting to level 250. The goal is level 2000, guys. We've got a long way to go, but that's what I'm going for. And now I'm going to brave this blizzard and go on another journey. My farm also gave me another stack and a half of gold blocks. Life's pretty good at the moment. This looks like what I've been looking for. I can't say I've come to get the most exciting thing in the world. I've, <laughs> I've come to get some bees. And look at that. We've got a baby. <laughs> Why am I enjoying this so much? I feel like at some point bees are going to be pretty useful, so I'm going to grab that. Look at that, we even got a, a total bee location. So as I was saying, honey blocks are going to be useful. I've got loads of slime for slime blocks. We can make some really cool creations with this. But first, I want to find a few extra bee nests. Aha! Now this is going to be very, very useful. I won't be building a farm out of this in this video, but at some point in the future, I'm going to be very pleased to use that. This is a pretty nice find, a mesa biome. And we have a mine shaft here. Look at, okay. I was a bit dangerous, but we, we managed to land it. The best thing about Mesa is you can get a lot of gold from here, but do I look like I need gold? Whoa! I just had a creeper land on my head, and I almost died if it wasn't for my totem. <laughs> I gotta be more careful. Thankfully, there's plenty more totems available. <laughs> Don't want that to happen too much. Should probably wear a chest plate if I'm not flying around. The only good thing about these mine shafts is the hope that I might find a notch apple. Other than that, I don't really have any use for them. Got a bit of gold here and a regular gold apple, which I guess is okay. Might as well steal some more hay bales whilst I've got them. Day 192 begins. Oh, I'm so sorry. These are pretty rare. It's an infected village. Look at this. They're just all infected. Okay, all right. Don't be like that. You stay inside. And as the sun sets, here we are. Home sweet home. I feel like it'd be quite nice for this village to have some bees buzzing around. Eventually, I'm going to make a proper honey farm, but for now, I think this will do. And now that I've got four and a half stacks of hay, I can make lots and lots of bread. And then give it to all the villagers. And that will lead to lots and lots of baby villagers. Would you look at this? I need these fellas, and they've <laughs> just turned up. Oh, no, they're going to die again. Quick, get out of there, Shabby. I'm going to call these guys the doctors, just not to intimidate anyone. I'm going to play a risky game and not wear armor, so they at least don't get hurt. All right, that needs to go. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm going to die at this rate. Let me just break that. Okay, okay, okay. Put your armor on his feet, you idiot. Die. You must die. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, at least I got him in there. Man, I'm going through these totems like nobody's business today. Let's put this on him. There we go. One of the doctors. Just the sort of fellas I'm looking for. Come on up, guys. If I just bring him round here. Perfect. Now I've blocked it back up. He's back in there because these guys, they're slowly bringing their prices up. I mean, this one wants four. <laughs> you know what I think to that? Get down there. I've got to have three more totems. These can go in the ender chest. I think it's time I made a furnace room. I decide it's time to tighten up security in this village. So I'm going to spawn in some iron golems. I'm curious. Do, do these guys actually attack me if I hit them? Oh, you did a great job already. Let's see. I hit him. Oh, these guys don't care. It's only you guys that will attack me. <laughs> they all know that I am their master. All right, villagers, if you don't feel safe now, you never will. Now it's time I gathered up these furnaces. Although I do actually need to use a furnace to get the smooth stone. Whilst I wait for that to smelt, I can make a few smokers, craft a few extra furnaces, and now I can craft all my blast furnaces and begin building. So we're going to put these right here and the smokers on the opposite side. And finally, eight normal ones in this section. I feel like making the floor out of coal box would be quite a cool thing as well. Already, this place is being put to use. I'm not entirely sure how this next bit's going to work, but I just know I need a lot of lava. I'm going to see what happens if I just drop lava there. It's already covering a good amount. <laughs> Let's get to the nether. Quite simply, all I have to do is just keep right-clicking here and get loads of lava. And what do we think? I thought I'd go a bit all out with the design and, and go for a real lava one, and I, I kind of like it. Now I've just got to do the same for the rest of the place. This is one of those designs that now that I've built it, I don't know if it's such a good idea or not. I think I've got to do a lava roof as well. And I also need lots more black stone bricks. That should be more than enough for now. I also fancy taking these chains and also the lanterns. Now I can put these walls in. Now I need to just tactically place lava all around here and everything... Okay, well, that didn't work. My best bet is to just place the lava here and see if it covers all the blocks. For some reason, these two random spots just will not work. Let's put that... Okay, now we've got to be a little bit careful. Put that on top of there. And please don't cover yourself in lava recipe. And there we have it. Job done. This is my furnace room. Yeah, interesting design. Now, to really bring it to life, I can hang some chains with lanterns on the bottom of them. And whilst I've got a bit of time left, I'm going to finish the black stone along here. Then I'm going to light the area up so we don't have any mishaps down here. Let's harvest all the nether wart. Look at that. Working like a charm. I actually think that this is a very handy thing that I've built now. I don't know where it came from, but this guy pulled out a sword. Let's sort these fellas out. You're not keeping that. Time to get some sleep, and then I can begin day 200. 
So this is it. I've also realized we have so many villagers that all these beds are occupied. It has to be said once again that so much has happened in these 100 days. I spruced up this trading hall to give these guys the luxury they deserve. I built this massive soul speed tunnel, which I guess is kind of useful. I've now got a furnace room, which might get slightly changed. A nether wart room, an enchanting room. I named my dog Buddy because he's my buddy. I managed to get pig step. I got a lot of totems of undying from doing raids and visiting a woodland mansion and <laughs> I've used quite a lot of them. I also fully maxed out my armor, which was mainly thanks to this massive project here that gives me so much gold and so much XP. Fortress in this biome is gonna get the most spawning. And there's Wither Skull number one. Another one, perfect. And that's the third one, that was really quick as well. And for the first time, I can use my lodestone compass to find my portal. Once again, I have run out of firework rockets. I think it's time I got a gunpowder farm done sooner rather than later. I've realized now I have seven wither skulls. Four in my inventory, two down here, and one in my bedroom. My master plan for battling the wither is to go all the way down to bedrock level and summon it somewhere down here. And then the theory is that whilst I'm battling it, it will hopefully reveal some diamonds. All right, here we go. The battle has begun. Probably not have to bore you with many details. It's doing half a heart of damage. Pathetic effort. <laughs> I better eat now. I'm, I'm, I'm down to seven hearts. But yeah, even on hardcore mode, the wither is very, very easy. Okay, wait, I need to pick up the nether star before it gets burnt. <laughs> Sadly, no diamonds from that, but I can now get to work on making a new beacon. I'm thinking right about here could be a cool place to put a load of beacons. What I've just built here might look like a bit of a mess, but eventually I want one of every beacon. Yes, that includes netherite. So I want to build a bit of a podium sort of area to put all these beacons. So starting with a gold one here and an emerald one here. Seems like a good place to start. Let's do some more villager curing. Place more of these blocks. I can already see that this is going to take me a long time. I can't wait any longer. This mountain has got to go. I plan for this middle one to eventually be a netherite beacon. But since that is going to take a very, very long time, I've placed stone bricks inside just so it doesn't look as messy. But it seems like over here we've got some fellas that want a bit of a party. What do you reckon? Do we take them on and then put this village through a raid? All right, good sir. You are going to be the first guy to go down. I now have the bad omen effect. Although the sun is setting, I don't really want to do a raid in the middle of the night. So let's quickly get some sleep and begin the raid. That's it, guys. Panic. There is so many villagers here. I didn't realize it was this full. You guys came from the wrong side. For some reason, there's two iron golems out there already. In fact, by the time I've got it here, they've already finished the job. Once again, they have been stupid and come from over there. I've got to get in and at least do something. Looks like they've got wise to it and they're going from a different angle. Even against a ravager, this bow is pretty powerful. For some reason, they're all down there. Are you guys playing some grand sneak attack or something. That guy just got blown up by a creeper. I cannot find this final guy anywhere. And no matter where I tried, the bell isn't revealing his location. So I'm going to put this raid on hold for now and go and get more gold. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how to get rid of a lot of lag. I'm going to put some lava underneath this dispenser so that that isn't a problem in the future. And I have a lot more gold blocks. Hopefully this will be enough. I should probably do some research on how many blocks you actually need for a full beacon. You may think that I've run out, but don't worry. In my ender chest, I've got 42 more. And that is the first full beacon. Finally, I've tracked down this last guy. He's underneath me. You could, sir, have caused me a lot of trouble. Just get out of it. Oh my goodness, he almost killed me. There's creepers everywhere. This, this is going to get bad. This is going to get very bad indeed. We're all right. I don't know how I'm on one heart. I don't know how I live to tell the tale there. Thankfully, the golems are already doing good work once again. Let's get rid of all these fellas. Once again, the stupid pillager has spawned down there. One of these vexes has got a fire aspect sword. I didn't even know that was a thing. And now they're coming at the other side. I'm so glow. I'm so low. I'm a half a heart. I've got to run for my life here. These big guys are not to be messed with. But it was all to no avail. And there we have it. The victory. The fireworks are being set off. I am now the hero of the village. These totems can go in here. I can now craft another beacon and place it down on the first of my podiums. And I guess I get the Beaconator achievement because it's a full beacon. I think I'm going to use this one to give me resistance too. Not that useful since it only works up to about this point. But I plan to eventually have loads and loads of beacons. I've made more great progress on the Emerald Front. Although there's still lots of blocks to go. I feel like I have a real shortage of quartz so I'm going collecting more. Oh my goodness, what? I just found ancient debris all the way up here. Two of them, that's the last thing I expected to find. I've now got nearly three stacks of quartz, so that should be enough. Look at this, we've got new young ones coming through. The thing that I want to build next is going to be down here. I'm going to fill this part in with quartz. I'm building an AFK sugarcane farm, by the way, if I didn't already say. These walls can be quartz as well. So I'll be using the water to push the sugarcane into a hopper right here. I'm also going to add a bit of light to the room. I realised I need more quartz for the observers, so we're back to the nether. In the last episode, I spent stacks and stacks of iron on loads and loads of golems, and <laughs> now I don't have enough. Look at this, we've just discovered a little mob spawner. This might be worth preserving. I'm going to torch it up. You never know. There's no point in destroying it just in case. And a music disc. I've already got that music disc though. 
And I've already got that music disc. And thankfully, the caves around my house just seem to be full of it. I can get so much iron so, so fast. Now I can load up my blast furnaces and craft a load of observers with all this new iron, craft a load of pistons, and then get to work on the redstone. So the pistons are going to come all the way along here. And then on top of them, I'm going to place observers. Then a load of redstone around the back of these observers. A few torches to keep things light. And now every time a piece of sugarcane grows to three high... It harvests it, and that's then where the hopper comes in. I also need a lot of glass for this. Also got a very nice little storage system set up. I'm getting so, so close. I think I'm one block away now. All of my glass has smelted. I'm going to harvest this sugar cane since I think I might need it. Let's plant these all along here. Might as well fill these hoppers as well. And let's fill all of this in with glass. I'm going to trade with these guys, and I think it's the final emeralds that I need. I also realise that these guys will also take string which I get a lot from from bartering. Let's craft that final block. And there we go. Full beacon number two. I've also once again run out of quartz. Thankfully, finding it and mining it is super, super easy. And I also need more blackstone. I can now finish this section with these cracked blackstone bricks. And I also have the quartz to do this room. I'm going to make some powered rails, a hopper. In fact, make that two hoppers. And then I can make a minecart hopper. And I'm just going to use this to pick up any excess sugarcane. I need a hopper going into that. A rail on top of there. I'm going to have to do something like this to get the minecart moving. I'm going to replace all this sugarcane. Put the glass back. And this is now well and truly finished. And now I'm going to sit here and wait till something happens. And there we go. It worked. And now that another farm is finished, I really want to try and find a jungle. I have been to one before, but I can't quite remember where it was. I'm very glad to say, I think I found the same jungle that I went to before. I should probably sleep before I do anything else. Oh no, there's, there's a creeper coming. Quick, wake up. Wake up, Esprit. Get out of there. <laughs> that was close. That was like a nightmare that came true right after I woke up. And what do we have here? Anything good? You know what? You don't normally get two golden apples in one chest. And this is what I came for. A new pet. A pet parrot. There we go. We've got him. He now lives on my shoulder as I explore the world. Because my parrot doesn't properly teleport if I fly, I'm having to go back on foot. And just to be clear, that means I've got to run 8,000 blocks. It took a long time, but I finally brought home a pet parrot. Now you have somebody to keep me company, buddy. And because of all the running you just made me do... I'm going to call you Runner. Even though parrots don't technically run, they actually fly. I now wish to find a villager that will sell me Sharpness 5. It's entirely possible that I accidentally killed the villager that gave me Sharpness 5. <gasps> I am so sorry. That was an accident. I didn't know there was a hole there. Now I've got to do a villager rescue mission. Whilst we're down here, any chance I can exploit you for easy enchantments? At long last, a Sharpness 5 book. Now, good sir, this may look like I'm abandoning you, but one day... I will be back. I'm going to box you in so nothing can hurt you. You've got absolutely nothing to worry about. Yeah, he's never seen the light of day again. Most importantly now, I can add sharpness 5 to my netherite axe. Also, it seems to annoy you guys that my sword is called Diamond Sword 1, but it would cost me 39 levels to rename it. I'm not doing that. Why on earth, when I make one tiny hole in the corner, do all of you fall in it? I have to know how powerful this axe is. Okay, it can't want to awoke. <laughs> not powerful enough. I might as well just use this sword. And don't worry, even though it's going to be a load of extra effort, I am going to rescue this guy. I've just got to fill this up with kelp and then break it all. Just need to borrow this door temporarily. Put it right there. Now I just have to get this guy to cooperate. <laughs> up he goes. There you go, mate. Safe and sound. I know I've spent a lot of time exploiting these guys, but... I have a soft spot for them in my heart. Looks like the sugarcane farm is working well. I feel like it's about time I patched up holes like this. At some point, and this is a project that's quite a bit down the line, I think it'd be really cool to make an AFK tree farm, which from what I understand involves using a wither. I just got a stack of logs from one of those trees. That's crazy. Do you ever get the feeling like you're being watched, guys? They just won't leave me alone. From now on, I'm only mining giant spruce trees. I have over 10 stacks of logs, and that is equal to over 5,000 emeralds. Time to get incredibly incredibly rich. To be honest, I have no idea what I'm going to do with all these emeralds now. Since I've been doing so many exciting things, guys, I thought I'd slow it down a bit and do some fishing. Don't worry, I don't actually want to fish. I just need it so I can get some cats. Okay, I'm bored already. Let's do it the manual way. In fact, I can get an achievement called tactical fishing here. Look at that. Right, let's release you. And then the axe is going to go to town on these guys. I have 23 fish in total. I think that should be enough for now. And I'm now going to spend a bunch of time AFK at my XP farm. I then spent five days sitting at the XP farm getting to level 300. 308 levels and two stacks of blocks should be enough for me. And now it is time I created one of the most OP farms in Minecraft. 
And there's you thinking the gold farm was OP. I'm going to be creating a raid farm. This is going to get me unlimited totems of dying, even more emeralds. It'll also get me things like gunpowder and redstone. It's just a very OP farm and it's not going to take that long to make. Turns out I also need a cake to do this. It has taken me so, so long to gather up all these resources. But once I have six buckets of lava, I will have everything that I need. I filled up these two shulker boxes and now I can build this over an ocean. I almost forgot, I also need kelp. I just realized that if you go backwards underwater with your elytra flight, you actually fly upside down. What the heck? So this is where we're going to build it. The bed is going to be facing south. Well, it's taken me a long time, but my water elevator is now complete. Just checking in. I'm building a fancy system at the moment. This is a redstone hopper clock. So every like 30 seconds, it will then move that trap door. This next bit actually involves a cake. We're going to put that there, place a rail on here, place the minecart here and push it into the cake. Take away the rail, secure the minecart into place. Once I flick this lever, the block goes into the minecart. This allows both of the hoppers to pick up items. I'm very pleased to say I think I have finished all the redstone. I've just made this device here, which is very, very noisy, but it's just there as a precautionary measure to stop vexes. So once I get rid of all of these blocks, the raid farm will be completely finished. So this is where the raiders will spawn. They will go down here, float along this, fall down this chute, and then I will take them out and their stuff will go in the hopper. I've also just realized I can't get out of here now. And before the farm is fully complete, we need to get a villager onto this bed. So it's off to the village to steal a villager. Do I take a child and put him on there on his own? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. You good, sir. How would you like a job on a raid? No. Okay. This guy's got no job. Come with me, and this could take some time. The very handy part about this is that we've got an ice track on the way. And very conveniently, it is night time, so the villager's gonna get into bed. I swear, if you somehow drown, villager, I will not be happy. Finally, he's in the bed. What I didn't tell him is he must now live on this island for the rest of his life. And now all that's left to do is for me to get Sweeping Edge on my sword. Finally, I've got the Sweeping Edge 3 book. And it turns out my sword is maxed out. That is very annoying. Thankfully, I can easily get all the books I need, craft a brand new diamond sword, turn it to netherite, and then apply all these enchantments. And I'm pretty sure this one can fit them all on. Perfect. I also need to get quite a bit more iron. I've managed to find a diamond in this mine shaft and not to mention lots and lots of iron. I'm so close to finish the auto storage part. I just need a redstone torch there as well. I'm going to go for it. Okay, I got it. I didn't realize I was in flight mode. It was kind of easy. So now I can fill these chests with items I want to sort. And there we go. The auto story system is done. All of these chests will collect stackable items and then non-stackable ones like weapons, totems, enchanted books and saddles will go into these chests. I'm just going to put a load of composters along the top of here as well, just to make sure nothing spawns on there. Now, if I flick this lever, flick this one on and off really fast, quickly get some sleep. And now I need to go and get the bad omen effect. And here is the pillager outpost I know about. Here we have a pillager captain. And I will link the tutorial I used to build this down below in the description. Also, you only have to get bad omen once. All the other times after that, you'll just keep getting it again and again from the farm because pillagers that spawn with a banner up here will give it to you again. So I've not used this before, but if I go and stand in here and then periodically the machine will drop me down here, this then pushes me right back up. Although what, what has happened to my villager? It's gone. That means I need some milk to get rid of this curse. Get another villager. Name him special one so he doesn't get too upset. This time I'm making him completely safe. He will never escape. Take out another pillager captain. And this time it does indeed work. A raid has started. I just have to wait for these guys to fall in here. And here they are. And I could just keep using my sweeping edge to easily take them out. And as you can see in the top right, I've got bad omen again, which means when I fall down, another raid will begin straight away. And here we go. Another one starts. This also makes the raids really, really fast. And already I am starting to get lots and lots of loot. Look at all the totems. I've got loads. So I'm going to AFK at this farm for a bit and see just how many totems and loot I can get. I have spent the last two hours AFKing at this farm, which is the equivalent of like eight or nine Minecraft days. And as you can see, I have got... <laughs> I have got so many totems. So these double chests up here are all just overflow ones that are full up. And then what I've had to do is manually empty these chests because you can't auto sort non-stackable items. And then I just chuck them out over the edge. And I just chuck my chest by I, I I need that. So yeah, it's a very OP system. I'll keep a full shulker box of these totems. I've also got lots of emeralds here. Yeah, not bad. I mean, lots of emeralds here. Right, let's make these into blocks. Just the sheer amount of loot here is crazy. In fact, we're gonna have to make two trips to transport all this loot. 
plastics can go in here. And all these items are going to be great for my brewing. Even though this is giving me a load of extra gunpowder, at some point I do still want to build a gunpowder farm. Because if I do ever want to stand a chance of getting a full netherite beacon, I'm going to need lots and lots of TNT. I've come up with a plan which means grabbing this beacon and then making a trip to the end. Next I'm going to build a giant beacon. There we go. Beacon on top. Give myself haste two. And now I can mine obsidian extremely, extremely fast. And that is two stacks of obsidian. That should be more than enough for now. My next plan is to build a portal in the nether that links up with this portal. This right here is the spot to build the portal. I was hoping it wouldn't be over a pit of lava. Let's light it up and see if it worked. <laughs> And it's taking me to a completely random place. Turns out I got the coordinates wrong. Take two. This time I'm certain that it's right. <laughs> Once again, it didn't work. This time I'm a million percent sure that it's right. Finally, <laughs> we made a successful portal thing. That was more trouble than it was worth. And I just want to use the rest of this obsidian to make loads and loads of ender chests. And I think the next thing I should do is build a portal room. That nether portal has been in the middle of nowhere for way too long. I'm making a few adjustments to this area, which involves putting lots of emerald blocks down here. Now I can have a fully powered beacon in my house, and I can give myself haste too. Add some red stained glass here. Yeah, I think the red beam looks pretty cool. And now I can mine stone extremely fast. This is so much better. Just to get all my gear back up to full durability, I'm going to the XP farm. I now have lots of gold and lots of levels. Oh no, I've, I've fallen off the ladder and I'm falling to my death. Oh, and I used a Tome of Undying. What am I doing? Ah, well, no need to worry. I've, I've got a few spares. Well, would you look at that? It's day 271 and I also have 271 levels. So this so far is the first prototype. I kind of broke my nether wart farm. But the next plan is to make it look way, way better. My plan for lighting is to use lava in the floor with glass over the top. Finally, the new portal is in. I can finish placing the floor. Let's give that a light. After all this time, destroy this portal. Fair well, old friend. And this is the finished product. So this is my portal. Yeah, I don't know if I'll keep the gold and emerald design. I mean, yeah, it might need tweaking. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you've got any ideas to improve it, let me know. And the real question is, will it link to the portal in the nether? Going through this way, it works fine. And going back through, it works fine. Awesome. And my next mission actually involves something in the nether. A warped forest is where I want to go. Let's grab a couple of these. And now I want to fish one of these fellas up here. Put a saddle on him. Jump on. And away we go. I also didn't know if you could attach leads to these guys, but <laughs> indeed you can. I wish I brought more leads. I could have had an entire army. Oh my goodness, what did I just do? Quick SP. Drink this. Okay. Yeah, you've got to be careful with Striders. I know Striders don't really smile, but I'm going to call this guy Smiler. He was my first ever pet Strider. You can also have a saddle on you. These are my Striders, but it's time to step things up a level. Now this is an army of Striders. Striders are hard work to move. This is more than enough for me. <laughs> and now I have 300 levels. I'm pretty happy with that. I also remembered that you can breed Striders with warped fungus. So now we've got lots of baby Striders. I think it's now time I began my next project, which involves getting some pet cats. There we go. I don't know what I'm going to call you. What on earth happened here? <laughs> There's been an explosion. Everybody's escaped. In this village, they all seem to have got stuck in this place. I have another pet cat. Let me open the gate, guys. Here you go. You can all get out now. Whilst my raid farm is very good for getting gunpowder, it's not enough. I want way, way more gunpowder. Look at that. We got a little baby cat. Which is why I'm going to make a full-on creeper farm. So to do that, I'm going to need quite a lot of resources. Which means it's time to get to work. I've just seen out of my window that those poor villagers are under attack. I feel like it's a bit pointless me doing raids now that I have so many tomes of undying. But I still want to protect these poor villagers. It turns out they're just all taking each other out. Let's get rid of you, and let's get rid of you. And I can drink my milk, and there's no problem. I believe I now have all the resources that I need. So let's get on with building this thing. I'm going to use a lead on these guys because they're being very annoying. <laughs> and just like with the raid farm, the best place to build this is over the ocean. I built a platform here which will take out the creepers, and then a hopper minecart will be running around here to pick up the gunpowder into this chest. And this platform up here is one of the platforms where the creepers will spawn. Another day is coming to an end and all these trap doors are now down. Now all we'll need for this layer is the cat. And you, my dear, shall be the first one. I don't think cats like swimming ordinarily, but this one's got no choice. Now I just stick you in a minecart, break all these rails, put another trap door down and this is your life now. Now I just have some glass walls to add in and now I can start on the second layer. And now it's cat number two's turn. It makes 10 times more sense to just bring them both at the same time. In order to really expand my gunpowder farm, I've been traveling and got four more cats. I needed more blocks for my creeper farm, so I thought, why not kill two birds with one stone? I'm doing this below my house so I have haste two, but I'm also doing it at level 12 so I have a chance to find some diamonds. Okay, and fall in lava if I'm not careful. And I...
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness this armor is so OP. I honestly thought that was it. I had a fire resistance potion there. Why didn't I use it? Why didn't I see it? If that was how I died, that would have been the worst thing ever. Well, I've mined out this entire chunk at diamond level and well, <laughs> there wasn't a single diamond. But I do have lots and lots of stone now at the very least. I was only gonna do three layers for this farm, but now that I've started, I feel like I might as well go for it. So I'm wanting to make it super, super efficient. So I'm going to do at least 10 layers. And right now I'm building layer number five. I'm glad to say that I am now on the final layer. I had a spare cat, so I've actually done 11 layers, not 10. Come on, final cat. Your days of sitting down here are over. I was very thankful that if I flew up here, the cats do teleport after you. Otherwise, getting them up here would have been an absolute nightmare. There we go. You get in there. Let's box you in. Place a few torches just so we don't have creepers spawning too early. And then I just need to add trap doors to these edges on this final one. And very conveniently, I have just enough. Next on the agenda, I need to build a slab roof. Just to let you know where I am, I am building a giant roof over this, which will then allow pack spawning and increase the spawn rate a lot more. I decide I'm going to have to work through the night to get this farm finished since we're getting so close to day 300 and i've still got a few things to do just for reference there's over 1100 slabs up here now i can finish the area which will take out the creepers and now this area down here is finished and now i have just one job left to do and that is to place trap doors on the roof of every level this really is going to take me forever i haven't quite finished with the trap doors yet but creepers are starting to spawn so i'm thinking i should set the minecart hopper off and you can see already i've, I've got a little bit of gunpowder the sun is rising as day 300 is about to begin and thank goodness i am now on the final layer and now this top layer is also finished and creepers have been spawning already got 37 gunpowder now i just need to build an afk platform this is the little afk spot that i'll stand at and if i fly on down we should be seeing creepers in the farm yeah look at this so there's a load at the bottom here they're all dying this is kind of the best angle that i can get on it there you can see them all being taken out there is a there is gunpowder all over the place. I guess some of them must be dying from fall damage as well. But already in that short amount of time, I have got over five stacks of gunpowder. That is crazy. So yeah, I'm super pleased with this farm. It's way more OP than I was intending it to be. But I always prefer for things to be on the more OP side. There is still about five minutes left of day 300. So I'm going to go and AFK and see just how much we get before the day ends. The sun is starting to rise. So let's see how much we've got. <laughs> in that short amount of time... We've got over 11 stacks. I'm heading to a monument. And here's one up ahead. I really hope this is one where I already defeated the guardians. Well, these doors are around, so I'm guessing it is. And I have tracked down the sponge. I'm pretty sure a hoe can mine sponge really far. Oh, look at this. It's brilliant. And there's even more sponge up here. And now I can head home, dry out my sponge, and begin my next mission, which involves collecting seagrass. And now I've got 22 of them. I'm on the hunt for some turtles. Turns out there's a desert over here that I never knew about. Never mind. <laughs> I've been to this temple before. Another pillager outpost. But the more important thing I'm looking for these two turtles. It has now laid me some eggs. As it happens, turtle eggs are very, very OP, so I'm taking them with me. I right, don't look too upset. I'm going to fly along this shore, see if I can see more turtles on the way back. I found no turtles, but I'm going to grab a load of ice because it could be useful. I feel like at some point I'm going to need a dedicated ice chest. It is now time for me to start gathering resources for my next build. So I'm starting by collecting a load of wood. I need hoppers, so I've got to go searching for iron. I really don't know why I don't just build an iron golem farm. I promise at some point in this video, I'm going to build one. Because let's be honest, mining for iron in Minecraft is, is just a peasant's job. That is not how I want to spend my time, especially when we could just get it for free. Good news is that my sponge is all dried out. Turns out I had loads of spare iron already in some of these furnaces. This build also uses note blocks, which is pretty cool. Got to say my iron has finished smelting, meaning I can make the rest of the hoppers. Two things I need now are sticks and string. Thankfully, I've got a lot of sticks here. That should be enough ladders. And now I can go and kill a load of striders for string. I'm just kidding. I would never do that. Instead, I'm going to trade a load of gold with these guys. Might as well do some blackstone mining while I wait. Got quite a lot of good stuff from that. Let's gather this up. Now I need to sort all of this into different chests. If you haven't worked it out, I am going to be making a drowned farm. And that way I can get loads and loads of tridents without having to painfully take out loads and loads of drowns. But before I can build that, I need a fourth turtle egg. And these guys are really getting in my way. Will you just hurry up and dig out? Thank goodness for that. You took forever. Yeah, I'm very sorry, but I'm now going to steal all your eggs. Seven will be more than enough. I only needed four. I do find a cow to get rid of this bad omen effect as well. And you will do just nice. Okay, you're, you're drifted off. I'm sorry. This was an accident. I've got to drink this. <laughs> I'm very sorry, poor cow. Oh, well, I've got bigger and more important things to worry about. Look at this. I found a blacksmith on my way over. Complete with some free iron and free apples. I'm going to take those. And this is where I'm going to build it. I didn't actually realize this, but you can sleep underwater. I'm going to begin with a 5x5 five five area here. I seem to have drowned spawning already. At least my pickaxe is really close to being broken. And I will need to do 
quite a bit of mining later on for the build. I'm thinking it'd be a good idea to repair it at the XP farm. All my tools have healed and I got loads more gold from that. And so now it's back to building. So far the building's going well. I'm going to dry this middle area out with sponge. And then I can put my four turtle eggs in here. And this contraption here is where the note blocks come in. There's also going to be pistons facing into these portals. Next I can add string in front of the observers. And now if anything swims up here, it gets pushed into the portal. And when I now add soul sand at the bottom, and then it creates bubble columns that push the drowns up. And now I can light the portals. And this platform up here is where I will AFK the farm from. Basically the drowns will spawn, see the turtle eggs and try and get to them. But when they swim into the soul sand, it'll push them up there and the pistons will push them into the portal. And right here is the portal where the drowns will come through. This is where I can add some chests and have hoppers going into them. This is the room where I'll take out the drowns. I need to add some trap doors here so the baby ones can't get through. The AFK room is now finished. I can now head out of here. And all that's left for me to do now is to clear out this area around the farm. Only an idiot like me would build this farm right above a ravine. <laughs> that's going to affect my rates. Looks like I'm about to get my first Nautilus shell. That's another thing that this farm's going to give me a lot. Of. It's already starting to work. I'm going to get another Nautilus shell here. It's kind of hard to see, but we can now see the farm in action as the drowned goes after those eggs. I don't even know why I really start massive projects like this. But at long last, my drowned farm is now complete. So I'm going to swim up to the top and then AFK up here and see just how many drowns we can get. It's been a couple of days. I'm going to head to the nether and see how the farm's doing. Here is all the drowned. On average, you need to kill 150 drowned to get a trident. So I'm not too confident we'll get one here. So far, just rotten flesh. I'll probably have to AFK a bit longer to get a trident. And I'm not doing that right now. I've got more important things to do. Because you may remember in the last video, I said I would eventually get a full netherite beacon. And you probably all thought that it would be impossible for me to do that. Although it would take me a long, long time. And you'd be right. It's going to take me a long, long time. However, by using all this gunpowder, I can craft a lot of TNT. From that, I've got three and a half stacks. And we're going to use this to get a load of ancient debris. Keep in mind, for the full netherite beacon, I'll need 40 double chests of TNT. So when I do this, don't expect me to get too crazy of an amount. So step one is to dig a big long tunnel like this and step two is to just fill it with TNT. I was actually supposed to bring a speed two potion but I forgot. Oh my god. Wait, I just, I just found ancient debris. <laughs> uh, you see guys already we found three pieces. It's working amazing. All I was doing was extending the tunnel so I could place more of this TNT. You'll notice I put a lot of the TNT quite close together. That's just to make sure that the chain doesn't break. Now we light it and watch the magic happen. And as you can see already I found a piece of ancient debris. We just follow us along as you can see there's another piece up there. Another one over here. In fact there's loads. There's one there, one there. There's a few over there. Look at that. I missed a piece over there. I'm, I'm getting so much. I'm already up to 10. There's two up here as well. No, that's three. Once I mine these two, I'll have 20 pieces. Isn't that crazy? In that short amount of time, like that was like not even 10 minutes, I got 20 pieces of ancient debris. So when I say I'm going to get a full netherite beacon, <laughs> I wasn't joking around. Oh my God, I found some more. I'm trying to just get out of here and I found more. Two more. I can't seem to find a way past this lava roof. I'm going to do something that you'd only do if you were crazy and had way too many totems. And I should just swim to the surface and just tank the hits and, and let my totems do the work. There goes one totem. There goes another totem. I'm just tanking it. I should actually try and make an effort to get out, shouldn't I? I'm just, I'm just enjoying being unkillable. Probably have a bite to eat, but yeah. Who needs fire resistance when you've got 50 billion totems? And already, I'm up to full health. This is the dream right here. And I think I'm going to replace these emerald blocks to be ancient debris instead. Since I'm not sure the emerald blocks work, but I think the ancient debris looks pretty cool. And very conveniently, I found the perfect amount. So this is what the room looks like now. Still not amazing, but it's better than how it was. I'm tired of running out of fire resistance, so I'm making a load more. This could be the fire resistance shulker box. I've got eight brewing stands on the go right now, and this is how brewing is done. And the shulker box is starting to look a lot better. What on earth have we got going on here? You guys again. Looks like I'm going to have to lure these guys away. And I can take you out. In fact, I'll get rid of you all. Drink this milk. And everything's fine. And I think I'd like to spend a bit of time boosting the economy. Which means giving you guys loads of sticks. I want more golden carrots from this guy. I didn't think it'd take me this long to actually fill a shulker box of golden carrots. But I'm going to use these emeralds to buy loads of apples. Because I feel like I should start living on a purely golden apple diet. That is the only way to truly show my riches. Speaking of a golden apple only diet, you two need your prices bringing down. For my next project, I'm heading to the nether. Then making the short flight along here to go to this portal. Then I can head to the end where I can collect obsidian. Because I'm now going to need to mine a lot of this stuff. And I feel like because I don't have many piglins, this is going to be a lot faster than bartering. I now have six and a half stacks. I feel like that should be enough. And this tower now has a massive chunk missing out of it. And my next mission will be to make the gunpowder farm more efficient using nether portals just to make it, yeah, much faster. Because if I want to get a netherite beacon, I'm going to need way more gunpowder than what I'm getting at the moment. But before I do any of that, I want a trident. So I'm going to AFK until I get one. I spent five days AFK in here. I'm going to go and see what we've got. Let's head through this portal. Fly on over this way. And already I can hear a lot of drowns. We've got 
got just a few. Now I have to hope that one of them drops a trident. You guys have taken some serious taking out, but that's all of them. Perfect. We managed to get two tridents and a Nautilus shell and a bit of gold. I'm going to leave the rest of the stuff there, I think. I could put these tridents together to repair them, but I think having two tridents is better and I use mending to fix them. But that means we're going to the trading hall. This next bit is going to be very expensive. Let's buy two mending books. I've also got them breaking three in here, so I might as well grab us some of them. Before I anvil them, though, let's see what enchantment we get. So loyalty, that's a good one, but I don't think it's what I'm looking for. Okay, channeling. That's definitely one I want. Wow, that's a really good enchantment. All I need down here is an anvil. I feel like I might have the iron to make one. I do. Let's craft that. Place that there. And we can add mending. Perfect. That's already maxed out. I don't know if I could technically add impaling to it, but I'm not that bothered about it. And finally, I've got Riptide. Riptide 3 and Breaking 3. Perfect. Complete with mending. I don't need anything else on there. Next on the agenda is a trip to the XP farm. Now I can use this trident to make them angry. There we go. It's going to come back to me and I can repair them. Just look at mending work and it's magic. Already, <laughs> it's fully repaired. There we go. That's how you repair a trident, guys. Very quickly and easily. There's no point hanging around here for too long. 302 levels. I don't really need many more. Got another Nautilus still into there. Now I've got three. I can now start gathering the resources for my next project. And to do that, I'm once again going mining for iron. Still don't know why I don't just make an iron farm, but I promise you that is going to be done this video at some point. I've just realized I'm going to need about 200 iron. This is going to take quite some doing. But hey, iron isn't that hard to find. Look at that. I've already got 30... I did not expect that to happen. I'll probably put my chest plate on. As I was saying, I've already got 13 pieces and that's going well above that now. Found a cave and I've found iron. One stack down, two to go. This might be one of the most perfect caves I've ever seen. There is literally iron everywhere. I'm almost up to two stacks already. I've got three stacks of iron. I'm getting out of here. I'm even finding more on the way up. Let's get these blast furnaces working. Since I'm going to be making over 40 hoppers, <laughs> I'm going to need a lot of wood to go with all that iron. Thankfully, mining trees has never been easier. Actually, that's just given me an ingenious idea. If I head through this portal and then through this portal and then through this portal and then then grab my beacon. Go back through this portal. I'm gonna grab all these spare blocks. I'll start building right about here. And I place the beacon on top. Give it an ingot so that it gives me the haste. Quickly get some sleep. And now I can mine wood slightly faster. I was hoping it would instant break, but I guess it doesn't. This is a bit of a letdown. Oh well, it should still speed up the process a little bit. That should be more than enough wood. And now the iron has all finished smelting. Wish I could say the same about this glass. Now to start crafting these hoppers. All right, I've got more iron in this chest. Don't worry, I've not run out. I feel like four and a half stacks of glass should be enough as well. Could be cool to use some crying obsidian as well, since I have no use for it. That was so close. A creeper just walked up behind me. I'm going to get me bow for this one. I don't know what he thinks he's doing in my house, but he needs to get out of here. Now I can peacefully go to sleep. And I have all the materials I need to start building. And I'm basically planning on improving the efficiency of this farm. Right now it's pretty good, but I want to double its efficiency. I need to make it so that no creepers can get down here. Now that that's done, let's get rid of all this water and place blocks over this magma. And I want to change all this glass to instead be obsidian. I've been building the portal. <laughs> I realise I've made him a block too small. Can't wait to have to mine all this obsidian up. There we go. This time it's much better. Now something I forgot to bring is some carpets. I will need those. Now you can see why I wanted to put carpets on this. There's mobs everywhere on here. Let's start placing these down so that doesn't happen again. There we go. I also want to add some more trapdoors along here. And the reason for that is some of the creepers that are coming from high up are landing on the trapdoor and getting hurt. But this stops that from being possible. I need to do the same on this level as well. Being the idiot that I am, I accidentally made spruce pressure plates here and not trapdoors. Let's try that again. We only need eight. Even though these trapdoors in the way, the creepers will still try and run off here and get there, but they won't be able to. Now it's time to get rid of the dirt, open all these trap doors, get rid of these unwelcome guests. And that means I can safely light a portal and begin the next step. Right now, the portals link me to this little drowned area, but this isn't where I want the creepers to turn up. Instead, the coordinates it corresponds to are right along here. In fact, this very spot. And I'm now going to build quite a way up, make another portal up here. This is where the creepers are going to spawn and then fall down there. And this right here is where the hoppers are going to come into play. And I'm going to create a quite a big area where the creepers can land. The reason I'm making this area so big is just because of entity cramming. And now I can do the same on this side. There we go. That's the chest system sorted. Now I just need to box them in so they can't escape. Really is starting to come together now. Finally, I've got to build these tubes all the way up. There we go. That is now finished. Better also light this portal. Are you kidding me? A ghast is shooting at me. And for that, you must perish. Yeah, maybe building a glass structure in the nether was a bad idea. All that's left to do now is add these trap doors for extra safety. Everything should be working. The beauty of this as well is I get to use my looting effect on the creepers, which is great for getting even more gunpowder. It's actually snowing. I'm hoping eventually for a thunderstorm. Oh my goodness, there's creepers everywhere. Okay, I just need to be careful. Eh? A good idea to light these portals. There we go. <laughs> yeah, light them as soon as possible. I'm gonna run around, lighting as many as I can. The creepers will just go through before they can blow up. There we go. I've done them all. That creeper didn't blow. Now let's start adding some water. And as you can see, this water will then push them into the portals, meaning they won't have to die in the overworld and new creepers can spawn faster. With all that complete, I'm going to spend a bit of time AFK and hope 
that it works. I've left it about six or seven minutes. I'm now going to head to the nether and see what I'm dealing with. If I'm not mistaken, in that amount of time, I should have about 15 stacks. Look at all these creepers waiting for me. Some of them are dying, as you can see, from entity cramming, but oh my god. Whoa, don't blow up. We're all right. In just six minutes of AFKing, it completely broke my PC. I should put trap doors on top of this so that the XP flows to me. But as you can see, I've... <laughs> I've got quite a lot. And how much gunpowder? That's the real question. Well, it's still flowing in. On this side, nearly 10 stacks. On this side, over 10 stacks. That's 20 stacks of gunpowder in about six minutes. And that's all the trap doors. So next time I'll be able to get the XP. That puts me another step closer to the netherite beacon. I spent another 20 minutes AFKing here. Let's see how much gunpowder we get. That's a lot of creepers. Let's start taking them out. That's impressive. Almost another 40 stacks of gunpowder. That is a lot. And I think for my next project, I can put this off no longer. I need to build an iron farm. I'm going to head through the end portal so I can find the world spot. That didn't work. Take two. And this time, we're at the world spawn. This tower will be a good indication of that. I decided based on the terrible terrain that getting villages over there would take way, way too much effort. So instead, I will build this underground over here. So this right here is where the villager beds are going to go. And I need this room to be six blocks high. It's now time I stole some villagers. Sorry, mate. You're coming to a great new job. I don't know how annoying this next bit's going to be, but you, sir, I've got to go down that hole. Yep. Don't try and resist. Like, I've got to break every ladder to get you down here. I've got to get them all in whilst it's dark. So I'm back to my usual midnight kidnapping. Oh my goodness. Did you just shoot? my villager. Now you're shooting me with fire. If my villager dies, did he die? No, he's okay. Let's get out of here. I'm just gonna have to accept whatever destruction happens to my village. That's another villager that's found his new home. Things are getting a little bit overrun here. Why? What on earth? Who let a creeper blow? What a mess. All right, you just come with me and then I can go to sleep. This last guy's being awkward, but I'm telling you, you will get in there. Let's trap him in. Now I just need to lure you into this hole before that golem gets you. There we go. You're in. I've had enough. I'm going to sleep. I can now buy a name tag. Name this the evil guy. And these golems have got to go. They're messing up me spawning. They did a pretty useless job anyway. And now a golem has spawned, which means it's working perfectly. All these signs have been added. I can add some lava. Now when a golem spawns, he'll be taken out and his items will flow into this chest. There's a golem down here in this mine shaft. Oh, I've got to be careful here. Down here in this mine shaft underneath the villagers. I think I need to block all this up so they don't spawn another one down here. They are still spawning down here, so I need to add more blocks. Okay, mission accomplished. I think the golems are just spawning up here now. Or in here. <laughs> Let me get rid of this guy. Let's change this floor to be glass instead. And finally, this farm is working as intended. I know I've still got 60 days left, but I really hope I get a thunderstorm soon. I feel like I'm kind of low on beacons and I want to get the third one today. I'm going to grab some fire resistance and go hunting for wither skeletons. Wow, I've just flown past a bastion that I never knew existed. That's free gold. Even though I literally have infinite gold, I still can't resist grabbing some on the way. Here we are at the fortress. Let's start taking out wither skeletons. That's wither skull number one. That's another one. And that's the third one there. And a fourth one. And a fifth. I've gone from terrible drop rates to suddenly getting insane ones. I now have six wither skulls, but I still want more. That's another one, number seven. Oh, okay, that's number eight. And that gives me nine. I think I'm done. That's gonna let me summon in three withers. I can't ask for more than that. Nothing like home, sweet home. I also like that I got a lot of coal from that. I'm now going to head down to bedrock level. Nailed it. I forgot just how much I chiseled out down here. Then I'm gonna strip mine this way and summon in not one, not two, but three withers. I just realized I already summoned one in. Let's get them all summoned in. I've gotta try and get out of here ASAP. I will be living off golden apples for this fight. Let's get to work and take these guys out. I'm sure I'll be fine in all of this. I've got very powerful armor. Hold on, guys. Can I take a time out? I'm just gonna get my bow since it's very hard to hit them. Now this should make things much easier. If you're wondering the question of whether SB can fight three withers at once, I guess now you have your answer. Wither number one has been defeated. Whoa, the uh, the old totems had to come out there. I better gaffle up. Let's grab that. Let's just just back off a second. Not to worry, there's plenty where that came from. Now back to the action. With the number two defeated. And now it's just a simple 1v1. I feel like having 60 golden apples really doesn't make this fair, but you sir have also been defeated. And they've revealed some diamonds. Finally, my plan worked. Let's make sure to grab these. Let's grab some obsidian, pick up some glass, and create three beacons. This one can go on there. Another one on here. And the iron beacon isn't quite ready yet, but when it is... I'll sort it. I'm also going to add string around the beacon. That way it's not all covered in snow. Now I can finally fix this awful hole. Sorry, golems, you're going to be living down here permanently. Since a lot of my armor and tools are now quite broken, I'm going to spend some time at the creeper farm to get some XP. And this should give me more than enough XP to repair everything. And now thanks to mending, everything is repaired. And nearly two double chests worth are full. And the iron farm is doing nicely, slow and steady. Before the end of the video, I will definitely have this beacon finished. To fully get rid of all that snow, I think I'm going to need a lot more string. And the best way for me to do that is to get a load more gold, which I can get from the pigman farm, and then barter it with piglins. Found another bastion, it has some netherite scrap in it. I rounded up so many piglins into this hole, 
I'm gonna get the battering done way, way faster. Thanks to that, we got loads of great items. The shulker box is full as well. Now let's start adding the string. All my string is gone, but I have to say that looks so, so much better. My next mission is to get all the Nautilus shells that I need. Since a conduit would be a cool thing, and it's one of the few things I've yet to get. I'm guessing AFK at this farm is gonna be the quickest way for me to get some. Spent quite a while AFK. Let's see if we get anything. No shell, so it's time for plan B. The old Depth Strider Dolphin. The fastest speed you've ever seen. Oh, I've lost the dolphin. I was about to say the fastest speed you'll ever see, but it's just easier to fly. Considering how useless of an item it is, the conduit is quite a difficult item to get your hands on. Basically, see this as a free way to get turtle eggs. Anytime you see turtles, I just feed them, and the eggs have been laid. I'm now going to steal them. So, Nautilus shells collected, zero. Turtle eggs collected, three. More free eggs, there's about five turtles here. I can't believe you only laid me one egg. That's useless. At least you laid two. That's slightly better. There are a lot of drowns at this ruin. Okay, I didn't drop a trident. He was holding one. Finally, somebody with a shell. I've been waiting for that, and we got it. Perfect. Guys, there's, there's somebody in here. I'm going in. I missed. Didn't miss this time, and he's just got a fishing rod. Is that all you've got? Now that we've got a fourth one, I feel like the project hasn't been a complete waste of time. Finally, I'm in a thunderstorm. Okay, now... I might just put this other project on hold because this is a prime opportunity for my Riptide Trident. It's going to let me get charged. Oh, I didn't. Okay, that's the wrong trident. I mean, my channeling trident, which is going to let me get charged creepers, which will then let me get mob heads. Although I, I failed that. I've got all these in a hole. I'm going to punch this creeper in there. There we go. He's in. Now, if I ignite this creeper, if I, it's going to blow up, I should have some mob heads. Yes, I have. I've got a skeleton head right there. Not sure why I didn't get a zombie head, but we'll keep going. I like using flint is a safer way to do it. There we go. There's the zombie head. Thankfully, I charged this creeper. The rain has stopped. I still want to get a creeper head. I only get one chance at this. The creeper is over here. The charged one is here. This better work. All right. I need to somehow light you. Blow it up. And we got it. Perfect. And there we have my three mob heads. Those are very, very rare. It would have been cool to get a skeleton horse in the night as well, but those are also <laughs> very, very rare. I've discovered 38 out of 42 biomes. I don't think I've ever been to a nice spikes biome. That might put the number up. Never mind. It, it, it didn't. I've probably already been here. But without a doubt, they are one of the coolest biomes ever. Need to find a good place for these heads, and I think my bedroom could be a good one. Get rid of this wither skull. Replace it with a skeleton. Oh, look at that. Pretty cool. I can also load this up with more turtle eggs and the nautilus shells. Might as well harvest this sugar cane since it only takes a second. Oh my goodness, what's been going on down here? Why is there 60 million golems underwater? Well, they must wander down here, be unable to get back up, and then they just all congregate under here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to fix this. But first, I can load up this chest. And I'm going to get some sleep. I'm sure those guys can wait. Thankfully, I've got some ice so I can properly rescue these guys. And by rescue, I mean make sure it never happens to anyone else. This is basically free iron. I've decided I'm going to leave you guys down here because I kind of like having random golems underneath the river. And we just safely put ice along the top. It's moments like these that make me wonder if I'm a psychopath or not. Oh, well. Might as well freeze the whole place now. I'm pleased to say the village is fully fixed. I thought a gate here would be a good idea. And I'm pleased with the steady rate that we're getting iron as well. 12 more blocks for the project. Sand levels are starting to look low. I think I need a top up. I was flying to search for a desert and this has never happened, but my elytra broke. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go and get them repaired. Thankfully, my pigment farm is perfect for fixing things like that. I'm also gonna grab a few stacks of gunpowder while I'm here too. Now I can make lots of firework rockets since I was running a bit low on them. I'm gonna run a quick test now. I'm going to remove all the iron from this chest and then with my render distance on the maximum amount, I'm going to see if the iron golem farm still works. I spent a few days chilling up here. Let's go and see if it worked. Here we are at the iron farm. Oh, we've got loads of extra iron. Perfect. So it does work whilst I may have killed over there. Might as well turn these into blocks and then add them to the beacon. And since I will have been getting gunpowder at the same time, we might as well check it out. Yep, there's a lot of creepers here. Now I could go traveling, search the seven seas for drowns carrying nautilus shells. Or I could just do something that takes no effort and, <laughs> and sit here and wait. I spent quite a few hours AFK at this farm. Let's go and see what we've got. Looks like I've got my first phantoms. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna leave those. I don't need those. It's very noisy down here. <laughs> There's a lot of drowns. Will we get some shells? That's the real question. Oh, I see I at least got one. I got two. The time I spent AFK in there was definitely worth it. Another trident. We'll leave that there. And look at this. Three more Nautilus shells. So from all that time, five in total. And if I add my other Nautilus shells to that, grab a heart of the sea from this chest, which we got right in the first episode, I can craft the conduit. I'm gonna put it in this chest for now. I'm gonna need more prismarine for it to be real use. And before I go, I wanna see just how much iron I've got because that's been working in the back. Background. Look at this. I might be able to finish the beacon and get lots. Yeah, I've got lots. I've got over a stack of blocks. Not quite there yet, but it is really starting to come together. Now it is time to find them. In fact, there's one there. I think I've already taken out the Elder Guardians here as well, which is good. So quite a bit of mining. I think I've got plenty of Prismarine variant. Time to head back home. I think I'm going to build the conduit in this village. That could be a cool thing. So unfortunately, this house has got to go. And this to me looks like the perfect spot. I have to say, this is really coming together. I don't know what the village is going to think of it, but it is now finished. Now to make this work, I'm going to need quite a lot of source blocks. That's it for 
fully filled with water. It is going to ice over, so I'm just going to put some temporary blocks up here to stop that. And if I get rid of these blocks, oh, it, it makes a bit, oh, dearie me. And here we have prototype version two. It's definitely an interesting looking device. I guess all that's left to do is grab a conduit. Let's break this top block, place the conduit on there, break the block. And when I put that on, ho, 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 it has been activated. Because it's a fully activated one, you can't really see inside too well, but it looks very eerie indeed. I love the way there's a heartbeat whenever you get near as well. A bit more iron to collect as well. Make more blocks and add them to the beacon. And now I can return to my earlier project of collecting lots and lots of sand. Took a while, but I've now got four full shulker boxes of sand. And now I'm going to jump down this hole. Whoa. Okay, I was about to say head to the nether, but a creeper blew me up just as I was about to do that. Now I can head to the nether, and now I can start creating TNT. After a lot of crafting, this is how much TNT all my gunpowder has given me. I still have quite a bit of spare sand. Never mind, I, I realize I've missed a gunpowder chest. Now I've definitely used up everything. I've actually run out of sand, this spare gunpowder here, and we've got well over a shulker box of TNT. So I'm going to quickly head home, brew some extra potions, because as well as fire resistance, I'm also going to find speed 2 very useful. And now I can spend some serious time mining for netherite. And now I can fill this all up with TNT. I've now placed down about 2,000 TNT. This is going to be crazy. And I just found some more ancient debris. As you can see, already it's looking crazy and already ancient debris there, ancient debris there, ancient... You know what? We're going to get a lot from all of this. I've still got a long way to go, but already I now have a stack of ancient debris. And these tunnels just keep going on and on forever. And as I mine this piece, I now have a grand total of 100 ancient debris. I've reached the end of the tunnel and I've been heading back, but already I've found at least five pieces of ancient debris that I've missed. And now I'm going to mine up this piece as well. And now that I've finished, i got a grand total of 112 ancient debris. Now I need to spend some time at the XP farm because my pickaxe and my shovel are pretty broken. I love how crazily fast it fixes my pickaxe. Look, it's already half fixed. After one one minute, my pickaxe is fully fixed. Now that I have 320 levels and everything repaired, I'm going to head back home. I can set all this ancient debris off smelting. Another three blocks can go on the beacon. I'd also like to grab a bit of lapis, turn it into blue dye, and then make this a blue shulker box. And that's got all sorts of fire resistance potions and speed potions. All the netherite scrap has now smelted, which means I can make a lot of netherite ingots. 21. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot. And for the first time in my entire life, I can make a block of netherite. I have never made one of these before. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? I need 164 of these in total, and I've got two. For my next project, it is going to require a lot of stone, and also a lot of glass. Some redstone. I'll need about 20 name tags. This guy's way more expensive than the other one, but thankfully, I have unlimited emeralds. Something else I don't want to forget, very important, a lever. Might as well make the redstone torch now as well. So if I name 20 name tags... Oh, it still only takes one level. That's so good. I wish you guys would stop terrorizing my village. Thankfully, I don't see a pillager captain, so I'm not going to get any bad omen effect. I will need quite a bit of iron because hoppers are going to be very important. That should be plenty. I can also make more blocks while I'm here, and edge even closer to the end of the beacon. We just need nine more. And now I can begin my project in the nether. I'm building this one above the nether as well and very close to my gold farm because at this spot right here, that nether waste becomes a crimson forest and I can get what I need from that biome. I'm now far away enough from the pigman farm. I'm going to make a platform. And this is a platform that I'm going to use to spawn piglin. And by placing glass along here, that makes sure no hoglins spawn. I need to place some blocks underneath. And since we're in the nether and placing water is an option, I'm <laughs> going to have to use lava and fire resistance. This is where the piglins are going to do their bartering. Also want a redstone torch there so I can control where the hopper works or not. And I place glass everywhere because mobs can't spawn on glass. All I have to do now is get some piglins in here. And the easiest way for me to do that is to just fly away and then come back towards it. That didn't work. So plan B is to build a big long bridge. I have got piglins spawning, but I need gold and I need golden armor. Thankfully, I've got lots of it here. Let's craft a helmet. All the glass is now in. That just avoids any mishaps from happening. So to get them in, I name tag them and then throw gold down here and they go straight in. If I don't name tag them, they'll just despawn and then it'll be a problem. Also, you guys need to get out of here. And there we have three now. And I basically just keep doing this over and over. Okay, that guy fell off. Build this plan platform hadn't yet put the glass on and already there are millions of these hoglins. Now this platform is very big and there are a lot of piglins up here and it's that easy. I just throw the gold in here and they all jump in. Although I forgot to name tag a lot of them. That was a bit stupid. It's crazy. I just get them angry. I stand here and they all just run in like idiots. There are well over 20 piglins in there. Let's block them up with the trapdoor. We can block off this area as well. I can open up the hopper so that items start filtering into this chest and then I just give them a load of gold and they trade it extremely, extremely fast. I mean, look at that. The hopper can't even keep up and they've already traded all that gold. Like what? was it? Four stacks? And now I just have to wait for all the stuff to filter into these chests. And whilst I wait for that, I can go and chill at my gold farm. It really is a great way to get so much good loot. And now I can take all of that gold and trade it straight back to the piglins. Now, if that's not stonks, I don't know what is. And at some point, <laughs> I definitely need to set up an auto storage system. I'm just too lazy to do it at the moment. I have to say, it's a pretty cool shape for a farm, isn't it? Either you get that joke or it completely flew over your head. And the main thing I want from that battering farm is all this string, which I can use to cover up this beacon. And now everything that needs to be is completely snowproof. 
don't know what else to do with this, so I'm just going to make a barrel completely dedicated to string. I'm not going to fly over to where this other beacon's at. Spend a bit of time getting more wood. Five stacks should be enough. Now I shall mine up this beacon, grab all the blocks, and that's all of them. Instead, I'd like to have a load of emerald blocks. All of these should be enough for now. I can also use this gold to craft more netherite ingots. Another block of netherite. And my netherite beacon really is starting to come together. Three down, 160 to go. What do you think of this enderman I've captured? Yeah, I've, I've chucked him in a boat and he lives here now. And I've just made him angry. I'm sorry, sir. He, you can't get me anyway. Whilst he calms down, I'm going to begin my next mission, which involves digging down about 20 blocks. Then I'm going to dig out this area. Now the beacon is built, I can give myself haste too. I'm going to dig this way a thousand blocks. I actually meant a hundred blocks, not a thousand, by the way. And when I'm done, somewhere around here is where the next beacon will go. And now I just dig straight down to level 14 and I begin strip mining. Look at that. The first diamonds have been found and it's a big cave. More diamonds. Look at that. <laughs> Again, in about five minutes of mining already, I have 20 diamond ore. More of them. <laughs> They're just coming through. I just can't stop getting them now. I know I've come up with many ways over the years to find diamonds, but this is without a doubt the best way. You'll notice as well that I'm just systematically doing this strip mining, going back and forth and then going across two blocks to bought until I get out of the beacon's range. Oh, okay. <laughs> just found some more diamonds whilst I was exploring this cave. There was four in total. Nice. I don't get haste over here, so I have reached the edge of this side. But on this side, there's still a long way to go. More diamonds here as well. At this point, I'm going to stop showing you every time I get diamonds. I think you get the picture. I have so almost died. I, I went to grab my totem. There is so many of these guys. Where are they all coming from? A lot of mobs spawn when you do this. <laughs> Duly noted. Since my pickaxe is nearly broken, I'm going to collect the XP from these diamonds to repair it. So far, I have 120 diamonds. That is crazy. I've now reached the area where the beacon doesn't work. Okay, if I step into this thing, I am going to lose the effect. After doing all that, I got 149 diamonds. Now I dig down three blocks and carry on the strip mine. Once again, I've reached the edge, so I'm going to dig down three blocks and get back to it. I've finished mining for now. It seems the lower I get, the less amount of diamonds I have. So so I'm going to move the beacon and another time I'll do more diamond mining. It has to be said that three and a half stacks isn't bad though after an hour's mining. I put that with those 47 diamonds and then craft them into blocks. That's 29 blocks. <laughs> That's pretty good if you ask me. I can already start putting these in here. Yes, I've still got another thousand diamonds to go, but it'll do for now. But in the meantime, I can grab a load of this iron, turn it into iron blocks and finish the iron beacon. I think this one can give me strength too. This enderman is now stopping me from getting a good night's sleep. So I'm moving him to this side of the house so I can go to bed. I need XP to repair my pickaxes instead of bit broken. So I'm spending time chilling at the creeper farm. Now there's lots of creepers. Let's get the XP. And lots more gunpowder has been added to the chests. For my next project, I'm going to need a cartographer. And you, sir, will be the perfect candidate. For this next upgrade, I'm going to need a load of compasses. Thankfully, I have a load of iron. Pretty sure 10 should be enough. Now we can grab a few ocean explorer maps. And now he's upgraded to give me a woodland explorer map. Really don't know what I'm going to do with all these maps. <laughs> but we can now head north to this mansion. Although I've got a sneaky suspicion I might have already been to this one. And it seems that this is one that I haven't yet been to. So let's start taking out these fellas. Might as well get another totem, even though I... <laughs> really don't need them. The main reason I've actually come here is to find music discs. It would be easy to get a skeleton to kill a creeper, but this is way more fun. It has to be said, there's a lot of these guys. I've got four totems from all of that, but this is the room where music discs can be found. Sadly, no music discs, but some golden apples, which is good. This is the fifth one of these guys. So the fifth totem. Found this little secret tunnel that I think leads... Oh my goodness, it leads to all you guys. Now that those have been got out of the way, let's see what's in this chest. <laughs> I came all this way for that. Hopefully this chest here is a bit better. A music disc. I think I've already got that music disc, but you know what? Progress is progress. I want to see something truly evil. Come on then, mate. You just go into there. Oh no, you're going to escape. <laughs> now you're trapped forever. Imagine if I had a name tag, then you really would be unable to escape. But there is an anvil here. And this chest has a name tag, which I accidentally blew up. Let's use it and call him prisoner. Wow, it broke as well. The other guy has gone, but this is still in here. So <laughs> you will now be trapped forever. And very conveniently, right by this mansion, there's a village. So I'm going to get another map. There's a blacksmith here. Let's see what we've got. Well, <laughs> it's a pretty good blacksmith chest, but to me... It's kind of useless. Hello, good sir. How would you like to become a cartographer? You will get lots of emeralds in return. Also realize it's going to be way cheaper just to use glass panes on this guy. And with that, we can buy the Woodland Explorer map again. And the good news is it's sending me northwest to a completely different one. Found a jungle with lots of bamboo, and I should probably start grabbing this. It makes a very satisfying sound to break bamboo, by the way. The main reason I'm grabbing bamboo is because it's useful for scaffolding. And when I build a big farm, scaffolding is very useful. I've got 13 stacks. I think that's going to be enough. Meanwhile, over there, the entire jungle is burning down. Could be a hero and put the fire out, but... <laughs> I'm just going to leave it. Could be wrong, but I think this is the first coral reef I've ever found. It might be a good idea to silk touch a load of it and bring it home. I've changed my mind. I've already got enough junk. Instead, I've just written down the coordinates, so if I ever need to find it, I know where to go. And here we have Woodland Mansion number two. Here's my first chest. Sadly, no music disc. 
Look at these guys. They don't know what's about to hit them. There we go. <laughs> they just did. Talk about getting destroyed. Speaking of getting destroyed, I'm pretty low. I'm not really bothered about taking out any mobs. I'm just going to scour the area and look for chests. When I said I was going to look for chests, I didn't mean this many. Just a shame that they're all empty. Now, this is crazy, but I haven't found a single evoker. Take that back. Here's one. But regardless of that, the amount of chests has been very disappointing. So I'm going home. Clearly, that wasn't the best way to find music discs. And I think going through the nether is going to be the quickest way for me to get back. I haven't done this in a while, building a portal with a lava bucket. And I always keep a flint and steel in my ender chest. So instead of having to fly 20,000 blocks. I only have to fly 2,000 blocks. There is loads of gold at this bastion. Do I do I grab some? I don't really, I can't be bothered. I already have unlimited gold. What's the point? And even better, I can use my lodestone compass to find my way. I've run out of firework rockets, but I always keep spares in me and the chest. And here we are. Home sweet home. Although I'm going to go and head up to the gold farm. And I guess while I wait, I can set these guys off bartering. There you go, good sirs. Enjoy. I think I'm just going to give him all the gold that I have. And while they do that, I can chill at the XP farm and repair my elytra. Spent quite a while there. Got 340 levels. And I might as well craft all this gold into ingots. And these guys have all finished trading and given me a lot of good loot. I think I'm just going to take some of the obsidian with me. I guess all this coral can go into the ocean chest. I have indeed already got the music disc 13, so <laughs> kind of a waste of time. What on earth is a creeper doing down it? I do not need this at the moment. This is going to be very stressful. I really hope it doesn't blow up. There we go. We got him. I'd like more emeralds, so I'm doing more trading because then I can get more golden carrots. For some reason, these guys have gone really, really expensive. I don't know what I did to deserve that. Let's chuck these spare carrots in there. And I have a lot of string and a lot of bamboo. So I reckon it's a good idea to make a lot of scaffolding. And I'm going to start a nice little area for growing bamboo. Interesting, bamboo is still the same colour no matter the biome. I reckon scaffolding deserves its very own shulker box as well. I'd like to make the box green, so I'm heading to a desert. Since apparently I don't own a single cactus. Let's grab that and head straight back home. Then I can quickly shove that in a furnace. Grab a piece of bone meal, turn it into white dye. Then I can craft lime dye, create the lime shulker box and fill it up with scaffold. In hindsight, I have no idea why I chose a lime one for scaffolding, but I'm happy with it. First, I need to take out a ghast. I got a ghast here so we can get four end crystals. Now let's head to the end. Let's rebirth the ender dragon. I don't want to mine up these emerald blocks so the dragon doesn't destroy them. And this is what I came for. Dragon's breath. I have the achievement now. You need a mint. Now I can shoot the towers as I fly around. So the tower's gone. I'll keep collecting my dragon's breath. I didn't realize this is definitely the easiest way to get loads of dragon's breath. I now have an entire stack. You know what that means. Time to defeat the dragon. And there we go. I'd say that was a pretty successful mission. These will allow me to make tip tarot. Don't currently have a use for them. But if I ever need them, they'll be very good to have. This shulker box can now be for all my treasure. I feel like naming them would make life easier. Now I'm on the hunt for some squid. Since I've apparently never got an ink sack before. Now I can craft some black dye and make a black shulker box which will be perfect for holding all my spare tools. I feel like I should make some overpowered flint and steel and overpowered shears for absolutely no reason other than the fact that I can afford it so I might as well. I have to say the organization is looking beautiful. Now I'm going to do something that I've never done before in Minecraft and that is to find a hoglin, lure them through a nether portal. Wait apparently they're scared of portals. In that case I'm going to have to trick them into it. This ought to do it if I now like the portal. They've gone through. Let's see what we got on the other end. Yeah <laughs> these guys in the overworld they don't look so good. And this is a zombified hoglin. I have never seen one of these before. In fact, one went back to the nether. It is part of my achievements to take these guys out. So I'm going to see what happens. There we go. We got rotten flesh. Well, that's rubbish. But I now have only three monsters left that I haven't taken out. By the way, guys, we are so close to 1.5 million subscribers. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. We might be able to hit it today. You're probably thinking I'm spending a lot of time in other dimensions, but I'm looking for something very specific. Well, this is the place that I was looking for. Found some iron and a lodestone. Not quite what I was after, but useful nonetheless. Does this chest have what I want? It has pick step. That's pretty cool. What about this chest? Oh, whoa. <laughs> Ancient debris. I did not expect that. Lots of cool things, but not what I'm looking for. Let's see if this bastion is any better. Yes, this one has what I was looking for. A crossbow. I was literally so lazy that I couldn't be bothered to craft it. And instead, I was willing to search for a bastion and find one there. Found another one here as well. Might as well grab a gas tier when I see them. Welcome to the team, Pig Step 2. Hang on a minute, I better not play that. According to the comments, I'm going to end up getting copyrighted. I have no idea if that's actually true or not. I just remembered I have infinite amount of crossbows from my raid <laughs> Forgot about that. Let's get to work on the anvil. Buy more mending books and grab some more unbreaking. Might as well make a new anvil as well. I can now go right here. Let's add mending and unbreaking. I can actually load this up with firework rockets now and it's completely done. Now I just need to get piercing four. Welcome to the pit of doom, good sir. These golems are never getting out of here. And unless you give me piercing four, you won't be either. I realize it would be 10 times quicker just to enchant it with an enchanting table. Let's put unbreaking and mending on that. And now for my next crazy plan. Firstly to shoot a pillager and get that achievement. And what I'm about to do next is a little bit evil. You jump into this boat as well. I just want to reiterate that these are all willing volunteers. I mean, look at them follow me. So when I shoot this arrow, I should get an achievement if it takes them all out. You survived. How did you survive? It's just too small, you stupid chicken. Take two. This time the chicken's getting it first. Oh, and this time the cat. 
What have I got to do? Guys, if you like horses, don't watch this next bit, but I needed something a bit bigger. Let's see if this works. Here we go. We got them all. I've just realized I have to kill five, not four. <laughs> this is really annoying. I've got five mobs. It's got to work this time. Come on. I got them all. Yes, we got our ballistic. RIP to these mobs. You guys will not be forgotten. I don't think I've ever got that achievement before. In my quest to kill all the monsters, I also need to take out an endermite. The only way to spawn one is just to keep throwing enderpearls. Here we have him over here. Look at that, he's a resilient little fella, but that's another one checked off the list. Let's also craft a respawn anchor. Definitely do not use that in the overworld. I think that'll go nicely there, and let's charge it up. And when I charge it up to full, we get another achievement. I will never use that because I'm never gonna die. At least I hope not, anyway. And for my next project, I'm gonna need lots and lots of buttons. Because I'm going to build a wither skeleton farm. Which is why I need buttons to spawn-proof this entire area. This is gonna take a long time, but it will be without a doubt worth it. Oh, I just got a wither skull. <laughs> this is a bit too early for that, guys. And wither skeleton number two has been obtained. Oh, look at that. I got another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> I cannot stop getting wither skulls. This is insane look. I am well and truly sick of placing buttons, which is just as well since I've run out. So instead, we're moving on to gold pressure plates. I've used up all my wood, all my gold, and all my iron, and I'm still not finished with this thing. Looks like it's time to get tree chopping. I have just spent an entire day <laughs> mining trees. I'm sure that all this wood should now be enough. I have to say, it's looking pretty cool, isn't it? I've done so much of this. I think I've pretty much done all the outside areas. Just all these inside bits that I need to do but i'm gonna take a break my levels are all the way back down to 277 so i'm gonna get back up to 300 and i have now reached 300 levels i might as well grab a load of gold and convert it all to ingots and i now have lots more golden blocks time to get back to spawn proofing this is how rich people spawn proof your place down with the skulls i decide for this last batch i'm gonna instead use slabs they're a bit more annoying to place quickly but it makes your wood go a lot further i think my total might be used here yep okay i just i let myself get a little bit weak there but i should be okay and now i'm once again out of wood so it's back to chopping trees i've come up with an ingenious idea i've planted loads of saplings and if i just bone meal them there we go we've grown a giant one and that one is a lot bigger that's more like it now i can mine from the top and get wood a lot faster i'm pretty sure i have now spawn proof the entire fortress that needs to be I don't, I don't know how this guy's spawning what are you doing here i'll add a few slabs in these corners but i don't think much can spawn here anyway i even have to do all of that bit over there <laughs> it all has to be anywhere within 128 blocks of this right here had to be spawn proofed if it was a fortress some of this nether ways might just be in range so i'm gonna add a few slabs here as well i'm very happy with what i've achieved and now i feel like doing something else for a bit more with the skulls for my collection it might be a blizzard but that's not gonna stop me going on a journey a journey to find the final biome that i've yet to visit i've never properly been in this direction which is why i'm hoping to find what i'm looking for and that is the mushroom biome something very rare indeed and look at that a new pillager outpost just a little update i've traveled 5,000 blocks and <laughs> Still got nothing. Look at this up ahead, finally. <laughs> I have found one. I've traveled like 7,000 blocks. But finally, the mushroom biome. And there we go. We have got the achievement. Adventuring time. Right, I might as well go home now. I'm just kidding. I didn't come all this way to not bring back some sort of souvenir. Let's bring a block of mycelium. Actually, I just realized I have a silk touch shovel. This could be a lot faster. And I have a stack. I'm pretty happy with that. And this might take a while, but I'd like to bring you back home with me. Since this guy's pretty rare, I'd like to give him a name. Comment down below what you think I should name him. It is going to take me a long time to get home. Well, the sun is going down and we've come to a village. A perfect place to stay the night. I'm sure you'll be all right spending the night in the boat, won't you? Excuse me, sir. Can I, can I just borrow your bed? And away we go again. The ocean's run out, so we're going to instead have to go on land. It's nice to finally be back on the waters. Getting him back home has taken me a lot longer than I expected. And I've still got another thousand blocks to go. I can see the beacon. Finally, the end is in sight. And welcome to your new home. Now, you guys be sure to make him welcome, okay? I'm going to buy a name tag right now. Just to make sure he definitely doesn't despawn. Temporarily, he's called Painful Experience, by the way, <laughs> because it was indeed a very painful experience. But was it worth it? Absolutely 100% it was worth it. It is getting dark, so I've got a plan for tonight. And that's to go for a bit of a flight, which I'm really glad I can do now. I've not got that stupid mushroom. It's a flight to the desert. I needed to get dark, but whilst I wait, I'm going to grab loads more sand. Here's who I've been looking for, a husk. Let's take him out. There we go. Might as well go to sleep now. And I have now taken out every monster except for the phantom. Also, whilst I'm here, I should grab some of these cacti. I can put it off no longer. It's time to finish this wither skeleton farm. Still need a lot more carpet, so I'm doing some serious sheep breeding. I didn't really think this through. <laughs> I've just got loads of baby pink sheep. I realise I'm being an idiot. Why have I been shearing sheep when I've literally been given loads of string for free? I can just craft this into wool and get all the carpet I need. I'm a little bit short, but I can easily get more from here. There you go, fellas. Give me loads of string. I've also been smelting netherite like an idiot when I can just simply craft it. Well, next time I need something, fellas, I'll remember to come here. I've also run out of gunpowder, but I think I have a load at the bottom of this gunpowder. Farm. Let's switch that off. Okay, never mind. <laughs> 
two. I've got everything I needed now. Let's go and head to the nether. After I get a good night's rest, of course. You know, I don't know why I go anywhere else when I need gunpowder. Let's restock this chest. Here is my beautiful fortress. I really take this game too seriously, don't I? Time to start building. And this stone slab platform is now complete. We seem to have had a bit of a disaster here. And <laughs> my carpets are all burning and I've run out of carpets now. I'm pretty sure buttons will still work, though. Thankfully, I'll get some carpet back since I'm now adding walls. And because Blaze and Pigman will also spawn on here, we're going to build the little trap that will get rid of them. We dig down five in total, place some sand. I'm also going to dig some little trenches here. And I can drop more sand and put a cactus on top of that. Same on this side. And finally, one right here. It's going to slightly hurt me, but if I just build up. There we go. So this is one of them. I have to do that on all four sides. I'm going to need fire resistance for this one. And a bucket of lava as well. There's a lot of blaze here, but I'm just going to drop the lava and swim down. Now I need to build a platform all the way down here. Let's drop some sand on there. Put some cactus on there. Another sand right here. And one on top of that. And the walls just need bringing down to this level as well. And now this final cactus is down. These bits are finished. On these bits, I just need to add turtle eggs and trap doors, which is what will lure the pigmen over. Now we can come to this middle bit where we're going to place six glass blocks. And at the top of this one, we're going to place trap doors. When we remove these two blocks, that is where the piglin is going to go. No! You just broke my turtle leg, you stupid ghast! What a mess this is. Gotta get rid of you guys right now. And stop this burning. Thankfully, I have a few spare buttons. And that is why I brought spare turtle legs. Let's add some trapdoors there. Are you kidding me? Another ghast? Why am I suddenly getting so many of you guys? <laughs> it's quite crazy at the moment. We're gonna add some walls around this as well. And this is where the wither skeletons are gonna fall down. So these trapdoors here will trick them into falling. This is the chute they'll fall down. I've dug it all the way down and they'll land on these slabs. I've created a nice little landing platform down here. And now I just need to create the storage system. It's taking a lot of brain power, but I think the auto storage is just about finished. Need to put some repeaters here, redstone on top of that, and it should automatically sort items. Now we just need a bit of glass on there. Look at this, we've already got wither skeletons ready and waiting. I've decided to spawn proof this area because the next bit is going to be very difficult. I'm not looking forward to this next bit because I've got to trap a piglin in here. It's going to be a nightmare. I found a hoglin and I found piglins not that far from the fortress. Although these ones have got crossbows. I don't want guys with crossbows. This guy looks like the perfect candidate. Or maybe this guy. Come on, mate. Come down here. Just don't hit me. You might die to my thorns. I go like that. Spleef him. That's it. Down you come. Okay. I didn't think he was a one-tap. He... <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I think this guy is the guy for me. Different piglin is now in pursuit. I think I cornered this off, but we need to get through here. This feels so weird. It feels like you're at school when it's completely empty. All right, mate, I'm gonna have to get rid of a few buttons, but can you now get up here somehow? The staircase is on. Do not trample the eggs. I've just realized the eggs. Um, right, I'll do a few laps while I work out what to do here. He just ran across it, but it was okay. I guess that's a good thing. Let's build a little staircase so he can get over. No! Take two. This time I'm much better prepared. He just needs to run up here. And now he's trapped. Oh, he just walked off. Oh, um, <laughs> can you go back up there, please? Oh, no. This is a bad time. Wait, there's two gas? Oh, my goodness. Not right now. Let's block you in. You're not going anywhere. He is now well and truly in the position. I'll just quickly name tag him. There we go. Now I just need to get rid of this portal. Add a few carpets so magma cubes can't spawn. The reason I've got a piglin there is because wither skeletons will try to attack him and fall down that hole. I don't know if you could tell, but his name tag said I have a great life. Because he does have a great life. He's now stuck there forever. Now I can fly down here and test it out. Oh my goodness, there's already wither skeletons here. Let's get to it. I made a big mistake. I needed to use carpets. The buttons will not stop magma cubes from spawning there. Hopefully it now works a bit better. Oh, and I need to spawn proof this. <laughs> there's loads of pigmen here. Okay, now they are dropping a lot faster. Let's see if we get any wither skulls from that. So far, we've only got coal and bones. I hope I never have to place another button in my entire life. I've also spawn proofed this platform. Hopefully now we get some really good rates. That was close. Um, I just realized I ran out of firework rockets in the middle of an ocean. A lava ocean at that. So I'm out of rockets. My spawn proofing still hasn't quite worked properly. What a disaster this is turning out to be. Might as well build another portal whilst I can and go looking for sugarcane. That was easy to find. Then we could use that sugarcane to fly around and find more sugarcane. Like right about here. I'm tired of placing slabs. I'm going to try lava instead. I've done enough spawn proofing. I feel like I've spawn proof half the nether at this point. I'm going to drop my render distance down to about six so I really get some good rates as well. And now I'll AFK for a bit. Keep taking these guys out. See how much we get. I've spent a number of hours improving this wither skeleton farm. I spawn proofed a load more area and it is now working really, really well. If we head on down here, you will see we have nearly 100 wither skulls. If we combine that with the extra ones we've got in there, we've got a lot. In fact, I've got, I've got 10 in my inventory as well that I must have picked up because sometimes you do pick up the loot if you like stood here. Notice how I've managed to pick up some coal there and stuff. But look how fast they're dropping. Another wither skull. It's brilliant. I have turned the render distance down. That helps the spawn rates a bit more. What I ended up realizing was that this area over here was completely free for things to spawn. So I had to put all these slabs on here. I also added way more slabs over here on all this bit. 
<laughs> it took me ages. And I did also completely miss an inside part of the fortress, which was also causing problems. But now it's working brilliantly. I have 99 wither skulls. Let's get one more. And there we go. I think it went in. 100 wither skulls. Would you believe it? Now there's something else that I'd like to address. I'm first going to fly my way back home, then set my spawn on this bed and break the bed, then head back to the nether, head through this portal, and then through this portal, because I keep getting accused of cheating, which is really a dumb thing to say. Because the message in the chat appears, you have no bed or recharged anchor. They've seen that in the chat and said, he died, he cheated, he must have cheated. Guys, that's what happens when you go through the end with no bed, okay? Please stop saying that. Obviously, I know that most of my fans that are watching this know that that's what happens, but some of you don't, so I thought I'd address it. And if you see anybody else comment it, just let them know the reason. Look at how well that bamboo's grown. It looks pretty good. Now I can grab some obsidian from here, a bit more from here. And this is where I keep all my glass. Let's also get soul sand. Speaking of sand, I need to do more smelting. And I might regret this next bit. Oh my goodness, I just found some diamonds. <laughs> I was going to mine down here to spawn some withers. As I was saying, I might regret this bit because I'm going to spawn... 33 withers. To be honest, I feel like this is either going to be one of my best ideas or my worst ideas ever. Here we go. Let's activate all these withers. Hopefully we can do this. Oh my goodness, this is a lot of withers. I mean, I've fought three at once and used one totem. This is going to take a lot of skill not to completely screw all of this up. And there we go. Okay, just get out of here now, SP. All I can hear is just a load of explosions going off. I'm kind of scared to see what's going on. Oh my goodness, look at this. I'm getting... <laughs> I am not coming out of this alive, am I? <laughs> What on earth have I done? This guy is literally coming towards me as well. All right, yeah, if I can lure one away, take him out. There we go. Look at that. He's pretty weak already. Let's deal with this guy. Okay, I don't think the other withers see me over here. This could be one wither down. I'm gonna get my golden apples on my hot bar. Let's get rid of this first guy. He's so weak now. We've got to have him, right? Yes, one down. And that is my first nether star. Now I've got two aggressive boys on me. I feel like extending this tunnel is a good idea. It's a very useful escape mechanism. Another one down. And that is that done as well. Okay, we've killed three. 30 to go. It's already running out of golden apples here, but I really need them. Another one down. And another one. And that's the sixth one. My armor is almost broken already. <laughs> this isn't good. Another one. And I decided I'm going up top for more supplies. I can now repair all my armor. Oh my goodness, what's going on? It's raining big. I better get out of here. Now I'm going to do some brewing. Make night vision so you guys can see better. And also strength. And I can also craft more golden apples. Let's get back to the battle. All right, withers, prepare to face your fury. Oh my goodness, you've made such a mess down here. Another one's dead. That was close. That was close. I was very close. I'm okay, though. I'm okay. Didn't realize I was getting that low. Let's just move. Not again. Another totem gone, but I'm just going to keep gappling. I should be able to take it. There we go. Let's move over. I have a spare one in my inventory. Because of the thorns, my armor keeps nearly breaking. 20 down. Hopefully not many more to go. And that's the 25th one. And that is wither number 30 defeated. Here is the final wither. And now he has been defeated. Let's get that start. That's 33 of them. Was it worth it? No, probably not. It was probably the biggest waste of time I've ever done. To be honest, if it hadn't been so laggy, it probably wouldn't have been that bad. But this is the end result. Look at all those beacons. 33 of them. What am I going to do with all these beacons? <laughs> I have no idea. Although one plan is to add a row of them along here. And now I can add this stained glass along here. And I now have rainbow beacons behind my house. They look pretty awesome. Suddenly I feel like taking out all those withers was worth it. And I think it's time we went mining for more diamonds. I'm just going to pick a random spot and this looks good to me. The beacon is now set up with haste 2. I'm going to dig down to level 13 and start strip mining. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that is has to be the quickest ever find of diamonds. Since finding diamonds is a pretty repetitive thing, now. I'm not going to bother showing you every single time I find some. After a few hours of mining, I got 276 diamonds. That's not bad. <laughs> I still want way more though. But for today, that's more than enough for me. It's not going to be quite enough to fill in the entirety of this, but we're definitely making good progress. Next, I need to do some more tree chopping. This looks like a good one to me. I only need three logs. But once you start mining a tree, you might as well chop the whole thing down. Now I can craft a campfire, place it underneath this bee's nest, then I can safely harvest the honey. Same for this one. Let's harvest that. And then this one. There's nothing like stealing honey without making bees angry. Why do I feel like this bee is just completely broken? You really look like you're in a tough life, mate. There, there you go. Enjoy your time. If you don't have a honey farm, it's really hard work getting loads of honey, isn't it? But we've, we've managed to get enough for one block. There we go. What am I going to do with this? Well, I'm going to go down here, jump down this hole, then I shall place honey right about here, then fly straight back up. And when I jump down now, we're going to land on the honey block. Well, that didn't work. Being the idiot that I am, I completely forgot how honey blocks work. Take two. Well, I did it, but it didn't work. Will it work this time? There we go. I just completely wasn't doing it at the right angle. But we got out of the sticky situation. I'm glad that achievement's been checked off. You guys know me. The greatest bozeman that the world has ever seen. I'm going to hit this target, don't you worry. Right on the bullseye. What? How was that not the bullseye? I don't know. That looks, that looks spot on to me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Take two. Why is that golem stood in the... You are a stupid golem. You know that. You know, I'm just going to get rid of you. Get out of my way. That's it. I'd like to know how at least one of them hasn't hit the bullseye. It's a new day. 
And this time I'm going to hit it. The problem is arrows like randomly move to the side. So like you can see I'm shooting in the same place every time. But they're not going in the same place every time. Oh my goodness you stupid. Don't walk in front of a sniper. <laughs> Quite possibly the stupidest advancement I've ever tried to do. How is not one of them hit it? It's time for plan B. Trap door on top of that and redstone all the way along here. And then shoot a load of arrows on top of here. Perfect. Then I simply flick this lever. <laughs> and I get the bullseye advancement. I ain't messing about with that other stuff. I'd be here till next Christmas trying to do it properly. I've had enough of advancements. It's time to do some building. It may not look like it now, but this is going to be one of the most luxurious places in the world. Just going to fill this area up with sand. Add glowstone along here. And then fill it up with water. Now, I said it'd be luxurious. And it definitely will be. Because the walls are going to be emerald blocks. So far, it's really coming together. It's also going to have iron blocks along the top. There we go go. I'm also going to add some ladders. And of course, I want to add a beacon. In fact, make that two beacons. It really is starting to come together. I can also add coral into here and seagrass. I'm going to chuck down some random decorational carpets. And now I can get the main addition. And that is turtle eggs. We only have two left, so we need to breed them. But first, we must wait for them to hatch. I'm pretty sure I have a pumpkin in this chest. Indeed, I do. Let's grab a couple of snow blocks, a name tag, and you, mate, can live over here. And your name? Sean Jr. Let's get that pumpkin off you. <laughs> there you go, mate. You look a lot better now. I would have preferred an oak fence there but I have no oak logs left. For my next mission I'm going to start with some brewing. Let's add some sugar for swiftness. There we go. They now splash as well. And I'm going on the hunt. On the hunt for a horse. Don't worry I, I don't plan to kill any horse. I just plan to tame it. Oh these are all grey. I, I don't want a grey horse. We could just get a donkey. <laughs> I don't think so. Yes this is the one. I think you and me are going to get along just fine. And there we go. I've now tamed him. Let's put the saddle on. Yeah you're not the fastest guy in the world are you? But don't worry that's why we brought swiftness. But did that even splash you? Do you have swiftness? You do not seem any faster to be quite honest. You're still very very, very slow. Oh, it's not like I'm going to use him. I've got Elytra. I can finally see my house. Well, he's done his best at least. He's, he's got me all this way. And you are going to live with the cows, okay? There we go. This is your home, okay? But don't worry, I'm going to go get you some better armor. I've just promised him better armor and I, I don't think I have any. I can't let him down now. I'm going to have to go and find some. All right, Nether Fortress number one. What have you got for me? Please be diamond armor. Gold I promised him good. We get out of it. I promised him something special. I'm going to get him diamond. I think it's fair to say I'm getting a little attached to this guy, which is surprising considering how useless he is. Come find something good. Going to another fortress. Oh, would you look at this? It's the old wither skeleton farm. Let's see what these chests have got to offer. It's supposed to be impossible for you guys to spawn. Another useless fortress. Oh, so they can spawn on the nether one. <laughs> I need to spawn proof that at some point. And this fortress. Oh, it does have diamond armor. Mission accomplished. I'd already assumed it was a bad chest before I even opened it. There you go, mate. Your diamond horse armor, as promised. Oh, but at least he appreciates it. My fortune pickaxe is quite broken. So my elytra, they're on the way anyway. So I think it's time to do some AFK in at the gunpowder farm. I've been here for quite some time. Let's see how much gunpowder we got. Look at all those creepers waiting. What on earth is that strider doing? We have now got a lot of gunpowder though. And now I want to head to the gold farm. There's plenty of gold in this chest and this one too. And I want to use this to get more string. And I can use the string to place it around this turtle area. And apparently nighttime is the time that turtle eggs are most likely to crack. So I'm going to have to spend the night guarding them with my life. There we go. One cracked. Perfect. Wait, it's cracking again. Wait, are they going to hatch? It did. We've got a baby turtle. Oh, it's amazing. You get out of here. He's going for my turtle eggs. I won't let anything happen to you. Look at him swimming around. He's having a whale of a time. I guess this one will hatch another night. It's really annoying me that I haven't finished this bottom layer. I need 21 more blocks, which is just under three stacks. So I'm going for it. And this time I'm using speed potions. I've also found building the beacon underwater is the best idea. There we go. Haste two. And now there isn't much else to do except start digging. This beacon is too close to somewhere I've already mined. And this time I'm building it in a cave very, very far away. I'd like to keep mining, but both of my pickaxes are pretty much broken now. So I'm going to place down all these diamonds I found and then use my foot fortune pickaxe. I'm going to mine them up. Not quite three stacks. I'm going to try and keep going because that did give me a bit more XP. I may still mine a load of redstone to heal up my pickaxe and I think these might be the final diamonds I need. In fact, yes they are. So we've got over three stacks now, which when crafted together gives me 21 diamond blocks. I haven't slept in a long time. I'm hoping to get some phantoms to spawn tonight as well. I think I heard a phantom, you know. Yep, yeah, I've definitely heard a phantom. There's also an advancement to try and kill two phantoms with one arrow. Okay, that didn't kill them, but that hit two of them. Here they come. Yes, we did it! Oh my goodness, I never thought I'd do that. We got two, we got two birds, one arrow, and every monster has now been hunted. Might as well grab that membrane as well. And here's the final guy up here. I can use looting on him, and the same on this guy. Now this wandering trader is invisible. Does he have any good trades? Nothing that I'm bothered about. If I can hurry home, this is prime time for turtle hatching. Between 3 and 4 a.m. at night, there is a 100% chance that a turtle egg will crack. But it have to be within 128 blocks of it for it to happen. All right, here it is. <laughs> 
Let's see if I was on time. Very sadly, I think I was too late. It makes sense that these membranes go in the brewing room. And there we go. The bottom layer has been completed. Now, since my pickaxe definitely needs repairing, I'm going to go to the creeper farm. I've only been AFK here for five minutes, but I don't think it needs to be long. Since a lot of creepers spawn very quickly. It didn't quite fully repair it, so I'm quickly going to the pigment farm. It's definitely a lot quicker with these guys. We're finished already. And the next thing I think I should build is a treasure room. I'm thinking it'd be cool to add crying obsidian in the floral on this edge. And then the same on this side as well. Well, I'm actually curious to see just how much crying obsidian I have available. There does seem to be quite a few stacks in these chests. Yep, four and a half stacks. That's good enough for me. So I think I'll use crying obsidian a lot more in this build. I have a lot of packed ice and I'm thinking of using it for this. Here's how the design is looking so far. So I'm thinking lava here should make a nice little, uh, little extra bit of lighting. Same on this side. I've also added a sandstone floor inside there and on this one. I think I'm just going to carry on the stone brick pathway down the middle. I'm also going to try glowstone around the edge here. And then armor stands along here. And with that, I can add all my elytra. I think it'd be better if they were all enchanted. Yeah, that looks much better. Whoa, creeper no. Oh, are you kidding me? We don't need setbacks like that. As I was about to say, I'm going to add redstone torches along here, quartz on top of that, and then dragon heads on here. I feel like quartz is not the right block. Now obsidian, that looks much better. I think I'm just going to use emerald blocks for the floor because it's a treasure room and I at least need to show some wealth. And because I used up a lot of emeralds on that, I think I need to go to the raid farm. Before I actually make use of it, I'm going to change something up. So I have so many totems. You guys have no idea. Look, there's six double chests there. There's a seventh one here. This one's got loads. I don't need them all. So I'm breaking this chest right here. Goodbye, totems. You will be missed. So we're going to have a hopper going down here into a dropper facing down. And I'm going to build a little glass box right here. Put lava in that and seal it up. And a comparator coming out of that. And a repeater going to there. So it's just going to keep getting rid of the totems. Oh no, it's on, setting on fire. Okay, this is a slight design flaw. Might need to move the lava down a little bit. I think there was an easier way to solve that problem, but I've started now. I'm going to finish it. And now every item that goes in there will be sent into the lava. And all the items that I'm actually bothered about will get sorted into these chests alone. Here. Now I just need to get the bad omen effect. I think I flicked this lever twice. There we go. Turn this on. Now the raid begins and I can start getting lots of emeralds. I spent many hours AFK at this farm and as you can see, I have got a lot of emeralds which I can turn into emerald blocks. And there we go. Nearly five stacks of emerald blocks. Might as well take these glass bottles, some spider eyes, sticks and some redstone. That's all I've got space for. I've been going through totems quite fast so probably a good idea to put them in there. I'd also like to add some effects to these beacons over here and to have more effects available, I'm going to add a second layer. There we go. Let's see what we can do. And I have jump boost, which is pretty cool. Now let's get back to work on this treasure room. Could do with more gold, so I'm heading to the nether. This should be enough gold. Let's turn them into blocks and head back home. Then I'm going to add gold blocks along here and then put beacons on top of that because I guess these are a form of treasure. And on this side, I'd like to add blocks of coal with wither skulls on top of that. I definitely need to sort out this roof as well. It doesn't look very good at the moment. I think I'm going to add black stone around the edge. And then we're going to have redstone brick slabs for this roof. I have to say, it is really starting to come together. Before I forget, I also want to go and check on my turtle eggs. A raider Started. Oh no, I have started a raid at the worst possible... Right, uh, turtle egg, don't worry. You will be safe. I won't let anything happen to you. This guy has fully grown. I don't think we've got a scoot. It must have despawned. Can't believe I forgot to drink milk. I am... <laughs> I'm not ready for a raid. Regardless of whether I'm ready, I'm just going to have to do it. I'm going to grab the bell so I can find the mobs. Yeah, don't panic, guys. This is my bad. I'm very, very sorry. I, I didn't mean this. Will you stop shooting my golem, please? Oh, there he is. I found him. I think I need to sleep. There's just too many mobs about. Here they come again. Look at this guy sneaking through the cracks. All right, the golems will get him. Oh, now you're trapped in here. The old turtle enclosure. Wave number three is over there. Now I've got to take on a Ravager. Come on, give me a hand, Golem. That's it. Let's finish this guy off. A oh, piece of cake. Get rid of you as well so you don't poison me. As long as you don't do anything stupid, these raids are not that bad. Ah, oh, so you think you can sneak through? I think you just climbed the ladder there. Oh no, I just hit the Golem. I'm very sorry. I will protect you. Don't worry. You won't. I won't let you burn. Not on my watch. Oh no. Look, I made a big mess there. I hope you appreciate that. Don't have time for fixing all of this right now. Golems are dealing with the raid. Meanwhile, I'm doing a bit of uh, a bit of building. Uh, what are you doing down here? I'm going to have to ring the bell. I have no idea where they're all at. Oh, apparently, they're over there. And it's revealed some over... Th I don't know where they are. Some sort of cave down here. What are you guys doing here? I've lost count of what wave we're on, but we've, we've lost a couple of golems over there. This was not how I expected to be spending my final day. I'm starting to get weak. I should probably eat. Here are these ravages. They pack a punch, but we got him. Oh, no, the Vexes are here now. I think it's time to pull out the golden apples. Yeah, I'm very weak. You stop hitting me. This turtle enclosure is a great place for trapping you guys. I think this might be the last guy. No, nope, turns out there's a couple more. There's him and there's him. His waves are getting a little bit harder, but nothing I can't handle. Another wave down. Surely this has got to be the last wave. I'm fighting two ravagers here. This is a little bit worrying. I've got a lot of things here, me. You know, I'm just I'm just swinging this sword and hoping for the bet. Oh, I'm on two hearts. Let's just hit a gapple, half a heart. Oh, the totem's coming. No worries. There's another totem right there. And I can get another totem off you as well. I think it's a big problem that all my golems have died because that is really bad for my villagers. You guys get away. I think, is this the last guy? There can't be another wave. There's another wave. Guys, just sit tight. This is definitely the last one. And here they are. 
through the bamboo forest. You're the first target. Now for you guys, don't think you can win this one. It'd be a lot better if I had a bow, to be honest with you. Where do you think you're going? Sneaking around. Can I just deal with you from down here? Aha! I've beaten the system. Both of these must be very weak. Yeah, that's one down. The other one's down. All these vexes are doing my head in. I'm going to need another totem at this rate. Surely there's no one left after you. There they are, the final threats. Good job, I've got a fence around this village, otherwise we'd be in big trouble. Did I get them all? Is that it? The fireworks are going off! You vexes! It's too little too late for you all. It was a very unexpected occasion, guys, but I hope you're happy to see me. I never really got a chance to finish this room. I do, of course, want to extend it a bit further and also add a place for the dragon egg, which at the moment still sits up here. Let's also release this turtle egg. Everything's safe now. To begin, I'm going to grab some fish and set off traveling in search of cats because I need to get a complete catalog. And I'm not taking all these cats with me. I just don't have space for all that. And I can't remember which ones I haven't, haven't got, so I'm taming every cat I see. Finally, this guy was a cat that I've never tamed before. Seven down. Four to go. How cool is this? An ice village right by an acacia village. This is really crazy to see him so close. Another new cat. Sorry, I've already tamed one of you. You seem to be stuck there, fella. Do you want me to make a way up for you? There we go. Now I need to collect more fish. Another desert temple here. There's always a chance to find a notch apple. Just some regular golden apples and that's about it. Another temple and another waste of time. Here we have a jungle biome. I think I should bring back some of these cocoa beans since I don't have any of them at home. And I'm going to get a jungle sapling as well. Then I can grow my own tree at home. And there's a temple. It has some emeralds, which is nice. And a creep. Okay, that could have been close. And more gold and iron. Can have enchanted books, but not this time. A chest containing nothing important. There is an extremely low chance of finding a notch apple in one of them. Another desert temple. I'm breaking in the... Okay, I shouldn't have broken in the back. More gold. See, enchanted book, not very good though. And more gold again. Look at this, we've got a blacksmith. I think I'll take the bread, but everything else I've already got loads of. Another blacksmith with obsidian. I think I might need that. And this is cat number nine. And we have here cat number ten, which means the final cat I need is the black cat, which can be found at a swamp hut. And there's one over there. I'm going to attempt to tame this cat without the witch even knowing. Well, am I supposed to do it now you're down there? I just give you that. There we go. We got a complete catalog. And I might as well grab this beehive on my way. Uh-oh, I, I just made them very mad. Turns out that wasn't a silk touch pickaxe. <laughs> my bad. Hopefully these guys will be a bit more friendly. There we go, that's much better. And this one down here. It's going to be quicker for me to go home through the nether. So I'm going to mine this tender chest with a fortune pickaxe, get the obsidian from it, and then use that to build a portal and take the shortcut home. Might as well grab a free gas tier whilst I'm here. And what would have been a 10,000 block journey is now only a 1,000 block journey. And here we are, home sweet home. If I give these guys bread, we might get some more baby villagers. Let's also add more beehives around the area. And finally, I can plant a jungle sapling. <laughs> I'm creating my own mini jungle. Still no sign of the egg hatching. And now I think it's time that I once and for all finish this diamond beacon. I have new strategies, so it's now going to be way faster. But first, I need to find a swamp, which is ironic since I was literally at one five minutes ago. Another temple, another letdown. Finally, this is what I want. I've shown this in other videos, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But at the middle of these clay, we're going to go across eight blocks and then dig straight down. And at the bottom, you will always find diamonds. Then I can just swim straight up and dig down in the next place. And you just keep doing this over and over, and we are going to get a lot of diamonds. Or maybe watch every single time. I do it because <laughs> it's going to get quite repetitive. Well, what do you know? A wandering trader of all things. I have new respect for you guys after the pain I've been through in the, the cave days. Although in this world, he's pretty useless to me. You guys want to see how many diamonds I've got after 10 minutes? I'm excited to see as well. Two stacks in 10 minutes. And to finish the beacon, I need about 10 stacks. I reckon that's doable. Some people spend weeks getting a full diamond beacon, but I prefer to manage it in a few hours. Also, the reason I don't often dig down using these big ones is because whilst it is possible to find diamonds, they're usually quite low down and generate in the bedrock. And if something generates it's in the bedrock, then it doesn't generate at all. Also, guys, I'm trying to hit 2 million subscribers this year, so if you like my videos, you should definitely subscribe. This also works in non-swamp biomes where there's gravel or clay. As you can see, diamonds at the bottom. So, guys, I did a little off-camera mining. Yes, that is 10 stacks of diamonds. Do you know how crazy that is? And that is after only one hour of mining. <laughs> I'm blown away. And you guys were thinking the diamonds in the thumbnail were clickbait. But well, quite the opposite was the case. I'm pretty sure that despite all of that, I've still not got enough. Yeah, I've miscalculated and I still need 12 more blocks, but we can get them some other time. Right now, gold supplies are a little low, so I want to go and get some more, which means AFKing at the pigment farm. I now have over 352 levels. And as you can see in this chest, there is a lot of gold. I should probably craft it into gold blocks so it's easier to carry. Now for the real question on everyone's mind, have me turtle eggs hatched? <laughs> And the answer is no. I think I have a use for all these poppies and I'm also going to take the iron. And that use is to breed these bees. And then we get the beautiful little baby bee. I'm going to go mining for more logs. I still don't know how I'm this far in and I still haven't built a tree farm. I'm also going to grab some coal and then I can make a load of campfires. And then I can easily steal the bees honey. I think I'll eventually make a honey farm, but I haven't got around to that yet. And I might as well harvest this sugar cane whilst it's still standing here. Because I definitely need to improve this pathetic little farm. And now I think I'm going to go and collect more sand. I just realized I forgot the shulker boxes. I feel like one day there's going to be none of this desert 
left. Do you ever wonder how a bee managed to get all the way out here in this desert? He is definitely very lost indeed. I filled up four shulker boxes, so I'm going to quickly grab all of this and then rush back home as fast as I can because if I'm fast enough, my turtle egg will hatch. Yes, it is hatching. <laughs> that happens between 3 and 4 a.m., but it didn't fully hatch. Okay, it, it got close. It's very close. It's closer than it used to be, at least. I'll try and do the same again some other night. Now let's start making more TNT. Took a lot of crafting, but an entire shulker box of TNT. Well, this guy's trying to get at me turtle eggs. They're coming from all angles. I won't let anything happen to you. Are you kidding me? I waited all night and nothing happened. I should have just let the zombie crush you. I don't know why this is an achievement, but I'm going to do it, which means I'm going to need a lot of obsidian. I have over 100 pieces. That should be enough. I think I'm going to need to make a fishing rod and it's back to the nether. A soul sand valley will be the perfect area. And I think I've found my gas. He's actually stuck down here. This is perfect. Try and make a portal without me getting blown to bits. This is actually a bit of a challenge because if the gas hits me, my thorns might kill it. So I'm having to be a pro at dodging gas fireballs as well. Let's light it up. <laughs> now I just need to get it through. And that is where the fishing rod will come in. We go like this. You're you're in. Surely you're in. Wait, how do you just go straight through a portal like that? Wait, what? What? And it died. I thought, how does this game work? All right, take two. This time, <laughs> hopefully things will be different. Let's light the portal. Let's start fishing it through. The gas just floated away into the distance and despawned. If I want any chance of doing this, I'm going to have to put him in a minecart, which I'll do some other time. Since right now, I want to do some AFK for gunpowder, and then it'll be time to go searching for netherite. It's been long enough, and if I'm quick, my turtle eggs might hatch. And if it doesn't hatch tonight, I'm giving up. It still didn't crack. This egg is never going to hatch. But at least my creeper farm still works. And now I'm going to collect more sand, and then I can craft loads and loads of TNT. It would seem that a wandering trader has spawned, although none of his trades really interest me. One thing I would like to buy a lot of though is enchanting bottles since I can then use them out and about to mend my equipment but if I'm going to take this seriously I need way more clerics after a lot of trading I got over a hundred of these bottles and next time some of my equipment is weak we can test that theory out I'm still digging tunnels but I just realized I missed a piece of ancient debris last time I was doing TNT mining but yeah I've got 3,000 TNT in these two shulker boxes so I'm going to drink this swiftness and get placing this is going to take a while oh my goodness and um we just had a massive disaster there. Although the plus side, we can start finding this ancient debris now. You can see how incredibly well this method works though. We've got ancient debris up here. And then just over there, we've got two more. We've got three up there. They're absolutely everywhere. I finally reached the end with 83 ancient debris. And now it's back to placing TNT. Oh no, I, <laughs> I placed TNT right by lava. Why did I not think that would blow it up? I'm just going to keep placing and forget that happened. Once again, I'm just casually being placed in and I see it all blowing up in the distance. <laughs> it must have gone near some lava. I hear it all blowing up next to me. There's a tunnel, another tunnel over there. Oh, well, it's going to be blown up at some point. It might as well be now. Although I've still got all this TNT to get through. I've now run out of tunnel. Oh my goodness, it's already blowing up. I didn't even light it yet. Why does it keep blowing up? Don't worry. Ancient debris will protect me from the blast. I still have so much TNT left, but let's see how much we get. After all this. Already, look at that. One, two, a few over there. Beautiful. Well, after all of that, I have 163 ancient debris. And swimming through Lara is literally the fastest way for me to get out of here. <laughs> this gas isn't helping. Oh no, I'm gonna die. Oh, don't worry, we've got a totem. In fact, we've got a few totems, actually. And now it's time for a quick trip to the XP farm so that I can repair my pickaxes. Everything is repaired, and some people always comment saying, why don't I smelt down the swords and get more nuggets? Honestly, I get so much gold from all of this that it's just not worth the coal. And sometimes non-nugget items sneak through the system and go would go into the furnace and just mess everything up. Because whilst the auto storage is good, it does very occasionally mess up. Let's fill these up with ancient debris. I also have a piece of netherite scrap and some ingots in here. Now these are all finished. Let's craft a load of ingots and... <laughs> We can make four blocks. Eight more debris and I could have made a fifth one. And there we go. <laughs> Why am I starting this project? Since I only need two more stacks of diamonds, I'm going to quickly get those. In fact, this area's got plenty of gravel and clay. And here are the first diamonds. And then my microphone cut off for the next 10 days or so. But in that time, I finished the diamond beacon, built the auto storage for my bartering farm, built a very efficient tree farm. I also had to name my mushroom that I got in the last episode. And I'd got a comment from my friend Jack Sucks at Life saying that I should name the mushroom Jack. But then his girlfriend texted me saying to call it Becky. So just to annoy Jack, I, I called it Becky. And then I felt bad, so I traveled 5,000 blocks to bring another mushroom home that I called Jack. Then I built a roof of my turtle enclosure to keep the eggs safe. I bred some rabbits and then got attached to them, so brought them home. Then I named them Mopsy, Bopsy, and Flopsy. I then decided to do something a bit more manly, so I headed to the end to bring home a shulker. Then there was a thunderstorm, so I completed the achievement to strike a villager with lightning. Although the, the golems weren't too happy with this transformation. And then I struck Jack with lightning as well <laughs> to turn him into a brown mushroom. Next, I broke the rarest block in Minecraft 
because that seems to really annoy all of you guys. And then I started digging a massive tunnel to transport my shulker from the world spawn to my house. But I got a bit bored of that, so I went to AFK at my creeper farm and, and then I fixed my mic. I can take out all these creepers and then I can get back to mining for ancient debris. Now the tunnel's done, I'm going to go and place down 2,000 TNT. I didn't get to use all my TNT because I don't want my pickaxe to break, so I can't build any more tunnels, but... Let's set off some chain reactions. And already there's plenty of ancient debris. I've reached the end of my tunnel and got 162 ancient debris. And it is good to finally be home. Put all of you in there. Being the idiot that I am, I accidentally put my ender chest in my ender chest so I couldn't use my ender chest whilst I was out and about in the nether. I've just crafted loads and loads of iron into rails. <laughs> I think that'll be enough. Might as well do the same with my gold. Let's craft a load more netherite ingots. Now 47 in total. That's five more blocks of netherite. Yay! But you know what guys, in my books, progress is is progress and <laughs> slow and steady wins the race. And now I'm finally gonna get this shulker tunnel finished. I've now completely run out of iron. I've completely run out of rails. My pickaxe is nearly broken. I think it's time for a restock. Thankfully, I have loads of spare iron at my golem farm. I also need to patch up this beacon again, since at some point I stole a load of the iron blocks. And then I can use this XP to heal my pickaxe. Now this is the only way to travel down this tunnel. And now it's back to placing rails. I've once again run out of rails, but we are so close to getting back now. Thankfully, this iron farm has been working hard and 48 more rails should be enough. Now that the track's finished, let's make a minecart and go and get that shulker. And we have made it to the sh Okay, maybe we haven't. <laughs> How do I stop this thing? This minecart needs to come back, right? We're going on foot for this last bit. Let's get you out of the boat. There you go. Oh, you stopped in a great position as well. That's fantastic. We can create this little shape here. And then if we put a minecart... He's in. Perfect. Wait. How did he die? Did he just shoot himself? You have got to be kidding me. This can only mean one thing. I have to get another shulker. That is shulker number two gone through the portal. So I forgot to put him in a boat this time. And I don't know where he is. I can hear him but can't see him. Looks like he's already on the track. Right? How do I get him in a minecart? I just need him to stop latching onto the side of things. What are you doing up there now? Break this leaf. Now where's he gone? Now he's underneath this tree. Let's get him off there. And now he's sideways on the tree. Now he's this way on the tree. I've got him in a boat. Apparently he can be sideways and he can still go in a boat. Put the minecart here. Let's break the boat. Where did he go now? It's time the plan's foolproof. He's gonna go there. Minecart, pick him up. No, how did you miss? Okay, he's in the minecart. We did that, perfect. Now, no, don't hurt yourself. Don't die now. Oh no. He keeps hurting himself every time he shoots. Just stop shooting, please. I'm pretty sure this plan should work. If I break that, he goes down there. Okay, finally. I was about to pull my hair out, but he's going. It's finally working. And against all the odds, I have finally got a shulker back to my house. Now let's break your... That's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm out. I've decided that I've now got a new plan. Let's put this guy into a boat. There we go. He's in there. Now I'm going to encapsulate him in endstone and get some sleep. Now this worked for a target block, so I'm sure it'll work for a skeleton as well. So I'm now going to open this up for him. There we go. We can see him. Perfect. I'm going to put a trap door above his head and then add lots of redstone. Let's drop a load of arrows on his head. Actually, I'm just going to try and move him into a bit of a better position. There we go. Now I can't miss. I have an infinity bow, so I might as well put like 100 arrows here. And now if I stand back here, flick this lever... Okay, I don't know what's going on there, but it didn't work. Seems the arrows just, just got stuck on the trap door. Wait. Oh my goodness, no. Don't die. No! His helmet broke and he burnt. I'm having a terrible day. But if there's one thing I can rely on in Minecraft, it's eating. So I'm going to start with a spider eye, then some rotten flesh, and then an apple. That's a little bit nicer. And to top it off, a bit of mushroom stew. 14 foods down, 39 to go. Excuse me, good sir. I'd like to buy some pumpkin pie and also some cookies. And I think bread may also come in handy. Look at this. Right by my house, there is an igloo, but I have never been to this one before. There's another one way over in that direction, but I'm, I'm curious to see what we've got. Okay, it's one with no secret thing underneath. That's a shame. Let's get some raw pork, raw mutton, cooked mutton, cooked pork, raw chicken, and some raw beef. And over here we have some berries. I can also drink some honey, cook some kelp, eat a bit of fish, do a spot of fishing, regretfully eat a puffer fish. I don't recommend flying with nausea. <laughs> It's a bit trippy. And now I'm on the hunt for either a shipwreck or a village. And here I can get potatoes. This place also has carrots. But now I need to find a village with beetroot. And this village has some beetroot seeds. This time there will be no mistake. Let's flick this lever. And, uh... He survived. <laughs> Let's see if I can hit him from here. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes it's just better to do it manually. Now I must farm some potatoes and some beetroots. And then, because I have to, I can eat a poisonous potato. Oh, wow, it poisoned me. Didn't see that coming. I can also eat a beetroot. Beetroot soup. I managed to find some melon. Let's eat one of them. And now all I need to find is a tropical fish and a notch apple. I'd already have a notch apple, but I'm saving that for how did we get here. But to do how did we get here, I need a shulker. <laughs> 
I really don't want to talk about that. Here we have a tropical fish. Let's eat this tropical fish. And there we have it, 38 out of 39. I can't believe I'm doing this again, but I always say never give up. Let's get you in the minecart. Right, perfect. And this time I'm going to be more careful not to screw up. How do I break the minecart without killing the shulker? If I hit that corner. Oh my goodness. I, you know what? I, I've got a better idea. I've just... What have I just witnessed? <laughs> this guy's been hit with the old levitation. Yeah, that's right. You uh, you get out of here. Make sure if I hit there. Or there. No, I'm hitting him. You see, why? Excuse me, good sir. I'd like to buy a glistering melon. And now I shall do some brewing. Oh my goodness. The rarest block in Minecraft. Another one of the rarest block in Minecraft. Suddenly they don't seem so rare. Let's splash you with healing so you don't die. Send you back along where you came from. Place some sand and a cactus. Let's splash you again just to be on the safe side. If I put a torch over there, hopefully you should come back along. Maybe this trick again. Wait, he's going. Come on. Go and hit the cactus, please. That's it. It breaks. We have got him out. <laughs> Let's break that. Let's... Very carefully avoid all these. Get you in a boat. Alrighty, he's in a boat. He's safe and sound. Welcome to my house. And your name can be stupid because that is what you are. I guess that's a classic example of if... It Oh, I didn't mean to do that. As I was saying, it's a classic example of if at first you don't succeed, just keep trying until you want to bang your head against the wall and never play Minecraft again. I'm now going to breed some pigs because I don't think I've done that before. This is a bit of a, a precarious place. Yeah, I, I need to get you off this, this hill. There you go. We, we don't want the baby falling down there. Now I'm going to breed a donkey and a horse. And that gives me a little mule. You remind me of Miles. Only OGs will understand that statement. Come on, chickens. Let's get a baby chick. I love how they're tiny, but they just have a massive head. It's hard enough to find two donkeys. Never mind breed them. I've discovered a random nether portal. I'm guessing. I think I built this at some point. Ah, this was one of my failed attempts at building a stronghold portal. This does, however, give me a good opportunity. A good opportunity to breed some hoglins. And there we go. We got a baby one. And they're also really annoyed. Oh my goodness, I nearly died there. I I'm like doing a nature documentary and nearly died. Don't worry. There's plenty more where that came from. Now let's grab some of this bamboo. And now it's time to head back to the jungle. And now I want to find pandas and ocelots. And an ocelot has been spotted. First thing I've got to do is make it trust me. There's a one in three chance. There we go. We got it. And now I need to put it on a lead so it'll follow me. And another ocelot has been spotted. I found another one again. And now I've got to try and get this one to trust me. I, I think it has. Do you trust me now? Yep. I've lost my other ocelot, so I've got to go and find him. Here he is, stuck at the bottom of this. Come on, mate. And now I can breed you both. And we have a baby ocelot who, who doesn't trust me at all and just ran for its life. It's still a chance. Well, you guys go and look after your baby. It's, it's run off over there. My elytra are now about to break. But I have a shulker box with bottles of enchanting. So if I keep using these, my elytra are getting healed. I'm glad that that plan actually worked. I'd quite like to get more obsidian. So I'm going to take a load of gold and trade it with the piglin. And in this chest over here, I have loads and loads of obsidian. Here I have loads and loads of ender pearls. If I make loads of eyes of ender, I can then make plenty more ender chests. And then I'd like to top up my supply of totems. Because as you can see, we're... We're starting to get low in the shulker box. I'm also going to put a lead on a dolphin and bring it along in the air. <laughs> Did you know that this was possible? Now I just need to make sure he lands in the water. There we go. Kind of find it funny the way he can just drag dolphins out of water. At least it makes it easy to get them around. I'm going to get you to come into this. That's it. In there you go. I've got plans for you. And that's because I'd like to build an aquarium right here. I've now mined out this massive room. I'm then going to have a bit of a bridge down the middle with all this mined out filled with water. I've now finished mining out this room. <laughs> that took a long time. And now for some bad news, my dolphin seems to have despawned. But regardless, I need to go and get some sand. And this desert is the best place for that. That should be enough. Well, would you look at this? I've accidentally built a slime farm. At some point, I do want to make a slime farm, but not right here. And now I can add loads of sand as the floor. And that has now all been added. I'm also going to need a lot of glass, so that's another reason this sand is useful. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but I'm going to try and add crying obsidian along here. So that's kind of like a border. And in between that, I want to add glass. I need a crying obsidian top up at the bartering farm. These parts of the walls are now finished. My idea for the glass is that there could be viewing areas behind the glass. Now I must grab lots of buckets, fill them all up with water, and then I need to get to work. One layer down, about eight to go. I have to say I'm getting pretty fast at this now, and the pool is now complete. And next I'd like to build a bridge out of oak and birch wood, which means I need to do a bit of tree chopping. Look at this, we've got a fox that spawned in the village. Wait, you didn't kill one of my rabbits, you did. I've got you on a lead. You have rabbit hide in your mouth. You better not have touched Mopsy, Flopsy and Bopsy. I'm going to attach you in that corner. I'll be honest, it's not looking good for me, rabbits. Well, <laughs> lesson learned. I'm heading to a monument to get sea lanterns. I'll first steal these ones around here. And then all of these. I've got 16. That should be enough for me. And this is my finished bridge. I don't know if it's going to stay like this forever, but for now, it will do. I'm now going to go on a 20,000 block journey to get some coral. And here we are at the coral reef. 
So I'm going to grab loads of coral, loads of sea pickles. And I should also bring back some fish too. I love the colours on this one. I don't know if there's many people that fill shulker boxes with buckets of fish. Here we have purple and yellow fish, red and green fish, puffer fish. <laughs> I should be careful with them. This is my last bucket. The shulker box is looking nice and full. Now, if I remember correctly, over in this direction, there is a jungle. And not just any jungle, a bamboo jungle. Also, guys, I've been working so hard to make 100 days videos every single week. So if you could help me to reach 2 million subs by pressing subscribe, I would appreciate it so, so much. It's not exactly where I remembered it to be, but I remember that portal, so it's definitely the same one. Really hoping to find some pandas here. As the French would say, finalement. I'm not even sure if that's right, but I can finally breed some pandas. I'm sorry, you kind of feel left out. Have some bamboo as well. Now this baby's going to do it. Somersault's very cool. That's just another one checked off my list. Since I'm still trying to get every single achievement. Oh, I think my elytra are broken, guys. It's a good job I've got a totem because I'm falling a long way. Thankfully, I've planned for emergencies like this. I'll just use more bottles of enchanting. There's nowhere like home sweet home. Now I can start adding all sorts of bits of coral. Looking decent so far, but now it's time for some bone meal. And as you can see, this adds a lot of seagrass. Now let's put sea pickles in the area. It definitely has that aquarium feel, but there's something missing. Yes, the coral fans. Okay, yes, I did need them. But I think more importantly, it's the fish that I'm missing. And I have to say, with these guys in, it is definitely coming more to life. I better not poison myself with puffer fish. But I'd definitely like to add some dolphins and some turtles. I've got some sad news. I don't know what's happened to him, but Sean Jr. is gone. I can only guess that he somehow tragically died. All right, dolphins, if you survive this journey, it really will be a miracle. But I think it's more efficient to try and carry two. Whoa, okay, uh, we lost one. He's, he's, he's going to survive, though. That was probably the greatest experience of your life, but let's be a little bit more careful. It'll have to be one at once. I keep losing the other one. Let's get you there. Now, I've not got long to drag you down here. I really hope you don't die in this time. But wait, I will destroy my house if it means you survive. Come on, that's it. Down the stairs. Oh no, you're drowning. Uh, get in the water. Okay, I think I was just fall damage actually. I'm panicking for no reason. Come on, come down these stairs. Uh, what is going on? I'm going down the wrong stairs anyway. You're right, it's this way. That's it. Get in the water. Swim your way down. Follow the water. Perfect, you've made it. Welcome. That was very stressful. And this dolphin shall be called Delfino. And this one can be called Daphne. I will also add turtles to this place. But I have to wait for this stupid egg to hatch first. Let's also put string along the top of here so it doesn't get covered in snow. You know, if I didn't like snow so much, I probably picked the wrong place to build my house. Also, since my mic cut off last episode, I didn't properly show you my tree farm. So the saplings go into this chest here. So I plant four of these and then bone meal it to grow it. And trust me, okay, you know what? The snow's probably getting in the way. Let's just see if it grows. There we go. I told you this snow is just a nuisance. And then we just keep bone mealing four saplings at a time. Don't usually get covered in leaves by it though. And once I've grown all the saplings I can, I go up this scaffolding. And from here I can fly to the top and start chopping wood. And from all that wood, I got a grand total of 10 stacks. And then as the leaves despawn, the saplings will fall into the water and filter into this chest. Now somewhere below me, there's an infected villager. I don't know where he is, but I can just always hear him when I'm here. He's in there. What are you? How long have you been stuck down? No, don't come out. Wait, do I cure you? I'll, I'll kill you. Just stay there. Swim back. No, no, okay, hold on. I think I just saved his life there. He would have burnt if I hadn't placed that. You'd be nice to him, all right? He's just a bit poorly. I have here a potion of weakness, some golden apples. Let's throw that at you. Yeah, we both got weakened there. You'll soon be as good as new. I like to look after my villagers. And on the plus side, that means his prices will go down. I somehow lost a lot of leads messing with those dolphins. So I feel like this is a good opportunity to make a load more. And now I could do with repairing some of my tools. So I'm going to give these guys a bunch of gold to trade. And while they do that, I can AFK at my pigment farm. And now I have all my levels back. Let's grab a load of gold. Two stacks isn't bad of blocks. These guys weren't mad, but I came back up and then <laughs> they spotted me and they're all angry again. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm very hopeful that if I wait here tonight, my turtle egg will hatch. It cracked. It, it, it cracked ever so slightly. I think that's all I'm going to get from it tonight. I don't know why you're all coming getting in this hole. That's it. Get out of here. <laughs> it's nice to see that you have now, uh, you're have now you now cured. Come on out. I'm glad we finally solved that mystery. What do you think you're doing? Get out of here. Um, guys... Where's my other dolphin gone? I'm a bit worried that something's happened to Daphne. But regardless of that, it's time I got these walls sorted. And I'm thinking I could do a border of blue ice with packed ice in the middle. To be honest, I think we need something darker than blue ice. I'm going to grab sand, gravel, and then craft concrete powder. That's how you do it. We got two stacks. And there's probably a faster way to do this, but this is how I'm going to turn it all into concrete. In fact, you could just hold left click and right click, and this is super, super fast. Yeah, I have to say, with the concrete, it's looking much better. I'm a little bit low on gravel, but there's one place where I keep loads and loads of it. And that is at the bartering farm. And I've also run out of packed ice but thankfully i know exactly where to find more and you can mine it extremely extremely fast and that should definitely be enough and now the walls are finished and finally the roof is finished because i had to build bridges that was much harder work and it made a bit of a mess with all the items but they'll soon despawn i'll be honest the roof looks a bit bland now i'm seeing it <laughs> i cannot be bothered to change it right now I'll, I'll do it later and do you guys know what time it is now it's turtle egg hatching time
And there we go. It cracked again. I feel like I'm always running out of coal. So I'm taking a shulker box, heading to the nether, and I'm going to fill up this entire shulker box with coal. And I might as well take out these wither skulls whilst I'm here too. I actually meant wither skeletons, but they do drop wither skulls. Now that is completely full, let's mine it up. Do a bit more taking out and also craft some torches. And now it's time to fly back home. Now I can light this place up so creepers stop spawning. It makes sense that the coal shulker box should go in the smelting room. This next bit might be a bit random, but I'm going to go looking for donkeys. I can literally find three villages altogether, but I can't find a donkey. This is starting to drive me crazy. I mean, look at all these horses. Why are none of you donkeys? Finally. Okay, th this is close enough. If I just keep feeding you loads of carrots. There we go. You've now grown. And then I can breed two donkeys together. Hold on a second. I've got to tame them first. And there we go. Now we can breed them. And we've got a baby donkey. And that's another one checked off my list. Sorry about this villagers, but I'm just going to steal some of your hay. And then I can breed these two llamas. I just realized I have to tame them first as well. Sorry about this villagers, but I need to steal two more hay bales. One for you, one for you, and sadly none for you. And now we have a baby llama. And now I need to track down two foxes and also grab some berries. Here we have one fox. Whoa, this wolf is trying to attack the fox. No, come on, guys. We can all be friendly. Um, ex excuse me, fox, but... What are you doing there? <laughs> you trying to jump in the snow or something? Whoa! What on earth is going on here? He broke the lead and then jumped about 60 million feet in the air. Come on, let's... Whoa! What are you doing? Stop it! Oh my goodness, he jumped so far. You need to leave those poor rabbits alone. It took a long time, but finally, I have made it home. Let's put you there. And if I go ahead and breed these two guys, there we go. And we now have a little baby fox. So let's get you on a lead as well. Although I think the baby fox trusts me. And that leaves just two types of animals left to breed. The mushrooms, which is going to be a bit weird since I named them after my friends. And also dogs. But right now, I'd like to get started on a brand new project. Which first involves drying some sponge in the nether. And getting a shulker box worth of gravel. In fact, made that one and a half shulker boxes. And then heading to a monument and I might regret beginning this project but I'm going to drain the entire thing which as you can imagine <laughs> might take some time but once I've completed that I can then build a guardian farm I have to say guys I really underestimated how much gravel I'd need this is what I've done so far and already I've run out thankfully these guys can give me plenty more of that and I can get more gold while I wait I use up two stacks of gold blocks and this is how much I got and I'm now going to keep placing gravel and bartering with piglings when I run out until I have completely finished this entire border this is going to take me a while. And after many, many, many hours, this border is almost finished. And there we go. <laughs> it's now done. I mean, this may not look like much, but it took so long to get all the gravel to place it all. Yeah, I'm taking a break from this. I reckon in the next episode, we completely drain it. But in this video, we should do something different. Also, I don't know what happened to my dolphins, but they've completely disappeared. And I don't know if Buddy's going to like this, but I think we need to go and get another dog, which means we're going to need some more bones. And no sooner have I headed into the forest... I think we found the perfect candidate. All right, little doggy. This ain't going to take too many bones. And there we go. We have another dog. Let's give you a magenta collar. Let's unsit you. And now we need to give her a name. So let's buy a name tag. And I wanted to come up with a name that also began with B. So I'm going to call her Brittany. Now we've got Buddy and Brittany. And if I breed them together, we've got a little baby dog. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. And so it begins. Once you get another dog, you end up with an army of dogs before you know it. All right, all of you. That's it. You all sit down. Give me names in the comments for this little guy here. Oh, girl, I'll let you guys decide. As you can see, I have one mob left that I need to breed. And that is the mushrooms, but... <laughs> It would just feel weird to breed Jack and Becky together. So instead, I have another plan. I nice to come to this mushroom biome and instead breed two out in the wild. And there we go. We got the achievement two by two. And now I've got to fly all the way back. Sadly, I did run out of firework rockets. So I'm now having to very painfully walk home. Uh, what do you know? A wandering trader with nothing particularly useful. Well, it's nice to finally be home. And considering I'm someone who has literally infinite gunpowder... I should probably make sure that never happens again. I've also completely run out of golden carrots, so I'm going to need to buy more of them. Might as well buy a load of enchantment bottles as well while I'm here. And if you ask me, that's a pretty good bit of restocking. Plenty of enchantment bottles as well. And now I think it's time I tackle the hardest achievement of them all. And that is, how did we get here? And for this achievement, I'm going to need to build a contraption. And this is the room that I should build this machine. I've now managed to build a nice little staircase. And I've also managed to build the walls. Now let's get this room ready. I have to say, this room really is coming together. Even if it is something that I'll probably only use once, and then I'll never go there again again. And in this area right here, the conduit is going to sit. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Why are we all outside my... 
Oh, this is going to take so much effort to fix. To be honest, it really didn't take that much effort at all. As it happens, we only have two Nautilus shells, so I'll just be stealing this conduit when I need it. I'm sure these guys won't mind me stealing more prismarine from here. This room is not going to be symmetrical, so I'm making the stairs three wide. I thought I could manage without changing it, but it's driving me crazy. That means I need to extend this black stone wall out a little bit and make this room a bit wider. It's time to go for a design of magma walls and a magma roof, and uh, this is where the conduit's going to sit. But let's next grab some glass and a bucket of water and start filling this up. That's now filled up. Let's put some glass along here and I have to say it doesn't look too bad I shall now steal this conduit if I then place it here break this block it activates perfect my next mission is to get a dolphin let's grab you got him down the stairs now come on swim into the water that's it this is your home I've got a name tag for you which is don't despawn because I really don't want you to despawn patch that up <laughs> mission accomplished I'm also going to change the beacon to be haste and regeneration that's just so I don't die while I'm doing it so to begin with we're going to have a couple of grindstones a wither rose here and a lever there so you'll see if I stand here I can actually get withered and this right here needs to be a sticky piston but it'll have to be a regular one for now and the idea will be that this will be an on off switch and then we have a block on here and this is where the display Dispenser will go. And another dispenser goes here, which is what will shoot the spectral arrow. With a bit of simple redstone, we've connected all of this up. And a couple of slabs here, trap doors around this, and in there is where the water will go. And also my dolphin has disappeared. I don't know how dolphins work in this game. And don't say it died in the magma because that could only be if it was the floor. We're also going to put a block there and then surround this area along here because we are going to be getting the shulker to land on this trap door. And as usual with shulkers, I'm not looking forward to this bit. Go on, matey. <laughs> it's been a while. Drop him down this hole nicely along this corridor. If I break the boat yeah he lands there and then before he managed oh my goodness as we're saying i just need to push that round there we go he's, he's trapped in keep pushing him along now come on don't know why my thorns isn't hurting him by the way it's not supposed to be like that let's just get him pushed up here come on you can do it surely he's so close break this turn it to a powered rail perfect place the torch Come on, this has got to work. Actually, if I can make him go backwards, and then if I can get him to come back this way, let's just get him. Come on, push. No, stop it. The armor is coming off. I honestly hate shulkers with a passion. That's it. Just move along now, please. He just makes it to the powered rail. Come on. All right, he's in. I'm also going to stick a roof over there so he can't see me. To make sure I didn't lose his health, I'm just going to give him some more as well. <laughs> and I hurt him at the same time. Let's just give him the instant health. Let's get out of here now. And now that the sun is going down, I need to head to a swamp so that I can get lots of slime. Now I can make a sticky piston, place it right here. And now we have an on-off switch. Next, I'm going to grab some glowstone dust and make some spectral arrows. And they belong in this dispenser. And next, I must search for a very particular flower. And there it is, the Azure Blue A. Well, I never, at some point, the old turtle egg has hatched. Finally, I can expand my empire. I don't know why they're not laying eggs. You were literally born right on this block. I I'll deal with you later. No need to panic. They're now laying some eggs. And now I can wait six million years for that to hatch and now i need to grab a few red mushrooms and when i craft this suspicious stew you'll see if i eat it it gives me blindness which is one of the effects let's also grab a puffer fish i've got my notch apple now it's time to do a lot of brewing i'm pretty sure i've now brewed every potion which just means i now have to turn them into splash potions and i'm gonna put the strength to one side in here and all the rest can go in the dispenser since there's only nine slots let's break this again so it's ready for the dolphin now comes the pressure part i think i'm as ready as i'm ever gonna be so i need to take out a pillager captain and then i'm going to start a raid and they've all spawned underground what an annoyance ah they're just up here let's get them on down all right Fellas, nice of you to drop by. What on earth are you doing down here? You're stuck in the spider spawn of you. Oh, no, cave spawn. Boy, who am I kidding? I've got full prop four armor if, if I wear it anyway. <laughs> I've got nothing to worry about. Let's just get rid of you and get on with the next wave. This time it looks a lot more promising. I think this might be the final wave, to be honest, guys. And uh, it's going pretty well. Gotta get rid of that guy on top. Of okay, well, we got rid of the Ravagers, so that'll get rid of the other guy now. Whoa, half a heart. <laughs> We're all right, I think. We <laughs> we've got this guy chasing me. Should I just eat this... Uh this carrot. Yeah, we'll be fine. And ladies and gentlemen, we have got Hero of the Village. Now I need to fly and get Bad Omen again. And you, sir, are the one that I'm looking for. Now I need to make sure I don't start another raid. But instead, I must head to an ocean monument. And it has to be one that actually has Elder Guardians. Here we have a monument. And here we have an Elder Guardian. Come on, give me the minor fatigue. There we go, we got it. Also need to grab a dolphin on the way back. Always find it funny to see them just flying in the air behind me. I lost a dolphin, but I just realized I need a way to get it in my house. I've just started a raid. I, I was going to get some milk and this is going very wrong. Just as well that I started another raid since if I was going to drink milk, I'd lose all my effects. Oh, the totem's coming into play there. <laughs> Two ravages on me kind of uh, caused some trouble. Thankfully, I've got loads more totems. And we did it. And that is the end of the raid. Okay, <laughs> take two. This time with more space in my doorway. Okay, I nearly just killed myself again. <laughs> I need to stop going through these totems. I've got another dolphin. I don't know where my hero of the village has gone, but hopefully it comes back when I get back home. 
Because my hero of the village glitched, I had to do everything again. I've done it though. I have to land this guy in the water. There we go. I feel like I've done this a thousand times at this point. I've got mining fatigue for two minutes. I just need to get a little hungrier before I start. I'm definitely hungry enough now. I'm only going to get one shot at this. And the dolphins disappeared. Are you kidding me? Two hours later. I've made it back. This time the dolphin's staying on the lead and it can go in the water there. Let's go. Let's just do this, okay? Um, already I've, I've messed up. Oh my god. <laughs> right, we need to get under here. Right, if we swim... Okay, and then I need to just splash this, turn that on, eat some stuff. Okay, come on, this has to work, please. I'm so close. Yes, furious cocktail. One more thing. How did we get here? We did it. Yes, we actually did it. I don't know where the dolphin is. It's gone completely invisible, as has the sugar as well. Might as well block this up. And I have a lot of effects, and I think I'm going to drink this milk to get rid of them all. There we go. Much better. Let's patch up my doorway and put the door back on. I can get some sleep. And with that, we have done every single achievement except for one super annoying one, getting a gas to the overworld. And now I think I deserve some time chilling at the XP farm, repairing all my items. From that, I've got plenty of levels and plenty of gold, which I'm going to barter with the these guys. And that's now all filtering into the chests. I'm going to take all this string home. All of that can go into there. I'm going to grab some obsidian, a flint and steel, a little bit more obsidian. And this time I plan to be successful with the final quest. Found a gas. It's by a portal that I tried to do this with before. Now if I can just fish in midair, which, I, I, well, we've done it. I'll use another firework rocket so it didn't work. Let's, oh, okay. I've hooked him. Now I've just got to get him to float down. Come on. You are so close to this. Are you kidding me? So the strat is to fly through him, hook him like that. And then pull him down and we've got to get him through this portal. Come on. This has got to be it. How does he go through every time? Look at that. He just floated straight through there. I need, I need to do some research. One of the reasons is that I haven't been through the nether portal yet. So I'm going to test that out. Now that I've loaded the chunks, let's see if it makes a difference. It died. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. And my fishing rod is broken. Are you kidding me? I've now got four more fishing rods. I'm ready to do this. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Go through. We've got to get you. I got it through. Yes. Come on. Now I've just got to kill it when it comes through. I don't know where it's gone. I, it might have died. But hey, progress is progress. Come on, Gaff. Go through. Go through. Don't die. Just go through. Oh, please. Come on. Yes, we got it through. Please. <laughs> please. Just let's, let's just get it. Let's just get it on the other side. Where is it? There it is. I'm sorry about this, Gaff, but... Oh my goodness. That was such... A, that was insanely hard. And with that, I have now completed every single achievement in the game. <laughs> and I made a bit of a mess around here with all these ghasts. Next, I think it's time I built something long overdue. And that is some sort of pathway from my house to the village. I've now built somewhat of a bridge over... It, it, it needs a bit of decoration on it, but it's it's the general structure. I reckon stone brick walls are the way to go for this. And we can put them underneath as, like, extra support. And then I'd like to try out trap doors along the sides. It gives it a little bit more decoration, doesn't it? Along here, I'm just adding all sorts of little light stands. What I will do is put lanterns underneath. Let's buy some lanterns from this guy. And then add them all along here. There we go. Alrighty. It's, it's, it's starting to come together. I think we can all agree I'm not the best bridge builder in the world. And the fact that the trapdoors are only on some of them due to the whole half slab thing doesn't exactly help, but <laughs> it'll have to do. Now, you remember that earlier I had an issue with not having any slime. And I decided the best way to sort that issue is to build a slime farm. And the good thing is, thanks to the withers blowing everything up, I don't really need to mine out too much of an area because... A lot of it's already been done. First thing I'd like to do is make this into a water tunnel. So I need soul sand, magma, and kelp. And probably some extra water as well. Let's begin by putting water here and water here. At the bottom, we're going to add soul sand and magma. I can put trap doors in these corners to block up the leakages. And all we need now is a load of kelp. And the same has been done on this side. Break that. Put the magma so we can now go up and down very, very easily. Let's change this beacon back to haste 2. Here is my little thing that I've built. And if we just go around here... Diamonds waiting. I mean, I don't really need any more diamonds, but it's better than nothing. And now it's time to get digging. There are a lot of mobs spawning in this hole that I'm digging. So I'm going to grab a bunch of glowstone and use it to light the area up a little bit. I'm very glad to say it is at least working. So it spawned in over here, which means this must be a slime chunk. I haven't even fully dug out this chunk yet. So if we just break a little bit more, it does seem to be working nicely. It's not going to get me tons and tons of slime, but it's way better than having to travel 5,000 blocks to go to a swamp. 27 balls from one slime, that's not bad. If I wanted to make a super efficient one, I'd need to find a slime chunk under an ocean. But I've got three stacks. That should be enough for now. Let's now head to the nether, collect some gunpowder, and start making TNT. This makes me realize that I need way more sand. So that means it's time for a trip to the desert to get mining for sand. I filled up over three shulker boxes. That should be 
be enough. And I'm leaving you guys alone. Now I can definitely craft loads of TNT. I'm armed with all my TNT here. Time to find that ancient debris. And already I've found my first piece of ancient debris. And there's another three right here. This is my seventh piece of ancient debris already. I don't think there's any more here. I'm going to take out all the TNT, drink this potion of swiftness, and get ready to blow up all these tunnels. I don't know what's going on here, but there's like three pigmen in my tunnel. Four pigmen, yeah. I would get away from that TNT, guys. I can already hear it blowing up as well. <laughs> the chain reaction has been set off. I better just, uh, just slightly get out of the way here. All right, well, things are looking good. We've, we've already found a bit of ancient debris right here. Let me grab that. I think that's the only one in the area. Yep, yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see what else the tunnel has when we finish lacing it with TNT. And that is now every single piece of TNT. Let's light it up and see what we can find. To be honest, doing this makes ancient debris not seem very rare at all. And this is piece number 25. And this is piece 36, which gives me an entire netherite block. Isn't it beautiful? When you turn a corner, you see that, you see that. Oh, it's lovely. And I now have an entire stack of ancient debris. Another one that... Wait, there was four together here. That's crazy. Wait, how many is here? Never seen four pieces this close together before. And the end of the tunnel has been reached with a grand total of 92 ancient debris. Well, I've got fire resistance. I can also use this trick to kind of slightly look through the lab. Although I'm going to start burning now, but... You can kind of see if you can spot any... Any ancient debris, although we, we might be a bit high for that. Anyway, I, I've got to make sure I don't uh, <laughs> I don't die here. Thankfully, with eating, it's, uh, it's pretty OP. Let's just, I guess, swim our way out and keep eating. Now, let's put my elytra on, and then I can head home. Stumbled across this bastion on my way back as well. Might as well grab the free gold. It always feels so sad that when you smell all this ancient debris and turn it into blocks, it literally turns out to be the equivalent of, like, three blocks. Let's make all the ingots. Let's make the blocks. <laughs> we can make two more blocks. But we're not far at all from making a third one. Slow and steady wins the race, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I appear to have lost the shulker box that has all my tools. And there's only one place that I can think where it might be. Yep, being the idiot that I am, I left it by this massive portal. Don't want to lose that. It has a lot of good things in it. And it's another free ender chest. And if I grab a load more obsidian and make a bunch of eyes of ender, then I can make even more ender chests, which I don't have any use for. But I always like to have a few spares. This egg still hasn't hatched, but we can go ahead and breed these turtles again. I'm going to move this egg, I think, because I feel like you want to lay another egg right there. So, you know, do your thing, turtle. There we go. It's finally doing some digging. And this time it laid two eggs. And now this is a big brain move. And don't do this unless you have silk touch. But if I add another egg, they will now all hatch at the exact same time. At least I'm pretty sure that's the case. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. You know, ever since I added the lamppost, this pathway has really grown on me. I quite like it. The next thing I'd like to do is find a guy that would trade me a bell. Which means I need either a toolsmith, a weaponsmith, or an armorer. I need four pieces of wood, so I'm just going to steal this guy's house. I'm sure he won't mind. And then we need a villager that hasn't got a job, but... <laughs> Pretty much all of them have, which can only mean one thing. We need more villagers. Let's just give them all loads of bread and hopefully very soon we have loads more villagers. Very handy for you to all congregate at this very spot for me. What's on it? How did you get in here? You are way too big to fit through this door. <laughs> feel like we need to make you a bigger house. I'm just going to leave him to it. There you go. There's more bread. Somebody use this smithing table as their job site block ASAP, please. Let's also gather up extra honey whilst I can. And that's going to let me make another honey block. Still not entirely sure what use I have for these, though. I put both the ones that I have in this chest here. Well, this baby village is about now, so it looks like it's working. I'd also like to set up another beacon. And that is a beacon right next to the raid farm. The beacon isn't super necessary for it to work. And if I place it down and... Okay, I accidentally built it underneath a block. As I was saying, if I place it down and then add an ingot and turn it to strength two, and that means that when these guys drop down, it's even less likely that something could go wrong and I hit them but don't kill them and then they summon vexes. Because we all know what could happen if you let vexes spawn in a hardcore world. I've also got another plan. I'm going to get rid of all of these lecterns and then this guy's gonna wander over here and then take up his new job and we can just buy loads of these useless stone axes to keep him happy and then I can buy a couple of bells from him. And when I place these all back down, the rest of the villagers will have no clue it. Look at him, he's offering a poppy. Is that for me? You are a very nice man. And then I can put these bells on my house. So I reckon I have those two there, and then maybe two on the other side as well. And since they have no emeralds left, it's time to get to business. Man, six sticks for an emerald. I tell you, these guys are starting to get expensive again. I guess they soon forget what happens when they put the prices up to me. But regardless, I can afford two more bells. And they can go right there. Just a nice little touch, and if somebody comes... They can just ring the bell. Turns out I've been murdering a lot of dolphins. As you guys have informed me that dolphins need air to breathe. I must have killed about four dolphins last episode. Oh well, <laughs> we all make mistakes. But this should now be a much safer place. Let's buy a few name tags from this guy. Grab a bunch of leads. Let's grab this dolphin. And hopefully I will never murder a dolphin again. A few moments later. Are you kidding me? As I was saying, hopefully I don't murder any more dolphins. And welcome Grace to your new home. Let's name tag you as well. Now, in theory, you should never die again. Look at that. You can get air. 
If she disappears now, then I have no idea what to do. And here we have the unhatchable turtle eggs. Might as well breed some more. And now we have two more eggs that can hatch. This place will be thriving in 6,000 years when they eventually crack. I'm also going to slightly change the redstone of this farm. So instead of redstone next to the pistons, and then blocks along the top. And that's just a way to make it a bit more efficient. It looks like this is completely overflowed with iron. But I think it'd be a good idea to turn it all into blocks. And then I can plant saplings and keep bone meal in them. And then get lots and lots of wood. Wow, that is a lot of wood. Now I can craft lots of chests. And from that, lots of hoppers. And next I'm going to start digging a tunnel. Which thanks to haste is very, very fast. And now this tunnel completely connects to my house. So I'm just going to have hoppers coming all the way along here. And now this is all connected up. Let's block that back up. And that is a job well done. And then right here, some chests can be placed and it's working. <laughs> The items are filtering through. And we have here enough space for 10 double chests. All I need to do now is to make some ladders. I randomly discovered this chest plate in a chest. And you know what? <laughs> That's been thrown away. Gotta remember, guys. Diamond armor is for peasants. And my dolphin is still alive. <laughs> that is a miracle. Now, the next thing I'd like to get is another conduit because I no longer have one in here. And that's because I put it down here so I could get the conduit effect. So I could swim around killing drowns like a peasant. Or I could just chill at the top of my drowned farm and get them that way. A few days have passed. Let's see how many we've got. Somehow a few creepers have been spawning as well. Might as well take them out. But well, this is the main attraction. All these drowns. Whilst I'm here, I'm also going to make some trap doors and place them along the top of here so that I can get all the XP. And from all of that, we got one Nautilus shell. <laughs> this is going really well. I know that it is possible to get them through fishing, but I don't want to put you guys through that. There's a very easy way to get wither roses, which involves killing a load of chickens. But I feel bad killing all those chickens, so I'm going to do it a different way. So to start off with, I'm going to need to gather up a load of materials. I have here all the items I need, except for two more wither skulls, and I also need eggs. I'm not killing any chickens, but <laughs> we need some bait. Also, what the heck are you guys doing on top of this map? What is this? Some sort of secret me You guys, just get down from there. Come on. That's it. Why do I feel like someone's going to die from this? Yep, yeah, he died. Um, the, uh, the one lived, one died. <laughs> My bad. Unfortunately, eggs are a pretty difficult thing to get. This guy's already laid one very nicely, but... <laughs> Just gonna have to wait. Apparently they lay an egg every five to ten minutes. <laughs> I'm not waiting for another one. If I just fly near to every chicken I see, apparently they've got an egg waiting for me. Look at this. Yeah, a third one. <laughs> one over here that you just laid. Brilliant. This is working amazingly. In an ingenious move, I have gathered up a load of chickens. Now we can just put them into a hole and the eggs will soon be rolling in. Else, there's literally millions of chickens in this area. This spot right here will forever be known as the whole of chickens. And already we're up to 10 eggs. I now have 16 eggs. Let's get out of here. I now have all the needed items except for one thing. And that is wither skulls. Quite a few skeletons have been taken out. Let's have a look how many wither skulls. We've got six. Well, we only need two more, so we can leave those ones there. And with that, we have all the items that we need. Look what I've just flown past, guys. <laughs> That brings back bad memories. And now we can head through this portal to the stronghold. Because the only way to build this farm is in the end. I was looking for a good end gateway portal. I have found one to do it. And I've also found an end city. So, <laughs> it's pretty cool. The only useful thing worth taking is probably the elytra. And to be honest, that end gateway is probably too near to the end city. So, it just caused me problems. After a bit of searching, I have found a gateway in the perfect spot. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some dirt along the top here. And some more along the bottom. Place a mushroom here. And we're going to basically destroy the portal bit when this mushroom eventually grows. There we go. It eventually grew. I was starting to worry that it, it, it wouldn't. I only had 12 bone meal left. But now we get rid of all this. We can see that the portal block has gone. And we're building a spot right here, which is where the chicken will live. Now, at least one of these 16 eggs has to be a chicken. All right. Already we've used a lot up and... There we go. We got one. Can we get him a buddy? A little friend? No, it, it's just you on your own, mate. And I'd like to give him a name, so we're going to name him How Am I Alive? Because the poor fella is going to have a wither shooting at him. And on this side, we're going to build a giant pipe that goes up 44 blocks. What do you reckon? Can I land this MLG, guys? Yes, I can. Also, guys, you may have noticed, but we are getting so, so close to 2 million subscribers. So please, 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 if you enjoy my videos, press the subscribe button. And now we can build the Enderman spawning platform. And now I get the very fun job of filling in all of these blocks. And now this platform is completed. We're going to come over here, add a shape like this, and mine out these bottom blocks. And we're basically creating the place that the Endermite is going to go. So double carpet on top of here to stop Enderman spawning. And then we can place a rail and start trying to spawn in an Endermite. And eventually, okay, we managed to get one. Let's, okay, I don't want him to die. Hold on, hold on. Uh, let's fly out of here, SP. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want him to die. A lot of mobs have died because of my thorns. But now I can place a minecart and move it. There we go. He's in there. Perfect. And all this round here can now be broken. I quite like the way that he's just balancing off that, that little iron bar. And a trapdoor is going to go there and finally there. And now from here, I'm going to build up 84 blocks, which is thankfully very easy with scaffolding. And then I can climb my way to the top and build a nice little glass platform. And just look at all the endermen getting angry and falling down. And this part is very satisfying. I can break all the scaffolding and... <laughs> 
Just look at it disappear. Next, I'm going to add some carpet on top of this bedrock to stop Enderman spawning. And I'm also going to make my storage system a little bit bigger. That looks like a storage system to be proud of. We're also going to put another enchantment table right there and block that in. And under the bedrock, we're going to place that with a wall underneath. And now comes the part that is kind of exciting, but also kind of terrifying. I need to place these three wither skulls. And then before the explosion happens, okay, I need to place water right there. Okay, we're all right. Um, hopefully this explosion doesn't now kill me, but it should be okay. There we go, the explosion's happened. All right, now I've got to get rid of that water. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? I'm down to one heart. All the endermen were chasing after me. I, I don't know why, maybe because I spawned the wither. Let's once again try and get rid of this water. There we go, we got it. And now if we break this block right here, it's gonna try and start shooting the chickens and it's gonna be taking out the endermen. Although something has gone wrong because my enchantment table and hopper has disappeared. Should be a hopper right there. Because at the moment the endermen are dying when they land, but instead they need an enchantment table to land on. Oh, hold on, never mind. It did drop. Okay, we're back in business. Enchantment table there, netherrack there. I'm pretty sure it should be working now. It's so funny watching loads and loads of endermen spawn and then all fall down. And the endermen are getting taken out and with the roses are going in. And it's also free ender pearls. And now I can head to the top chill up here and get loads and loads of wither roses. It's been quite some time. Let's see how much we've got. Are you ready for this, guys? This is way more stuff than I thought we were going to get. Oh my goodness, we have loads of wither roses. Might as well get fill in a shulker box. And whilst this has given me loads of ender pearls, I might as well leave them here because I don't really have a use for them. And next I can show you the use for all these wither roses. And that is to instead change these to be netherrack and then place wither roses along here so that only wither skeletons can spawn in the wither skeleton farm. It'll just make it more efficient since it'll stop blaze and and pigment from spawning. And now you can probably see why I needed so many wither roses, but it is now done. If I go ahead and swoop down here, almost just landed in lava, it should now make this wither skeleton farm even more efficient. And now they really are starting to fall quite fast. It's also an excellent way to get blaze rods. And I might as well bring all these wither skeleton skulls back home. Since this sugarcane farm is a little bit too slow for my liking, we're going to make a few changes to the design. Well, actually, all I'm going to do is just make it a bit bigger. Now, unfortunately, wanting to extend this, we are going to clash a little bit with the turtle enclosure, so you guys sit tight. Things are just going to get a little bit messy. Probably going to be safer if I actually move these eggs. We'll just move them to there. Nothing will go wrong. And this is why building with sand is extremely annoying. These poor, poor turtles. What a mess this has made. Thankfully, there was always glowstone under any carpet, so we didn't break any of those. Now, it's probably a good idea for me to head to the nether. Then I can go to my bartering farm and grab a load of quartz. And I think with all that, I've got five stacks. That should be enough. And as a bonus point, I've actually got six stacks. I just can't actually count that high. Are you kidding me? Why is a creeper spawned down here? Of all places, okay? If he blows up, I, <laughs> it would have been a disaster. So because I want to be able to come down here and see the minecart, but I also want water up here, my plan is to place slabs along here so I can still go underneath and look by crouching, but the water won't flow down and make a mess down there. Didn't realize this was going to happen. We've actually dug out into the cave. I'm going to have to make a bit of a border here before the spiders get me. And now I've finished doing these walls, I'm going to add some water along the bottom of here. And I'll have all the required materials to fully upgrade this farm. Finally, we're going to add pistons along here, plant more sugarcane, add in a glass wall to stop the sugarcane, and finally, I can extend the minecart system. And it is now complete. Hopefully it gets me sugarcane much, much faster. And next, I'm going to grab some sponge, lots and lots of gravel, and then I can continue my project of draining an entire ocean monument. So my plan is to corner off areas like this, and then to place sponge around to drain it all out. But it have to be kind of quick if the area is big. Maybe if I just go like this, it'll work. Note to self, make the area smaller next time you do this. And the best way for me to dry the sponge is to build a portal to the nether. And somehow I've ended up in my own drowned farm. That's not exactly ideal, but all we have to do now is just keep placing these. And if we do something like this, we'll just keep drying them fast. I think it's in my best interest to make this section a little less wide. Hopefully this now makes things a lot easier. Yeah, I would say so. This has definitely helped. And there we have it. The first section has been drained. Now I'd better get to work on draining the rest of this monument. It could take a while. One eternity later. This is a way bigger project than I thought it was going to be. I have spent hours and hours, <laughs> and this is as much as I've managed to drain. I've still got all of this to go. So I'm going to spend the rest of today placing gravel, and then I'm going to spend my time doing something else. I think I'm going to add something to this village, and that's going to be an automatic carrot and potato farm. And I think in order to build it, I'm going to need a little bit more glass, which means I'm heading to the desert. And my plan is to completely fill both of these shulker boxes with sand. I have now filled up both of these shulker boxes and filled my inventory as well. Do you mind interrupting me, stupid skeleton? I will save a lot of this sand to make TNT, which will then be used to go hunting for netherite. So I've already put the walls down for where I'm going to build it. As you can see, there is a tree in the way. And I could probably do with getting some dirt and filling in these holes. I'm also going to grab some iron from my supply down here and then craft more iron blocks. And I'm thinking that it could be a good idea to put iron under 
underneath the glass. This area is looking a lot nicer now. I'm going to add glowstone under the water holes here. So there's also going to be some around here. And this is just to make sure that the water doesn't freeze. Just the problems of living in a snowy biome. And I can fill all of these in with water and put carpet on top of those. And then finally a composter in the middle. And here we're going to add the glowstone. I'm going to place a bed. This is this was my bed, but now it's part of the build. And we'll put iron blocks on top of that. Let's place a rail right here with a hopper minecart there. Then we can break the rail. Just realize I need to place a hopper here first. And when we break this, they're on top of each other. We'll put a trapdoor on top of that. And right here, we're going to put an area for where a villager is going to be. And <laughs> no, it's not going to be you. Well, if he really wants to go in there, well, now you're trapped. Since these villagers are already raring to go, let's get till in the ground. And this has made me realize that I don't have any normal carrots anywhere. Looks like we're going on a journey to find some. Here's something interesting I've discovered. Fairly near my house, there is actually a swamp hut. Shipwrecks may be a good place to find carrots, but <laughs> everything but basically. Searched a few shipwrecks and no joy. However... This village surely has some carrots. Come on, farmer, don't let me down. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, you can have these seeds. They're no use to me. And look at this, a shipwreck, like, half lodged into the village. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. What is this? And what does it have in the chest? Potatoes, well, we don't really need those. But I'm very pleased to say there's a few more carrots. I think the best option for me to get more carrots is just to keep bone mealing them and getting loads and loads. And there we go. This entire place is now filled with carrots. I'm also going to dig a tunnel that goes down here. And I'm going to have chests under the hoppers and it's all going to feed nicely down here. I think I'm going to make this entire place to be iron blocks. And so this will be the chest room. And I'm actually curious to see if this villager will go to that job site block over there. Looks like the answer is no. So instead, we're going to make him into a shepherd since I don't have a villager with that job just yet. Are you kidding me? A random different villager has come over and taken... What is this all about? You know, let's test something. Let's see. Do, do, do you want to be in here? Do you want to be a farmer? You know, we can make you into a farmer, good sir. That's not a problem. That's it. You stay over there now. You are now officially a farmer. In fact, let's lock him in. If I give him a single emerald. There we go. You're a farmer for life now. Now I've just got to redo this bit. And there we go. Good as new. Oh my goodness. You've walked in here now as well. Now there's, there's just too many villagers here. You can go in a boat. You can go in a boat. Okay. You could just get out of here. No, you want to be in here as well. That's just causing more complications, but we'll deal with it. Somehow I've got this to work. This guy is working away. If I now put this here, okay, he's not going to move that. That's all sorted. This guy's farming. Okay, let's uh, let's trade with you. Let's look. You need wool to look. Why did I pick that trade of all of them? Change your plan, good sir, because I cannot be bothered to get all that wool. You are instead going to have a smithing table here. Oh my goodness. I don't know where you came from, but you've taken it. I'm having to surround him in smithing tables, but he's finally accepted that. I'm gonna buy a stone hoe, which is, is pretty useless. Let's chuck it over there. Alrighty, we can now get rid of these because they kind of look a little bit in the way. So now, in theory, and, and I mean in theory, this should be finished and should work. I'm also completely out of firework rockets. So this is a good opportunity to see how the new and improved sugarcane farm is doing. A couple of stacks, I'm happy with that. I now have a load more firework rockets. Look at this, guys. It's in action. They're talking to each other. Go on, farmer, just do it. Throw him some carrots. Give them to him. Oh my goodness, what just... Are you kidding? I'm sorry, villager. What a disaster. Why did that create... I was my... What just happened? Let's just push another villager in there. Hey, <laughs> you're trapped forever now. Let's repair the fence. And now I just need to fill in all of this. There we go. I just caught it in action. I caught him throwing some carrots to that guy, but... <laughs> they never got to him. Look at him filtering through. Loads and loads. 26, 27. Brilliant. This farmer trying to be helpful. But little does he know, he's just given me 69 carrots. And great news. Grace the dolphin is still alive and well. So my plan with these carrots is to put them in this chest and then use my gold from my gold farm to craft lots and lots of golden carrots. And now that the food situation is sorted, I can start another project, which involves grabbing a few stacks of logs, turning them all into chests, getting a bucket of lava, and heading to the nether. Because I'm currently having a few problems with this machine clogging up. And if any of these chests overflow, then it breaks the whole storage system. So I'm just going to extend it so they have three double chests so that they've got more room to fill up. And I think the best way to do that is drink fire resistance and then place lava so that I can swim downwards. And don't worry, I've got loads of nether bricks right here. I just realized it's a little bit tedious, but I can kind of build this by just looking through the cracks of the chests. It's the tiniest of gaps, but look at that. I can just about place hoppers next to these chests. Ends up getting a little carried away and I've added six double chests per one. So they're definitely not overflowing anymore. And I can just add a nice nether brick border around the outside. I'm going to spend a bit more time getting more wood. And now with lots of extra wood, let's make lots of extra chests. I think I want to get a full shulker box worth of wood, but I need to do a little bit more mining for that. Might as well take these carrots as well. Now I'm going to spend a bit of time doing redstone because I'd like to sort the bottles to be separate from everything else using a brewing stand. So this is where I've currently got to. It will all work perfectly. It will sort the bottles into there. All I need to do now is make some system that waits 20 seconds 
before activating this redstone torch. Because my plan is to turn all the three minute fire resistance potions instantly into eight minute ones by uh, having redstone in here that goes into this brewing stand. I can either place a hundred repeaters or I can try and make a hopper clock. So that's what I'm going to do. I know this might sound crazy, but I think I have successfully done it. I suppose all that's left to do now is to test it out with a potion of fire resistance and see what happens. Uh, I don't know if this is this has exactly worked. <laughs> It didn't work. After doing a bit of testing, I believe this piston here needs to be a sticky one. So let's now test it out. That goes into there. Let's see if it goes into the brewing stand. It appears to be brewing right now. This piston did extend. As you can see, these are counting down. So as soon as that has counted down, the redstone block should go backwards. It's gone over there. That's finished brewing. Did it turn off the thing or did it not reach? It didn't reach. Okay, so there needs to be a repeater there. And now it's reached. That has gone out and into this hopper. We have an eight minute fire resistance potion. And this all retracted. I'm pretty sure this piston is actually completely pointless, but I'm, I'm gonna leave it there anyway because it, it's not doing any harm. And I wanna get some gold so that I can test out the bartering. And now all this gold can be traded to the pigmen. Had to make a few adjustments, but it does seem now that it is working as intended. And now I'm gonna spend a bit of time AFKing for gunpowder. Quite a lot of time has passed. Let's get these creepers and collect all the gunpowder. And I have got plenty and plenty of gunpowder now. I can use that later to get ancient debris. And the next machine I'd like to make is a nether star machine and this is something that will let me get lots of nether stars very quickly although before I do that I'm going to go and get some more shulker shells because I only have like one left and although I have loads and loads of shulker boxes they all seem to be in use as well and just whilst I'm here I'm going to grab some extra redstone since I put all of mine into the bartering farm thankfully redstone is one of the easiest things to find and now I have over two stacks that should be enough for me and look at this on the way back I've found some diamonds and a little extra redstone that can all safely go into there and for now I'll chuck the cobblestone in there as well because that's going to be good for observers I think I'm now ready for the end and now i have the fun task of trying to find a new end city there is one over there but i don't know if i've been to it but <laughs> based on that bridge i'm gonna guess i have end city spotted and this one is completely untouched and there's my first shulker shell i'm not gonna bother taking the loot or the elytra because <laughs> i've already got plenty and look at that another end city is over there well progress is going nicely i've taken out loads of shulkers i mean how many have we got now 14 that's really good and i think once i've taken out all these guys i'm heading back to the overworld and this is a very easy way to get more ender chests i would like to visit that end city sometime but i don't want to waste loads and loads of time in the end let's crack on with other stuff now let's make a couple more shulker boxes then i can start collecting resources for the next build and i have all the resources for this the only thing i need is 25 minecarts and my iron farm has been working nicely in the background but i did end up using all my iron on this build so i can either steal some from here or take the easier option and steal it from a beacon now i can craft all of the minecarts chuck them in a shulker box and then i can get building in the end and now i've got to dig out a massive area below the end portal it may not look like that big of a room but <laughs> it, look how much end stone it is this took a while to uh, to chisel out this shall now be known as the end stone chest i've just realized i also need to mine out this layer as well now that i've mined out that layer i've got to fill in this roof which unfortunately also means mining away this chest so <laughs> gotta put them all back in now and now i can finally start building this and now i can grab all of these mine carts and add them here and this is going to be what damages the wither and now i can remove the rail and they're all sitting there ready and now we can add the part that will summon the wither i have to say the redstone's really starting to come together and now the farm is completely finished i just need to go and get wither skulls and soul sand and the best place for me to get soul sand is my bartering farm and the skulls can be gathered at the wither skeleton farm this farm is starting to overflow with bones so i think i'm going to turn them all into bone blocks when i started converting them all into bone blocks i didn't think i'd be completely overrun with them and from my afk time i also got 33 wither skulls and so now i put my wither skulls into these dispensers fill this chest with soul sand and if i place four pieces of soul sand press this button to activate the machine and spawn in the first wither as you can see it's giving me four pieces of soul sand again and we should be moving back and forth and if i just hold right click the whole time it's going to keep spawning in new withers whenever one dies as you can see this wither is dying extremely extremely fast and there we go that one's been taken down and another one's been spawned and it's automatically placed the soul sand for me as well. If I press F3T whilst holding right click, now it'll do it for me completely hands free. And now all the wither skulls have been used up. We can turn that off and collect my 11 nether stars. Let's dye this shulker box white and put all these bones in the bone barrel. The spare nether stars can go into this shulker box. And I've got a bunch of redstone items and I want to head back to the wither skull farm. I'd like to create a system that disposes of all the bones and also of all these swords. So I think the best way to do this is have the hoppers all funnel into this chest so both the bones and the swords are there now this is going to get a little bit messy but i'm going to break all of these and then uh, 
Probably took a load of these swords into the lava. And now if I drink some fire resistance, I can place a dispenser facing downwards. So that will fire items into the lava. And then this little circuit here will detect if there's something in and keep dispensing things out. And as you can see, all the bones are disappearing. I can put the swords in there as well and they'll also disappear. And now I don't really have to worry about anything overflowing other than possibly the coal, but that's really easy to turn into coal blocks. I'm now very happy with that. Let's head back home. And now I think it's time to get more ancient debris for this beacon. So I'm going to wait up here a bit and get more gunpowder. Enough time has passed. Let's go and collect the gunpowder. And on my way, I'm also going to remember to bring sand. And now all these creepers are ready to be taken out. And now with all this gunpowder, I can start crafting the TNT. And now I'm going to need to go and get a load more sand because I've run out, but still have lots of gunpowder remaining. Time to destroy more of this desert. And I have now filled up four entire shulker boxes. And then I can get back to crafting TNT. And that is almost two shulker boxes full of TNT. And now I can begin the hunt for ancient debris. And as I blow up the TNT, it's pretty easy to find. It took me quite some time, but I've blown up the last of the TNT, I'm going to see how much ancient debris is left. Never mind, I've been scammed. This TNT that hasn't blown up. But I'll grab this ancient debris first. Also, guys, make sure to ring the bell. I don't know if many people have ring the bell on my channel, but then you get notifications and you won't miss 900 days, which is coming out next Saturday. And here is the final piece of ancient debris, which gives me a grand total of just under three stacks. That's not half bad, if you ask me. Oh, look at that. Just on my way back. <laughs> Stumbled across a bit more ancient debris. Also, whilst I've got the F3 open, for those of you that doubt whether I actually do the days legitimately, you can see there on the left that it does indeed say day 797. And now I desperately need to repair my pickaxe. So I will do that at the gold farm. Now I have a plan for all this ancient debris. I'm going to place it down and make an ancient debris beacon, which I will one day turn into a netherite beacon when I get enough ancient debris. But whilst I wait to reach that point, it'll be nice to have something here instead. Can't believe I've managed to get 14 blocks of netherite. That is quite a crazy amount still. And I might as well hide these extra five pieces under underneath because they're just going to look out of place. There we go. This is my uh, ancient debris beacon. And if I take one of these beacons out of this shulker box, I can place it on top and it will activate. And next I should head to my brewing room, grab a load of string, then I can cover this so that snow doesn't get in the way of it. The rest of this ancient debris can be smelted. And thankfully, I've got loads of coal because these furnaces need filling up again. Since I do still have quite a lot of gravel left, I'm going to head over to the monument and start placing more. I'm going to need way more than a thousand days to finish this project, aren't I? And I've also got to finish the netherite beacon. I'll be going to 10,000 days at this rate. And now another wall has been completed. And now I just need to split it up. It might be dark, but I'm working through the night. I also need to dry all of this sponge. And then I can start drying this up. And this bit is very satisfying. Just pl placing the torch and then watching the gravel fall down and break. Well, the other way to quickly break it is to just go like this. And you can see it's pretty fast. I think I've worked out the most efficient method. Have the sponge in my offhand and then break it as soon as I place it. And then by the time I get to the bottom, all the sponge is already broken. And there we go. I've managed to drain all of these sections. First, I'm going to go on an adventure. An adventure to collect some bees, which is a lot easier at night when they're all inside asleep. Whilst flying around, I've found an exposed mob spawner. Might as well break that because I don't really need it. But let's see what's in these chests. Anything I don't already have? <laughs> Not really. This fella appears to have BTSD. <laughs> Get it beat? No, okay. Just, let's, let's break that. So, what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it just freezes. There we go. Fly down. I'd also like to visit these desert temples since I'm always on the lookout for more not chapels. Sadly, none to be found there. I'm going to leave this place with a bang. Look at this. A mesa I never knew existed. It's always fun exploring and finding new areas in your world. Desert temple number two, which still has no not chapel. This is a desert with a lot of villages. There's one over there. One over there, and one over there, and a temple just behind it. Excuse me, sir, hope you don't mind, but I'm moving in. <laughs> just spending the night. All right, yeah, you stay in bed. No, no. I'm not getting any enchanted golden apples, but I am getting regular ones at least. Apparently, you have to search an average of 10 temples to find one. And for me, this is temple number four, and my fourth disappointment as well. Here's my fourth beehive. I have here a monument, and more sponge could be very, very useful. And I might be able to get their gold before I get minor fatigue. Look at that. <laughs> Got it all. Could get in, get out, and didn't even get it. And here we have Elder Guardian number one. Very easy. And I got some sponge from that. Here's Elder Guardian number two. Once again, very easy. And I am drowning, so I'm just going to keep placing and removing my water so that I get all my air back. And I found the home of the final Elder Guardian. Now they're all out of the way. Let's go and find that sponge. I'm having a bit of a tough time finding the sponge. But now that my minor fatigue has gone, I can just mine through walls. Aha. I've found a. I don't know why I couldn't find this, but we found it. Now I can grab my hoe and start mining. Another monument. And I found the sponge, but <laughs> still got minor fatigue. I need to take out the final guardian. Now I can collect more sponge. And there's another room here with even more sponge. And I have nearly 80 pieces. That's a pretty good job well done. Temple number five. And whoa! We got two enchanted golden apples in one chest. I've never seen that before. That has made the entire journey today completely worth it. A random wandering trader has spawned out here. And this might sound crazy because I'm in a desert, but... 
I'm gonna buy his sand. Now he's a happy chap and I've got a little bit more. You know, cause sand it's it's one of those things that's quite difficult to get. Look at that. An abandoned acacia village. After a job well done, I think it's time I head home. And since I've travelled over 15,000 blocks, I'm going through the nether. And this time, I'm going to make use of my lodestone compass to get back easier. And my elytra have now broke. Thankfully, my portal is literally over there, so we're very, very close to home. And now I can take this opportunity to heal my broken elytra. Now, there's something that I need to fix. Apparently, adding all these hoppers along here is causing my game to drop frames. And the best way to prevent any lag to be caused by hoppers is to place loads of composters on top of them. I'm not entirely sure why composters has helped so much, but I'm gonna trust it. Is it smoother? I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. But if any of you Minecraft experts do have any lag reducing tips that I should use, let me know them in the comments. Also guys, I'm going to give away $1,000 to a random person that clicks subscribe in the next seven days. And if you already subscribed, just get somebody that you know to subscribe. And now we're gonna build something to cause even more lag, and that is a honey farm. Now I know right now this design looks pretty terrible, but it, it is subject to change once I get honeycomb and honey blocks. But in order to get those, I need to build a honey farm, so <laughs> this is what we're starting with. We're gonna have nice glass in the walls. This really does look terrible, but I cannot stress enough that once I have the blocks I need, I'll basically bulldoze this area and rebuild it completely. Otherwise, you guys will never take me seriously again. You know what, since it's definitely getting rebuilt, I'm gonna make a statement. Yes, I am indeed building a grass block roof with some lovely flowers on top of that. I mean, if that doesn't look like an amazing honey farm, <laughs> I don't know what will. I'm gonna play it safe with the floor and just use birch planks. I don't know what to say there. <laughs> The design's starting to grow on me. So on this side, and also this side, I'm gonna have an area that will collect me honey bottles, and down here, an area that gets me honeycomb. I've ended up making this tunnel go all the way around, because I think it just looks a bit better. And then there'll be glass filled in here, and then this is where the bees will live, so I'm gonna fill this all in with grass. And then we're gonna put downward-facing dispensers along here, and then hoppers along the bottom, and then more hoppers pointing into the dispensers. I think I'm also gonna add birch logs along the bottom here, and then that creates a nice little border. And look at me getting all creative with some nice stairs at the corners. Although, to be honest, I don't really like it, so instead I'm going to change it to be glowstone in the corners. Instead, I'm going to put the stairs like that. Along the back of the beehives, we're going to have comparators, and the redstone's going to loop around like this, and I'm going to have to try and use blocks to try and split up the circuits. And I want to use gold blocks for the walls and the roof, because it kind of has that, that honey kind of colour. Although I'm going to need a lot more if I'm going to complete this, so it's time to head back to my gold farm to get more. Spent quite a bit of time AFKing, but I now have so, so much gold, which can all be turned into gold blocks. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to grab my eyes of ender, and then get rid of these hoglings that have spawned, and then I can grab some obsidian from this chest and craft loads more ender chests. And finally, I'm going to craft some buttons and place them on these blocks so that we don't get more hoglins and piglins spawning. There we go, that should be the end of that problem. And now let's head back home. I'm now completely out of firework rockets, but thankfully I can get more from my sugarcane farm. I'm going to craft myself nine more firework rockets. You know, now I've come back to this, <laughs> I really like it. I don't know why. It's the worst thing I've ever built, but it's kind of cool. Let's dig out this entire roof and fill in the gold blocks. I'm also going to dig out these strips along here and then fly over in this direction, grab some of this podzol and add it along here. And to finish this, I'm going to need a load more redstone. And probably the easiest way for me to get that is to support the economy and buy it from these guys. I've got over three stacks, which for now should be enough. As usual, the redstone is very dodgy, but it should, in theory, work. But it took me a while, but I have now redstone wired every single one on this side. So now all I need to do is add all the beehives. But before that, I'm going to add some hoppers along here. And this double chest right here will be perfect for filling it with glass bottles. And for those of you telling me that this is how to stop lag, well, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. And next, I want to get myself an unlimited supply of glass bottles. It took a long time to smelt this, but now I have 16 stacks of glass, which can then be made into 16 stacks of bottles. And with these, I can fill up the dispensers. Now that's done, I can add in these glass panes and then place all the flowers. I'm going to block up these bits so the bees can't escape because for now I only have four bee nests but in theory this is now done and it should get me some honey look at that the first lot of bees are out in full force and we even the baby bees here. And I've already just realized my first mistake that these redstone torches actually need to be moved back one block. Thankfully, it's a very quick and easy fix. And look at that, it's working. I've got my first honey bottle. So next, the main thing I want to do is get way more glass so I have unlimited bottles and find loads more bee nests so I can expand my empire. I've just come up with an ingenious idea. Why should I do manual labor like mining sand when I can literally get glass bottles for free at my raid farm? AFK in there did get me a few glass bottles, but I think my best option 
mission is to instead grab loads of sand from this desert. The redstone's all complete. I have loads of bees in here and the honey bottles are steadily coming through. And I'm kind of tired of building that now. I do also have all of these shulker boxes full of sand and these furnaces have now smelted more glass. Let's load all of these back up, make more bottles and then add them to the dispensers. Now, if there's one thing this project has made me realize is that this smelting room is absolutely rubbish. I still have all of this sand to get through. So we need to come up with a new plan. First, I'm going to begin by mining up lots and lots of cobblestone. Let's now light this up so mobs don't spawn down here. And next, I'm going to craft lots of furnaces. In reality, I, I probably don't need 64. Next, I'll craft lots of chests and turn them into lots of hoppers. And I think it's time we built a new room. I've dug out the room and my plan is to have furnaces all the way around the edge like this. And then hoppers running around the outside so it all collects into one chest. So that's perfect. We can put a nice double chest there. That'll fill up with all the smelted items. And then I think I want a hopper above each furnace. Thankfully, I just had the perfect amount. And if I want to put five stacks of sand into one furnace, I can do. All that's left to do now is to track down all the coal. We're going to put two blocks in each furnace for now. Since I'm mining the roof, the stone is going into the hoppers and it's smelting and... <laughs> Gonna turn to smooth stone, which is just a massive waste of my coal. But my idea is I can grab this shulker box here, and I believe if I place a shulker box like that, the items, yeah, look at that, they'll filter out and they'll go into the furnace. So if I've got shulker boxes full of sand, I can just place them above and that'll smelt for me. Might as well fill this with smooth stone as well. You never know when we might need some. Well, I filled it with stone, but the uh, the smooth stone's coming through nicely. And one final shulker box right there. I can also take this opportunity to put all of these emerald blocks into this shulker box here. I really am starting to get a lot of treasure. My bees are getting me honeycomb, which means I can make more beehives. So let's craft some of those. I'm getting pretty close to filling this entire place up now. So I definitely need to breed more bees. I've just realized something. I've set off five shulker boxes worth of sand smelting. Well, I know there's only four shulker boxes, but <laughs> the rest is in here. And I've only placed down one double chest. So to rectify that, we're going to have to place some more. A couple of chests there. Finally, a hopper like that. And now it should all store perfectly. This room definitely needs to be made to look a lot better, but <laughs> I'll do it another time. And this other smeltery is still getting me a little bit of glass as well. Now, here's something I always like to check on. How is the sugar cane farm doing? It is doing very nicely since I upgraded it. Lots more paper. And if I head to the gunpowder farm, we can get lots more gunpowder. I did spend a bit of time AFK to get all these creepers, by the way, if you're wondering. With that, I can create many more firework rockets, which will then live in this sugar box. Apparently, I also have another sugar box here full of firework rockets so we're gonna have two sugar box no we're gonna have one for firework rockets and then we're gonna have one for gunpowder and next i'm gonna grab some gray dye and some white dye and change the color of these shulker boxes because they're kind of blending in and now let's see how my little farmer is doing i hope you've been working hard indeed he has look at all these beautiful carrots which i'm just gonna steal and put in a shulker box and these can be transported to my gold farm actually never mind i did put loads of gold in the shulker box so if i create loads and loads of okay we don't have space for all these no you know what we're <laughs> We're seriously overrun with gold all of a sudden. With what I've got, I can definitely make lots of golden carrots. And we might as well make a stack of golden apples whilst we can as well. And there we go. It does look good to have so many golden carrots nicely stored in a shulker box. Am I happy with the amount of carrots I've got? Yeah. But is that going to stop me from expanding this farm so that it gets me way more vegetables than anyone would ever need? Well, no. <laughs> Of course it's not going to stop me. Here's all the resources I need. Let's start building this. First, we're going to add a border all the way around the edge, which is then all filled in with dirt. And now that's all filled in, let's add another glass border. And this right here is going to collect up the vegetables. Let's break that. Perfect. That's all set up with a trap door right there. And along these edges here, we're also going to add in slabs. And then water over the top of that so we've got something for the crops. Next, let's till all this ground into farmland. And I think I'd like to place wheat on this level, which should in theory make it into a bread farm. And now comes the fun part. Okay, hold on a second. This guy's going for it. Wait, he's... <laughs> he just wandered straight up. Anybody else? Come on, roll up, roll up. That's already one less villager to worry about. What are you looking at? Look, I I'm up to nothing. I'm, I'm just kidnapping a villager. For some reason, we have two volunteer villagers. I've got to try and break this boat without upsetting anybody. There we go. Up you go this day. Okay, well, one's, one's volunteering, so you, you're staying down there. No, don't walk back now. No, you got, you got to keep going. You're committed now. Here he comes. Come on. That's it. No, time when he goes up to the top. That's it. Just push him along a little bit. There's there's no going back. What are, all this glass going nowhere. I think he's real. Wait, what are you doing? Okay, he's down. He's in. Alrighty, we got him. Now, the real problem is I think this guy's going for the composter and this guy's 
not going for it. So it's kind of the wrong way around. Maybe if I break it and place it again, that'll get him. I'm going to keep you trapped in here. You just never know when you might need a villager. Okay, he's now a farmer. He's accepted this is his job. You, you're just going to be stuck in there for the rest of your life. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, get to work. I expect to soon have lots of free bread, which I can then use to breed more slaves. I mean, <laughs> I mean more villagers. I feel like it's only a matter of time before the world realizes I'm evil. On the plus side, look at all the glass that we now have. This really was a genius invention. I just can't believe it took me 850 days to build it. You know, this, this farm is great and all, but it's still not big enough. I'm, I'm adding another layer. This is now all ready. I just need to try and get two villagers up here. Just move you out the way. Place a block there. All right, up you come, buddy. Now, which way is he going? He's going in there. All right, well, that is your... your no, 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 there's no backing out now. There we go. Stay in there. Let's also kidnap this guy. No, baby, you, you, you can't be kidnapped as well, I'm afraid. This may look like fun, but you're going to be working for the rest of your life, and, and I'd feel bad doing that to you. You, on the other hand, I, I really don't care. So if we break that, I might have to sleep first, and then when I wake up, he hopefully goes up there. All right, good sir. He's, he's working his way up. That's it. Around you go. Oh, this is easy. Straight it. Don't stop. No, don't go back now. We've got you so close. And he's like going all the way back. That's it. No need to be sheepish. Go and be a farmer. Okay. You know, live the life you're supposed to live. Nice little bed there. Now what we need to do is plant loads of potatoes. Which I'm going to do at a later date because I own absolutely zero potatoes and I'd have to go and find them. So far there's no bread. I'm guessing that's because the wheat still needs to grow a bit more. And now I'm going to take this shulker box. And I'm going to continue my project of draining this ocean monument to make a guardian farm. Which basically just involves placing a lot of of gravel. May not look like it, but I've made loads more progress on draining this. This is already to be drained this section, and I've started building another wall here. Although the guardians are starting to get more and more annoying as I get closer to the monument. I have also realized that this is a much faster method than going along and placing them like this. So I've definitely been able to make faster progress. You don't really realize how big of a project this is <laughs> until you start it. And whilst I have done a lot of it, there's still a long way to go. I'm going to start filling in these walls so that we can use the sponge, and then we can get to work in draining this. And once I'm down here, I can also get rid of the gravel by using torches. Now that we're actually draining the parts next to the monument, it's really starting to come to life. I have to say, it is very, very satisfying to just place loads of torches like this and <laughs> see all the gravel fall. You're not so tough now, are you, Guardian? Now that all your water's gone, <laughs> you stand no chance. Feel very bad for these poor fish. Can I, can I save them? Come on. Oh, I put them in a bucket. Um, you get in there. You get in the water. There we go. <laughs> Those two fish live there now. I've accidentally now released the fish. Um... You go in there. I don't know where the other one went. The other one seems to have disappeared. We'll just chuck him down in this little hole there. I don't know how long he's going to stay there for. Although, considering I put him in a bucket, maybe he's going to stay there forever now. It would be very cool if he did. A little Easter egg in this place. And I think I'm now going to take a break from this. We've made good, good progress, but... I don't know, I can only do so much gravel placing. I'm also going to dry off all of this wet sponge. And then these items can be put into a shulker box. And it looks like I've got loads of spare gravel here, so... I might as well just place it. I'm not quite finished replacing gravel just yet. To be honest, guys, there's a lot of guardians in the area. It's <laughs> starting to get a bit annoying. All right, let's see if I can do this. Look at that. Running along, placing the blocks. Even got... Oh, well, I ran out of gravel, but hey. Hey, we used it all up. Perfect. And because you've been annoying me so much, I'm, I'm going to turn the tables on you, guardian. But yeah, great progress. Now to head home. And I'm just going to fly up here for a little bit, which allows me to get lots more gunpowder. Next, I'm going to grab all of this glass, turn it into glass bottles, and also grab all of this glass as well and keep crafting it. And I'm going to grab all these shulker boxes, head over to the honey farm, and start loading up the dispensers. There we go. Now these are all loaded up with loads and loads of bottles. And look at all this honeycomb. It's fantastic. If I grab more planks from here, look at that. We've got loads of them. We can craft three more beehives, which is all we need for now. And for the first ever time, I can make honeycomb blocks. So these three hives can go along here like that. Let's also keep breeding bees. We should be doing that as much as possible, really. And this hideous building can now have some honeycomb blocks added to it. So my idea is to just kind of put them in something like that. Yeah, I quite like that. Oh no, the bees are escaping. Uh oh, all right. One escape. Oh no, don't, don't be sad, bee. Okay, don't worry. They'll all go inside and I'll make sure you're safe. Meanwhile, this building is still looking terrible. Look, this pattern doesn't even work. I feel like this is just cursed to be the worst thing that I've ever built. All right, little baby bee. Come on, you're going to go on the lead. You're going to come over this way. That's it. Leave leave those behind and we're going to break you in, okay? Hopefully without any bees coming out. Let's, um, let's do something like this. There we go. Everybody in. You want to be bred more baby bees? That's fine. Let's put you like that. Happy days. The honey is flowing in. Let's go ahead and make some honey blocks. There we go. Look at this. I don't really exactly know what I'm going to need honey blocks for just yet, but eventually I will need them. So they can go in there. They can go there. And these bottles can go into this chest and they will filter through the hoppers and into the dispensers. Just realize there's a flaw to my plan because <laughs> this dispenser, yeah, it, it doesn't just, it doesn't even have bottles in it. So this is going to be filled. You know what? We'll just, we'll just allow it to happen. That's why I want this to be just for honey. 
over here to be just for honeycomb, here to be for honey, and then this can either be for honeycomb or it can be like a storage area, something like that. That's my plan, but yeah, I, I think I've done enough in this place. It's kind of finished now, at least one section. Next, I'm going to start collecting loads more sand. As usual, I'm going to fill up four shulker boxes. With all of this, I can craft more TNT, and now I can start mining for ancient debris, which is going to involve placing a lot of TNT. All the TNT is down, now comes the fun bit where I get to light it all. And collecting up ancient debris has never been easier. You'll love to see it. Three ancient debris all in a line. That means I've got 56 in total so far. The ancient debris is now flowing in nicely. I have over 100 pieces. I'm starting to feel like this tunnel goes on and on forever, but we are getting so much ancient debris. And the end of the tunnel has been reached, and there's a little bit of ancient debris waiting for me at the end. From all of that, 170 ancient debris, which sounds like a lot, but when you actually convert it into netherite blocks, it's... It's not that amazing. And here we have it. Home sweet home. I'm just going to head up here for a bit so that I can collect XP and repair all my tools. And there we go. Everything is now fully repaired. So I can either use the super amazing smelting room or the regular blast furnaces. And apparently there was some netherite scrap left in one of these from, from earlier. So that's... Uh... A nice little thing to find. In fact, there's yeah, there's quite a bit of netherite scrap. That's, that's a nice thing to find, isn't it? And I've just realized I have got a bit more here, but I've got no gold. So he's back to the gold farm. I feel like all this gold should probably be enough. Plus 19 ingots there. Yeah, this is perfect. We have nearly two stacks in total. Actually, that's that's not going to be enough at all. So back to AFK and I go. This is this is not that hard, really, is it? Also, yes, my face comes back. I don't know what happened before. It just broke for like the last hour. But anyway, we're... We're back in business. Now this time, we have definitely got enough gold. So let's go and see how my ancient debris is doing. All of this has indeed finished smelting. Let's craft loads of netherite ingots. And we can make six netherite blocks. That's not bad. I know it doesn't look that impressive when I add it to the beacon. But at the very least, I'm happy with it. Now then, this poor farmer, look at me. He looks so depressed. He's got nothing to farm. But look at this. Potatoes, prime potatoes growing over here. And with enough bone meal, I can turn these 14 potatoes into many, many more. Well, if I'm going to be able to do that, I'm going to need to go and get more bone meal. And the Soul Sand Valley is definitely the best place for that. Back in the day, I would have had to kill loads and loads of skeletons for this, but now it's very, very easy. I just remembered I've got millions and millions of bone blocks on my Wither Skeleton farm, so didn't really need to mine these, but we're going to do it anyway. And with that, we now have a stack, which when crafted, turns into nine stacks. Now, the potato farm really is in full flow. I mean, look at this guy. He's just having the time of his life. I might as well help out this farmer and bone meal a bit of the wheat as well. Thought I'd come and check in on my bees. I'm going to go and try and breed some more. Although I need flowers to do that. Thankfully, there's a stack over here. Oh no, all my bees are escaping. Guys, I've got flowers in my hand. Come on, come and be attracted to my flowers. Now that they're in there... <laughs> Gonna be trapped forever. And the amount of honeycomb and honey bottles I'm getting is again really, really good. Look at all this glass that I've got. That can be turned into more bottles, which can then be added to the machine. Well, this is good news. We've got potatoes and bread coming through. <laughs> My efforts are not a waste of time after all. And if I give these guys bread, they will then breed to get me more villagers. I'm just keeping the villager ecosystem going. And now I've decided I want to do a bit of exploring to see what I can find. This is useful. A coral reef that isn't millions and millions of blocks from my house. That's definitely a handy thing to find. It's always nice to find villagers. <laughs> I have no use for this place, but... It's cool to see it. Looks like we're back to finding desert temples. But if it gets me more notch apples, I'm not going to complain. Ruin portals are also very good for that, but uh, only the obsidian is useful to me. Whoops, I... Uh... <laughs> I went to another desert temple and accidentally stood on the pressure plate, so, uh... Yeah, that's all being blown up. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, I didn't find one in the, uh, the three desert temples I searched, but hey! We got an enchanted golden apple. That is now my third one. Actually, it turns out it's my fourth one because I ate one when I did How Did We Get Here. Oh, it's quite exciting to find one, isn't it? <laughs> Not something you see every day. But it is definitely my goal to find as many notch apples as possible throughout this series. And that's not because I want to eat them. It's just because I... I want to flex, although finding them is always very, very tricky indeed. I've certainly had a lot of success in the overworld, but now I'd like to head underground. And my plan is to see if I can stumble across some dungeons and possibly even an abandoned mineshaft. Although it's going to take quite a bit of luck for that to happen. After a bit of mining, I, I've come to a ravine under the water and no sign of a mineshaft. So that's probably a good sign for me to stop looking. And instead, I'm going to build a nether portal and head back home through the nether. It's also good to see that Grace the Dolphin is still alive and doing very, very well. You know, if there's one thing that this place needs, it's more beacons. My main beacons are all the way over there. I mean, I don't really get the effects of them over here. So I think around this central conduit monument that... <laughs> currently doesn't actually have a conduit in it. I should add beacons into each corner. And I don't want these to be tiny little beacons. I want them to be the full, proper four level ones. That's now all filled in. We can put the beacon right here. And I've kind of realized I didn't really build it low enough. So I, I think these can just be white beams. I don't have enough space for a glass. Oh my goodness. Why have you come down here? What is your problem, you stupid villager? Don't. They're all gathering round. No. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can never leave here. You know what? Nobody needs to know, but... <laughs> 
Goodbye, villager. And when I say goodbye, villager, I mean I'm going to make you a staircase so you can escape. Are you kidding me? Two more came down just as I was blocking up the hole. <laughs> the guys are so stupid. Get out of here. There we go. All right, I'm no murderer. Don't worry, guys. The beacons also slightly overlap, which is really good, since it means I won't use quite as many emerald blocks as I thought I was going to. Although despite that, I have still used all of them up and run out of them. But don't worry, I have an iron farm for just such emergencies like this. So these blocks can just be filled in here with a beacon on top, and that is full beacon... Number two. I thought it was never going to activate there. I can also put a temporary small beacon here since I have a few spare iron blocks. These other four blocks, I'm going to need more if I want to do anything else with that. And I guess I could make it out of gold blocks. We really are scraping the bottom of the barrel now, aren't we? So these nine are going to go like that. Beacon on top. And now I'd like to activate all these. This one can give me haste two. And this one can give me speed two. And because these two are only small beacons, I can only get haste or speed. And I don't really... Well, <laughs> I just did those on the other ones, so... They're kind of useless to me. But it is nice to be able to run fast now all the time. You know, this music disc wall is not very impressive at all, is it? I'm going to try and get some more. Oh my goodness, all my turtles have hatched. This is... What a special moment. They've all hatched. They've all grown up. I didn't even realise. I feel like a proud mother that's watching all my children grow up. So in order to get a music disc, I'm going to have to find a skeleton and also a creeper. Well, I've found the creeper, but there's no skeleton around. This looks like a great cave to me. I found a couple of skeletons here, but... How can I trap them? First, I'm going to lure him through here. That's it. He has no idea what he's doing. I'm going to place a block there. Alrighty, he's now stuck in there. Put another block there so he can't do anything. Now I just need to find a creeper. The mission to spawn a creeper in has been successful. However, <laughs> I'm going to try and not blow him up now. Right, here we go. We've got to jump past him. Please don't blow up. Oh, well. <laughs> there goes the creeper. Oh, it's another one. All right, never mind. Um, Let's try and not blow this guy up. You know what? You're not coming up here. If I run through here... Yeah, we've gone past the creeper. Let's also get rid of you. The skeleton is still alive, which is good. Wait, I don't want him to escape, though, do I? If I can get the creeper to see me... That's it, creeper. You you come over here. Place that like that. Okay, I think the creeper is now kind of... No, he's not quite trapped. Hold on. We can do this. No, you stupid creeper. Now he's completely trapped. Let's release the skeleton's eyesight. Then all I have to do is break this block. Now, in theory... Yeah, that's it, skeleton. Do your thing. Finish off that creeper. Keep don't, Show no mercy, skeleton. I don't know. You are the weakest skeleton I've ever seen. There we go. Creeper defeated. And we got a new music disc. What music disc did we get? Chirp. Well, that's all I wanted to do. Thank you for your services, skeleton. But now you're, you're going down. So let's go and head back home and add that to our wall. Let's put that in anvil so its name is now Chirp. So when I add it to the wall, if I hover over it, I can see the different music disc names. At some point, I would definitely like to create a proper music disc farm so that I can get all of them very, very easily. Well, I'm definitely very, very pleased with all these turtles. I should definitely breed more. <laughs> you can never have too many, can you? Look at this. This one laid four eggs. You are a proper mother. That's what I like to see. I mean... Let's see what this one over here does. This pathetic turtle only laid one. Uh, how many have you done? You've also only laid one. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. Might as well bunch them all together so that can go right there. At some point, there's going to be too many turtles. I'm going down a slippery slope. You know what this random aquarium needs? Turtles. It would be a lot better. I mean, the dolphins apparently died in there. I don't know how. But at the very least, I can add some turtles in there. And it would probably solve my problem of having way too many turtles down here as well. In fact, I feel terrible for doing this, but all the eggs are coming with me. I'm sorry. The turtle laid me four eggs. <laughs> Still stealing your eggs. Also, believe it or not, but I think I've run out of sand. And that's mainly because I smelted about 100 stacks of it into glass. Let's make a nice little platform here with sand on top like so. And then the turtle eggs can be placed here and uh, they'll hatch in about 10,000 episodes. That's good to see. All my glass has now finished smelting, so I might as well make more bottles. At this point, I feel like I've got a bit of an addiction to adding bottles to this farm. And as it happens, every dispenser is full now anyway. I don't know why. What's going on here? Why is the old... Uh, the old redstone not working. You can always tell when I've built something using my own brain. Because it always ends up breaking. If I break this bit of redstone and then replace it like that. Perfect. Look at this. All the carrots, potatoes. At some point I want to add a, like a custom sorter to this. But for now I'm very pleased with it. At some point in the future I will probably double it in size. Maybe even add beetroot. You know, we, we've really got to go to town on the crop farm. And what better way to finish off this episode than to spend some time placing gravel. And there we have another wall complete. I'm going to grab some sponge, take out my hoe and start draining this place down as well. There's something about draining an entire monument that's quite satisfying. Oh no. No, they're all dying. No. Survive fish. <laughs> There's too many of them. I can't save them all. I don't have to do this but I'm just going to have to go and... 
Fly away and forget about him. Now he's back to placing sponge and are you kidding me? Wait, how did you get up here? This has gone from draining an ocean monument to murdering loads of fish. Look at this, trapped two guardians down here as well. I'll just leave them alone. Well, I nearly drained all of them over here, but the sun is now setting. Now today I'm going to start off with a challenge. A very, very simple challenge. Let's get a timer on screen and see just how fast I can find a brand new notch apple. My first idea to begin with is to travel quite a long way in the nether. And then when I make a new portal, I'm going to be in a completely new area, miles away away from spawn. And already we've got a ruined portal. There is a chance this has a notch apple, but you know, the chance was low. This is what I've been looking for. A desert, because deserts have desert temples, which have a what? Okay, that's not a water bucket. Let me try that again. <laughs> which have a 1 in 10 chance of having a notch apple. This one had diamonds, but hey, who needs diamonds? This chest had a golden apple. Oh my goodness, temple number 2, and we already got a notch apple. Don't mind if I do. So I pulled that off in about nine and a half minutes. That's pretty insane. I guess now it's time to get on with my next project. I think it's time that I tidied up this room. This chest filled with junk everywhere. This poor dog here still needs a name. It's time I got organized. And the way I'm going to get organized is just by putting all the chests in here instead. All items have been moved down here, as you can see. I think it makes this place look a lot better. I'm also going to move this ender chest and crafting table. I can go in this corner with the ender chest on top. Next, I'm going to give you a name. I did get lots of ideas for names, but I decided to call him Junior because he's the kid of these two. And now it's time to really spruce up these walls. What do you think? I got myself my very own A Thousand Days poster. I think it really brings the house to life. Look, look at them. The dogs love it. What's that? You, you want one of these posters as well? Well, don't worry. I got you covered. Just go to sp737.store and you can buy one of these. I have signed each and every one by hand. It took a very, very long time. So I hope you guys enjoy them. They are limited edition. Once they've sold out, they're gone forever. Now to farm ender dragons, we're going to need infinite end crystals. And one of the things needed to do that is a blaze farm, so that's what we're going to start with. And a lot of glass is going to be needed for this, so I'm heading to the desert. This place isn't looking as good as it used to. But hey, if I need sand, I've got to get it somehow. I filled my inventory with sand, that should be enough. And now I can use all these furnaces to smelt it. Due to a real lack of fuel, I'm going to use lava buckets, which can easily be filled at the nether. Something else I'm going to need for this build is some vines. And this swamp is going to be the best place for me to get some. There we go, this is pretty easy. I've got 20, that's definitely enough. And now I have all the items that I need. Now let's find a blaze spawner and begin building this thing. This is the closest fortress to my house. And this spawner is in a pretty good spot. In order to get this farm ready, we're going to do a lot of digging underneath. You know, I feel like I'm starting to get a bit overrun with place, but I have successfully chiseled out the entire area. Now let's start building the platforms for these guys. In hindsight, I, I should have disabled the spawner with glowstone. Thankfully, I can just fly away and it'll despawn all of them. Now we're going to put a border around this glass, and then I can turn this into a giant glass cube. And now all the blaze shall be trapped in this cube. Next, I'm going to dig out underneath here. The farm is now getting very close to being finished. I just need to add vines in here, a slab on top of the spawner, and finally lava into every corner. And there you have it. All the blades are being pushed down into the hole, and I can come into here and start taking them out. And as you can see, this has already got me loads of blaze rods. I'm also going to add a couple of birch doors here. Very nice. I'm going to head up to my bartering farm, grab some quartz, and then change this netherrack floor to be blocks of quartz. I've decided I'm going to mine up some crimson logs, and change these trap doors to be crimson ones, and the birch doors to also be crimson doors. There we go. It's just got more of a nether feel to it. And I'm going to spend some time here and see how many blaze rods I can get. I'll be more than enough to get my dragon farm going. Now the next item I'm going to need a lot of is glass. And there are two ways to obtain it. I can either trade with villagers or I can mine up loads of sand and smelt it. And now I have filled up six entire shulker boxes of sand. Now before I actually set this sand off smelting, I want to do a few upgrades to my smelting room. So my plan for this is to add rails on top of the hoppers and then they are connected to these powered rails. And we're going to have hoppers facing into the rails. Now I can set this minecart going. It's going to be moving around and I shall fill these hoppers with sand. Now this minecart is filling all these furnaces up. And then the final thing to do is just put these shulkers on here and as you can see, they're going to be filling up the hoppers. Now my only worry about this contraption is I don't really have enough fuel for it. However, I know the perfect place to get loads of coal. The Wither Skeleton Farm. As you can see, this has got me loads and loads of coal which has been waiting here and we can get loads more here as well. I'm not going to hang about here any longer. We've got loads of stuff. Let's get back home. I could also use these blaze rods as fuel, but I'm saving them for more important stuff. I've slightly improved the system so the minecart comes quite a bit slow along here so we can fill up with more sand. Look at all this beautiful glass. To be honest, we're going to end up getting overloaded if I'm not careful. So I've got the blaze rods. I've got the glass. What do I need next for my dragon farm? Ender pearls, and I know just where to find them. That is at my Wither Rose farm. As you can see, I get a lot of pearls from this system. I want to make it into an auto storage to sort out the Wither Roses and the pearls. So let's do a bit of breaking over here and get to work building the system. I've built loads of these before, so I'm not going to show you all the specific details. But this will now split the Wither Roses and the Ender Pearls into two chests. I've already got most of the pearls I need, but I still 
want a few more, so I'm going to go and AFK up there. I love just watching the Endermen appear and then run down. They just look so funny. Pretty sure by now I should have all the Ender Pearls that I need. So now I can take these and head back home. Let's put both of these right here. I've just realized I am actually going to need like four times as much as this because Ender Pearls only stack to 16 and I need stacks of 64, so not quite out of the woods yet with that. And I also need an entire shulker box of blaze rods. So I think I'm going to take these, head to the nether and collect some more. Nothing too exciting here, just me taking out blazes. I spent quite some time here and I've got loads and loads of blaze rods. I just need another 42 and we've got a full shulker box. And there we go, 49. That is more than enough. In fact, it's too many. And for my next plan, I'm going to need to go above the nether. Since I'm going to need a load of obsidian, <laughs> this place has not got much. But if I come to the pigman farm and start collecting the gold from these guys, I can then trade it back to these guys and I can grab the obsidian from them and take it home. So the first thing that is completely done is all the blaze rods I need are, are obtained. We still need more ender pearls at some point and the glass is still smelting, but I still need gas tiers. So my next project is going to be a gas farm and this requires about 20 stacks of blocks and also 10 stacks of obsidian. So I'm going to have to get mining and the best place I know to do this is going to be the end and I'm going to fly to the top of one of these towers, hold down left click, press F3 and T and then it's just going to keep mining for me with no hands. You know, in hardcore mode, it's a scary place being down here and I now have over 12 stacks of obsidian, which can all be put into this shulker box then I can carefully fly back out and head back to the overworld. I'm also going to need 10 stacks of glass for this. I'm also going to need to go to a place where I keep chickens. Can't for the life of me find it, so I'm going to grab this chicken on a lead and then glide it back home. But for now, this chicken can live here. And here's another chicken. Let's tower up into the sky and I can also glide back with this guy. Look at him, he's just walking on air. And you can also be attached to this fence post. I'm going to create a little pen along here and I'm going to dig out the floor, change it to be hoppers and then add carpet over the top. And finally, I just need to add some chests along there. Come on, fellas, let's get you into your new home. And those guys should start getting me loads of eggs. And I always say, the more chickens, the merrier. So let's breed more. I'm going to feed you loads of seeds because I've got no other use for them. Wow, we just ate a stack of seeds. <laughs> Still a baby, eh? Are you kidding me? Where on earth does a creeper come? All this glass. I guess I'll just have to try and put it all back in. Thankfully, it is a pretty quick process. It's made a real mess of this room, so I'm going to patch it up with stone bricks. Oh my goodness, this is a pretty rare guy. A skeleton jockey, and this guy's got some enchanted armor on as well. Probably worth luring this guy into my house. Oh no. Oh dear. Well, he's dead. He's dead. Yep. Oh, no, he's not dead. Uh oh, creeper don't bother. <laughs> this mob's everywhere. Isn't it? <laughs> Let's get him down here. I'm going to eat a gapple because I'm actually quite close to dying here, but I can't wear my armor because he'll, he'll get hurt. Okay, just use the totem. All right, I've got, I've got a better idea. If I just run away. All right, well, the <laughs> skeleton jockey died after all that. What if the next time I create this room here, the next time a skeleton jockey shows up, I can lure him into here and trap him. I just feel like it'd be a cool side project. The only things I need now are to collect up the eggs. And I'm also going to need quite a bit more iron for hoppers. So I think my best option is to kill two birds with one stone and AFK at the gunpowder farm. And whilst I'm here getting more gunpowder, I'm also going to be collecting iron over there. I've been there for some time. Let's see what we've got. Well, we've certainly got more than enough eggs and there should be enough iron to get me started at least. All the items are nicely put in these shulker boxes. So let's grab them and get to the nether and also take out all these creepers whilst I'm here. How do I intend to get the rest of the iron that I need? Well, I can just go to my bartering farm. And this chest here, as you can see, is full of iron nuggets, which I can turn into ingots and the remaining 13 hoppers can be made. Next, I'm going to take this smooth stone and create some markers along this way since it brings me straight into a soul sand valley. And this right here is where I'm going to start building the farm. So I start by building a portal portal like this and then I repeat this until I have eight portals in total. All the portals are now built so I'm going to light them all up and next I'm going to add some platforms in between the portals. This is why I brought so many stone bricks. Now all the stone bricks are in so next I need to build some glass walls and now that that's done I just do the exact same thing for the second layer and now all of the portals are finished. Let's light them all up and add two more glass walls at each side. There we go perfect and all that's left to do on the build in the nether is just spawn proof these portals with slabs. And now that that's done let's go down here and I need to build a portal for myself right here. Since I run out of slabs, we're going to put buttons on top of this one. This has made a brand new portal, which is good. <laughs> I did have to make it all the way down here. I'm going to mine up this portal, then head up to the surface. And I'm going to build a new portal right here. And in theory, when I go through this, it should link to the portal above the nether. Fortunately, it doesn't. It links to this one. So I'm going to get rid of it and then go back through this one, which brings me back down here. Are you kidding me? I have linked the portals, but I've linked the wrong portal. So you know what? We're just, we're just going to roll with it. Turns out the reason for the problem is because I've mixed up the quarters. D don't ask how. Sometimes I just do stupid things. That portal links correctly there. And this portal also correctly links, except it needs to be way up in the sky. And this is where my scaffolding is going to come in handy. There we go. New portal made. <laughs> 
sorted. And it links perfectly. All right, I'm very happy. But a little temporary platform so it's easier to get things done. Next, I'm going to park a boat in the portal. And this is why I needed the eggs. So that we can have... Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. A chicken go into there. And you need two... Uh oh, uh, we've got a spare chicken. I'm sorry, mate, but you, you can't go in the boat. You have to break this. Yep. Just don't get in the way, okay? Let's light the portal. And now I need to make a bit of a checkerboard pattern with the soul sander and these temporary netherrack blocks. And now that's done, I can remove these temporary netherrack blocks. And this is where all my hoppers are going to get used up, as I need to place one under every single block. So these are the things that are going to collect up all the gas tiers and gunpowder. Next, we're going to add a glass wall all the way around the edge. Then I'm going to add a glass roof. And finally, the wither roses, which are going to take out the ghasts. And now that that's done, the farm is finished. All I need to do now is go back to the nether. From this block, I'm going to build right up to build height and this right here is my afk spot kind of made it look nice i can get rid of all of this scaffolding <laughs> very satisfying to watch and if i go here we should see some gas come through here's the farm hopefully it worked we can check the chest look at that gas tears and gunpowder already it is working very very fast i'd like to build an auto storage up here so that's what i'm going to do next i've got all of the items that i need you've already seen me build one of these before so i'm not going to put you through that again and there we go this is now all done it will sort the items as you can see there's the gas tears in this one and gunpowder here and Eggs will just filter straight through into this chest since we will get a few of them as well. Now all that's left to do is spend a bit of time AFK there and see what we get. A few days have passed. Let's go and see how much we've got. And here we go. This chicken now officially lives here. In fact, we can put the egg in. 16 eggs so far. And here we have quite a bit of gunpowder and a good amount of gas tiers. We still need a lot more. I, I could make it faster by adding more layers. But I can't be able to do that at the moment. I'll bring these gas tiers back home. And then craft a load of eyes of ender. Grab a bunch of glass. I can now begin crafting loads of end crystals. That is definitely a good start. The only thing slowing me down now is the gas tiers. Next, I'd like to grab a shulker box. Dye it so it is brown. And then I can begin filling this up with spruce logs. Although we are going to need quite a few more spruce logs. So I'm going to start growing them. And then I need to do a lot of tree chopping. Every single tree has been chopped down now. If we go into this shulker box right here, we can see it is... It's not quite full yet, but if we also take the logs inside of here, we're now so, so close. I'll just grow a couple more trees and then I'll be done. And this time, I definitely have enough wood to fill the shulker box and we can even chuck some down here to go back in the chest. Now, when I'm out and about, I'll never run out of wood again. And now for my next project, I'm going to build a bone meal farm. I'm going to need quite a lot of items to make this, but the main thing I need is melons. And I don't think I have any melon seeds, so I'm heading to a jungle. What on earth is this? Why is it a blue... Vine. None of the other vines are that colour. I have never seen a blue vine before. Is there another? Is that just war? There's more over there. What? I wonder if it makes a difference if I sleep. It's still blue. I have absolutely no idea what this is. Let's break out some shears. Start mining this. So wait, a, a vine's blue if they're in a spruce forest? No. That's no, green. What? I have absolutely no idea what I've just witnessed. I, <laughs> I can't explain it. If anybody knows what's going on, please tell me. Now let's get back to what we came here for. Melons. Final test with these. If I break this, okay, and then place it in the exact same place. All right, so it must be something to do with the fact that we're now in a... Maybe it's like it crosses over into a river by a or, or something. No, because that one's not... I have absolutely no clue. All I do know is that I've got plenty of melon seeds now, so I'm getting out of here. Took a bit of time, but I now have all the items I need to build this bone meal farm. And I'm not going to build it near my house. I'm instead going to build it at spawn so that it's always working in the background. And this pillar right here indicates the world spawn. I could either do a bit of deforestation and clear out an area, or just build it on top of all the trees. But I think so that it looks a lot better, I'm going to do a load of deforestation. And I get free wood in the process too. Project deforestation is now complete. Now I've got to start digging a couple of trenches. And then we're going to place stone and hoppers in this trench. And next we're going to add the slime that's going to be pushing things along. So this is going to go to there. And then this is going to go above like that. Next we're going to add hopper mine carts on top of these hoppers. And then break the rails underneath. And iron bars above these. And once I flick this lever, it will push down all the slime blocks. The flying machine part of the contraption is complete. We're just going to put some glass blocks behind all the hopper mine carts. Everything over there is complete. Now I'm just building a system over here that will push that flying machine back. Now the return system is complete pretty simple let's dig the area under here that's going to do the composting we need a chest right here and then going into that we're going to have hoppers like this and these are going to connect all the way around so that it's underneath the final hopper and then this is what's going to make the bone meal the composters get all six of them in perfect let's have some light in here too we don't want monsters down here you'll probably get the idea with this next bit we're just going to be making lots of farmland and of course i've also got to add glowstone underneath the water so that it doesn't freeze all the ground has been tilled now i've just got to build a border around here so the melons don't grow outwards. And the final thing to be done on this farm is to plant all the melons. So this melon farm is now completely finished. I'm going to switch this lever, which should set things off. 
I think when the hopper clock goes. Yep, it is now setting off. So obviously there's no melons to pick up at the moment. Look at that. He's cleaning up all the snow on its way. Let's see what happens when it gets to the other side. <laughs> no, nothing happened. I'm guessing I put the piston on the wrong block. So this is going to be working nice in the background. I'm now going to leave it alone and spend a bit more time getting gas tiers. A few more days have passed. Let's see how many gas tiers we've got. It's got me another two and a half stacks, which is good. But I think for this farm to be successful long term, I'm going to have to make it faster. And the best way to do that is going to be to add more nether portals, which means I'm going to have to mine up more obsidian. Guys, I just fell into the void <laughs> and uh, and flew back out again. I do not want to be down there. I'm gonna have that. That was almost it. That was all. We almost did not make it to a thousand days. Bro, day 962, and I. <laughs> I nearly just died. I basically just pressed F3 and T like this so that I could mine obsidian with no hands, but I forgot that I tabbed out. So when I went to like stop myself from mining, I wasn't on Minecraft and I, I, I panicked there big time. All right, guys, I have mined up so much obsidian, <laughs> nearly died in the process. I think it's time to head back. All of these can go in the shulker box and I'm going to need a lot of blocks as well to make the platforms. That does mean that all these slabs must be removed and then portals built on top. It's taken a lot of building, but I've now done seven and a half layers of this. It's gone from two layers to seven and a half. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time AFK up here and see how much faster this farm is. I've just realized my elytra is nearly broken. Thankfully, I have a load of XP bottles here so I can go and heal that up. That should last it until I get to my pigment farm. And I'm looking forward to seeing how well this gas farm has done. Here we go. All right, that is much, much faster. The speed is way better. And look at all the gunpowder we're getting. So let's take all these back home. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to go to the gold farm. And then I can properly repair my elytra and all my tools. And now that that's done, let's go back to the overworld. And now I can use all these gas tiers to make even more end crystals. And look at all these end crystals that I've got. Next, I'd like to go to my bone meal farm and see if it's working. It won't be running in the background whilst I was in the nether because it's only functional while I'm in the overworld and uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this doesn't look too good. We'll place a block like that. Okay, it is moving. Uh oh, it's, it's nicked me thing. Oh no, the mine carts have gone. Let's see what happens when it gets it. Does it pick them up? Uh, this isn't going to work, is it? Go on, work. Yes, it fixed itself. What I'm going to do is switch it off for now and instead come back when all this melon has grown. You know what? Whilst I wait, I'm going to head to the nether, head to my wither skeleton farm and just grab all of these bone blocks out of this chest. It's, it's a much easier way to get bone meal. In fact, I did have a system that was getting rid of all the bones, but I, I might as well just keep them for now. I mean, look at all these guys coming down. Now let's use this bone meal on these stems. I'm pretty sure if I use a fortune pickaxe on here, Whoa, 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 it's just composted them. Let's try again with that. <laughs> we got ourselves... Oh, we only got one seed there. So is it just one seed every time? I thought sometimes it would duplicate, but obviously not. Isn't it kind of ironic that I am using up all my bone meal to make a bone meal farm? A lot of the melons have now grown. Let's see this baby in action. Look at it. It is absolutely bulldozing through these. I could do it grabbing some of these melons and then planting them down as seeds. And at long last, the stems have all grown and the bone meal is flowing in. So I'm going to leave that running in the background. Hopefully the minecarts don't glitch out again. The final thing I need to be ready for my dragon farm is some sort of slime farm. Because this one here, whilst it does occasionally get me slimes, it's just too slow. I can build a much better one under the ocean. To begin with, I need to find a slime chunk inside a deep ocean. And this looks like a good one right here. So now it's time to dig down to level 22 and we've got to mine out this area up to level 28. As I've been digging out this room, I've actually dug into a cave. Caves like this are a bit of a problem because they will slow down the rates of slime spawning unless I light these caves up. And look at this, I've dug through and there's even more cave. At least I know about it so I can light it up. And it looks like the rest of the cave system is just all water, so I don't need to bother with that. The only place I've got to bother with now is, is the room I've been digging. This has now been completely dug out, so I'm going to build up four blocks here. And then I'm going to build a bit of a platform around so these can be broken. And a three wide slab border like this is going to be built all the way around. All the slabs are down. This room is well lit. We're going to put some trap doors along here like so. Make a little square. And then I'm going to dig out these two here. Leave those like that. And if we go into the roof, we're just going to put some trap doors like this. These are just to uh, trap the iron golem. So we're going to put another trap door there. Then I can summon in the iron golem and I need to push him so he goes on the trap doors. If he doesn't, then it'll be a disaster. He's there, perfect, put that trap door, you're now trapped. And next I'm going to build a nice little area that is going to collect up the slime and is also going to allow me to exit up to the ocean. All the hoppers along here are going to collect all of the slime, which can then start filtering into chests. And on top of these hoppers, we're going to put campfires. Let's also make a way out of this storage room that's going to take me up to the ocean. There we go, perfect. Up here is the AFK spot completed. 
Theoretically down there, slimes should be spawning in. I'm also going to add ladders going all the way up to the build height. Even though I can just fly up there with the elytra. Now for the real question. <laughs> Is it working? Yes, we have got a slime balls going in. I'm going to remove these ladders so it's easy to get up and down. And next, I'm going to spend a bit of time AFK at this platform. I've AFK'd here for a while. Let's see what we've got. And look at all this slime. And to make life easy, I'm going to turn it all into slime blocks. And now I'm going to take this opportunity to repair all my tools. I've now created every farm that I need. I think it's time that we put together this dragon farm. Took me a while, but I now have all the items I need. I'm just going to grab a few shulker boxes and head back to my bone meal farm. Then I can take all the bone meal in here and put it into shulker boxes. All these bone blocks are coming with me as well. And the final things I need to get is some buckets of lava and twisting vines. Now let's start building this in the end. This is going to be a massive build, but I'm looking forward to doing it. I do also have to hope that this farm doesn't really clash too much with my wither destroyer, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to start by placing a couple of blocks here and then packed ice along this way with pressure plates on top. We're going to need a daylight sensor right there. And if we come across one, two, three, four, Oh, I'm going to have to make... Oh, I don't know. I need to fill in this bit of endstone as well. That's much better. And the packed ice goes there. Let's get rid of these blocks. And I'm going to basically repeat this all the way around. Gone all the way around. I've added a little bit of a wall here. If we want to put a sign... Okay, that's, that's not quite right. Instead, it wants to be like that. Perfect. And then we're going to put another sign up there. And finally, a sign right there. And in theory, when I place water here... Yeah, it doesn't leak everywhere. Do need to change this to be a slab though. Okay, well we stopped the water. Now this little water contraption is also going to re be repeated on all the sides. And all four sides are now complete. Next I'm going to come here, place a block with a repeater on one tick delay and then a block coming out of that. In fact, it's going to be easy if I jump and place one like that. And this has a piston on top of it and a slime block coming out of it. So as you can see, when I'm on here, <laughs> it didn't really work that time, but if I go like that... Like, it will push me across here when this is finished. I've done some thinking, and I'm going to go back and swap out all this ice for blue ice, as that will make things run a lot better. I've spent ages trying to work out why I go so slow when I get through the water, and weirdly enough, it's because I've got depth strider boots on. So if I go like this instead, I've taken them off, I get across fine, so <laughs> never knew that was a thing. All the pistons are now in place. Basically, the way the mechanism works is it's going to push me around like this, and I'm going to be looking down, holding right click, and pressing the end crystals in. And also, okay, I, I need to slightly fix this then. <laughs> There's something not right there. I'll just put a lever here that's permanently on. That'll fix that. And on the second time round, it works perfectly. But sadly, the Wither Machine's redstone might need to be moved. Next, we're going to build a system that detects if the Ender Dragon has been defeated or not. To do this, I'm going to place a stairs here and then a slab on the side. Also a slab on this side and a block underneath. Then I'm going to put an observer like this so that it will detect if the water disappears. And that water is going to be like that. So you can see it flows into here. But once the end portal activates and the dragon is spawned, it will temporarily turn this block to air and then the water will reflow back down and this will activate the observer. I'm guessing you didn't come here for me to teach you how redstone works, so I'm just going to get on with the building. And that observer connects all the way to this redstone and it goes straight up to a note block, which is going to send the signal way up high. Right here is the chute that you're going to fall down from all the way up there, so we do need some water on this. But first, we're going to get rid of this block and we're going to add slabs. It's probably easy if I just jump down here. Uh, no, we're not going to add slabs. We're going to add signs like this and then slabs on top of here. And then finally, we're going to place some water there. And as you can see, I can then... Well, you know, I'm not going to open it because water might drop down and I don't want something to go wrong. Turns out opening this this trapdoor causes no problems at all. Next, I'm going to build a bit of a soul sand chute, which means I'm going to have to come into here a bit and kind of, yeah, box in. This is where we're going to start intruding on the, the wither farm. This is going to be a nice little glass chute that goes right the way up with slabs on top. I think it's finally time to try and move some of this redstone around. I decided it's best to just straight up remove it because whatever was there would get destroyed and turn into endstone anyway when I use the farm. I think I found my best bet is going to be to put barrels here instead and then I can put a repeater here because I can't put repeaters on top of chests. I'll be honest guys, I'm kind of making this part up as I go along but I think that this is now going to work perfectly. All that's left to do is test it out I suppose. So the water's going to go there. I'm going to fall down here and I'm not going to keep jumping am I? I'm going to fall down. It's going to push me down onto this and then that pushes me up here and I, I should just float up. All I have to do is fill it with water. Oh my goodness, we've had a disaster. We've we've had our first disaster. <laughs> oh no. This Well, this machine's now broken. Guess the rule is you can't have a dragon farm and a wither farm working at the same time. This feature is now complete. It brings me up here. I'm just going to put some water like that that flows to there. So then when I'm up here, I'll go to this piston and straight to here. This is so complicated, but at the same time, it's actually working. All I can do now is keep building this tube up until Y114. I've made it up here. I've got loads more redstone to do. <laughs> I'm not going to make you watch it all. This part isn't very redstone though. I'm just going to put water there and fill this up using kelp. And that gives me a very nice little water elevator. And the salt sign can be moved back now. I hope I don't regret breaking this, but I'm going to go like that and then place that. Hopefully, 
The water didn't mess anything up. I see water going into there. That's, that's not good. It did mess it up. But this now works perfectly. All the redstone is complete. That's basically what's going to dispense some end crystals and push me back down. It's all done. Now I've got to fill in this area. And this is basically going to be a giant water collection system that will collect all the XP. Finally, this is done up here. I've put slabs all the way around the outside as well. All that's left to do is start adding water. And thankfully, I can use infinite water sources to do that. Now I can build up seven blocks from here and place an obsidian on top of that. This is kind of going to stop the dragon going down too low. And now I've got to stack up another 60 blocks. And now I'm going to build a TNT duper. Normally, I wouldn't do any duplicating glitches at all on this world, but there's not really any other way to do it than using a TNT duper. They are fairly simple things to build, and they're very, very powerful. Now then, did I build this correct? Let's see. I go like that, and then... There we go. The TNT's going down. Although I... <laughs> I built it in completely the wrong place. It's, it's meant to be above that obsidian. Nothing that I can't quickly fix. I have fixed that TNT duper up there. It now lands on the obsidian. And I've also built the four TNT dupers that are at the four tallest towers. So they will these will destroy them. And they're all connected up using redstone. Next, I'm going to build a system that will detect when the final tower is ready. So I've got an observer block right here. And I'm going to use twisting vines. If I go right down here like this, very gracefully float. And we're going to put a twisting vine there. There we go. Build it up a little bit. A dispenser going into that. And this is where the bow mail comes in. This is going to be a hopper on top with a double chest here as well. That's going to go like that. Here's my bone meal box. Get that all filled up. And now all the bone meal that I own is in this chest here. I'm going to place an observer facing this way and I need to head back home and get another observer. Before I do that, I also want to change this to be blue ice. Add a slab right here. Let's just get rid of these blocks. And right here, this needs to be a sign. There we go. Because the sticky piston otherwise will stick to it. This piston can go right here with the observer facing this way which is now going to grow this. And the bone meal will only grow out when it's not at its full thing. So this bone meal isn't getting wasted. And if I want to switch it off, I just go like that and it stops and that keeps it running. I can also make this into a torch farm because these torches will drop off and go through the portal. So I'm going to throw some torches through and then I have to see where they land. So I destroyed my bed. So I came back to here. Aha, I've spotted them. So right where this block is, what we're going to do is instead place a hopper like that with the chest underneath. So when anything, any torches fall through the portal, they should go straight into this hopper and straight into the chest. I'm going to grab all my end crystals, load them up into this chest. Somehow I've got to try and switch on the TNT dupe, but there we go. I, I, I need a better system for that. All right, here we go. Let's test it out. Let's see if <laughs> this somehow actually works. Okay, it's pressing right click for me automatically. Okay, I don't have to touch anything. This is 100% being AFK'd. All the end crystals are down. Okay, um, I need to be careful with that trap door clicking, but uh, alrighty. We're in the chute. Okay, that is good. All four end crystals got done. We've got another four end crystals, so that system is working as well. I guess all that's left to do is see if the ender dragon correctly dies okay this is this is a lot of hard work i guess i guess the entire video is kind of coming down to this moment the ender dragon's up there he's taking damage or she should i say and it's circling i think it's working guys look at that the ender dragon is it's it's been taken out i haven't installed the replay mod so you can get a view of what's happening it looks amazing and now the dragon is being taken out so let's see if the system works to send me back down i'm gonna keep uh, keep things going so it sends me well, that didn't work, did it? I feel like that should be a pretty simple fix if I just put some blocks below that. All I have at the moment is logs, so we're just going to do something like that. Yeah, that, that should definitely help. I guess I should go for test run number two. And second time round, and another dragon has easily been defeated. And this time when the machine pushes me out, look at that. We land exactly where we want to be, and we're going back around the machine again as intended. Okay, there's a... I, I didn't actually have to change... There is a little bit of a problem with that bit that I will fix, but it's so fast, like, already... The next dragon is being summoned. Dragon number three is down. We're going to be pushed and uh, we go around again. Although this time I'm going to stop myself from uh, from going around. First of all, I'd like to fix this trap door problem. Putting the lever there will probably work better, I think. So if I go like that, there we go. It stays up. It shouldn't be an issue anymore. Now that I know everything's definitely working perfectly, I'm going to AFK here for a little bit and see uh, how much more XP we get. Guys, we did it. Look at the F3 screen. Day one. Thousand. I've just got to make it to the end of this day and I've survived 1,000 days in Minecraft Hardcore. This is this is insane. You know what? I've, I've had enough of this, okay? I, I, we're not going to sit there and AFK, you know, 1,000 days 
I'm very, very pleased with that. We've built this incredible contraption. The only change we're going to make is add, like, another repeater there, just because sometimes I get jammed, but that, that's a minor thing. It works insanely well. A very large amount of the design did come from FastJazz. I'm going to link any tutorial use, any help. I'm going to, I always link down below in the description. But his was made of 1.17, so I had to, like, come up with the... I had to build that, uh, the Twisting Vine solution for a detector, because I use a shulker. And for some reason, a lot of the mechanism didn't work, so I kind of had to redesign a load of things. So, yeah, it's a big project, but obviously I wouldn't have got anywhere near without FastJazz's help. I'm also going to come through here... And if we go and check how many torches we got, look at that, 27 torches, very respectable. Might as well send off this melon farm. Yeah, this was made by Shulkercraft. To be honest, a lot of things I built, I wouldn't be able to have done without Shulkercraft. Raiseworks, he's another person who's, who's helped me out with his videos. Near Mature, Logical Geek Boy, so many people, and uh, so many tutorials like, yeah, I've come with some stuff myself, but a lot of it is uh, it's just what's out there by people way cleverer than me. And that doesn't just go for this video, that is in, throughout the entire 1000 Days series. Um, yeah, people's videos have helped me so much. Special thanks to my editors as well, to be honest. I didn't really know, I forgot to mention that in the video, but... Yeah, couldn't have done it without you, Joe. And I guess Desiree won't hear this, but he's been a big help in the ones he did as well. And don't worry, guys, the series is not ending. I still am going to try and get these out every single Saturday on videos of this world. So I'm begging you, please, guys, please subscribe, okay? I have dreams of one day hitting 10 million subscribers. We're 20% of the way there. I mean, if you enjoyed this video, if you watched the whole thing, you just should just subscribe because obviously you must have enjoyed it. Now, nobody watches for this long and, and doesn't enjoy it. I'm so, so proud of this series. I'm so, so proud of what we've achieved in the world. I mean, I know it doesn't look like too much from here, but there's so many things like, you know, there's so many amazing farms and look at these beacons we did. And I'll be completely honest with you guys, the Ender Dragon farm was just a complete flex, okay? Because I, I don't need one. It doesn't get you XP as fast as a golf farm or something like that. I just wanted to make one because very few people have pulled it off. And don't forget, get your posters down below in the description. They're very limited edition. I have signed each and every one, as I said, it took me forever. So if you support me, the poster links are down below in the description. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft.